What's up, everybody? Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's the Mike O'Geeky Podcast, and I'm your host, Mike O'Geeky. I've been out of town for a couple weeks. We've been doing the pre-recordeds. Uh, let me know, guys. Let me know if you like the pre-recordeds, uh, how they went for you. Um, I, I actually had a good time making them and learning a little bit more about editing and all that kind of stuff, trying to up the production value. Um, I got a chance to spend a couple weeks with my family, so it was great. Anyway, I'm back. We're ready to party again, so we're getting into it tonight. Pretty exciting. Uh, first, let me just do, do a little quick shout out. Uh, I got like almost 60 Patreon supporters right now. Uh, I love you guys. You guys are really helping to pay the bills and keep this thing moving forward. Um, got a lot of exciting stuff in store for uh, spring and summer, so thank you very much. Uh, for you guys who don't know, if you want to consider supporting me, you just go to patreon.com backslash Geeky. Support me for a month, support me for the rest of your life, whatever you want to do. Um, it, it, any support would, would be very appreciated, I can tell you that. Anyway, so, I uh, just got to let everybody know. Um, uh, the guys uh, coming on tonight, they've all been on here before. This, this is, uh, the, the guests aren't new, but what they're doing is new. And I, when I got approached about uh, having them on, I said I like it. This is this is good. We need to talk about this, because um, you know the I, I, I talk about this all the time. I, I don't think we've begun to see the influx of people that are about to join our community, um, and that means there's going to be a huge, ever increasing demand for swabs, genetics, uh, education, uh, mentorships support groups, all that kind of stuff. So um, anybody that seems to have a real good handle on, you know, making decisions that are going to move us in the right direction there, uh, I'm all about it. So anyway, uh, I do want to let you guys know this is a, a paid segment. Um, like I said, they're, they're basically just paying to be on when they want to be on. Um, I'd have these guys on again any old time, so, uh, but, but YouTube makes me, uh, be very clear about that, so. Anyway, they, they said we want to be on, you know, as soon as you're back from, from your trip, and I said, okay, we can do that, toss me a couple bucks, let's go. So it helps me, helps them, and we're going to get into it. It's going to be, uh, quite a show tonight. So, I'm talking about Dave Wombat, Nikki Maiko, uh, and their collab, so let's just bring them on. Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, man? <laughs> All right, Dave. <laughs> up in the tapestry game. I like it. Wish I paid a dollar for it. Well, and like six dollars for shipping. That's how much you should pay for a tapestry right. from Wish. Yes, that is true. Uh, it took what four years to get to your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. But it's still, it still smells fresh, just like China. That's good. That's good. There's probably a very base level of lead in that that tapestry as well. So, you know, keep your distance. But we'll use um, it as shielding, dude. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now when I made the the thumbnail for this episode, um, I was scrolling through your photos because uh, that's probably the best way to find a photo of you. And uh, I was like, wow, Dave find some really interesting wish things <laughs> some, <laughs> like some DMT uh, uh, insertion devices and and yeah this wow is, what the are they making I'm there? looking for though this is what I want and then right. and then they're like would you like a dildo to go with that they think no. they know you no, I don't I just yes hopefully one day the AI will just truly know us and every day that we log on to anything It'll just be the thing we've always wanted. We'll just appear before our well, that's, eyes. That's, 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 that's the angle, though, is that they, they need yes. to feed you what you want, but what they really want is to show you things that you didn't know you wanted yet. Yes. And so they have to yes. reach a little bit, and sometimes they're wrong. But yes. they might just they might hit it on the head one of these days. They only need to hit sometimes. So I'm still looking. Yes. I'm still browsing. You know. Nice. You're still behind. Keep your eyes open. Now, speaking of things you didn't know you needed... I think this collab is exactly that because, you yeah. know, I'd like to think that that I if I, I DM Dave Wombat, he's going to he's going to respond to me now. Hey, back in the day, he didn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, back before I was Michael Geeky, now it's just me. Um, 
you know, it took a while. He did, you did respond to me though, but it, it, it wasn't, it, it was not quite as expedient well, as, that's, as that's now. That's the thing is that I've, 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 I've done some work as a spore vendor, but that's never been my focus. Like right. my focus has always been the actual genetic work and, and showcasing it. Like yes. if you, if you're in my, in my, in my group on Facebook, you would see constant updates of like works in progress, things that are like yeah. this generation, that generation, brand new, like things that, you know, mystery things, just all kinds of stuff. And that's, that's what I want to do is I want to grow. You know, I want to work the genetics. I want to. Exactly. And, and it's, and it's growing. It, it, it spreads like mycelium, like, it branches each project becomes three projects and those projects become three more projects each and and i'm at the point now where i'm crossing things that i already crossed with other things that i've crossed to make things that are more crossed yes. and I, it's it's i'm busy you know i'm busy and like the appalachian like, mountains when i am there. taking orders for like spores and stuff it's like i'm running around the house doing a million tasks and then i'm yeah. checking the computer every now and then as i pass by so it's not like i'm I'm sitting yeah. down dedicated to actually like getting these things out the door, but I want to, that's the thing is I, I want it. It's pointless for me to do it if nobody's going to have it, you know? And, yeah. and I just, I need a better way to get it to people. That's the thing. Yeah. And so, and, and plus I've, even as a vendor, I'm not, I'm not very good. I mean, I'm, I'm nice. Like I got good customer service <laughs> skills and I'm friendly and stuff. And I, I don't You're people person. Punch people in the face, yeah. but like, I, I, I just, I can't do it enough. I can't, I can't satisfy everybody. And it's, it's just, right. it's, it's, it frustrates me. So uh, that's where Nikki's coming in. He's got, he's got a platform. He's got his website. He's got a huge following. He's got, you know, exposure. He's got energy for days. And, and so like now I'm, I'm just, I'm focusing on what my focus is, which is just producing the shit and getting it to him. Yeah. And then he can, launch it from there and and some of it is probably going to be stuff that nobody even wants and i'm still going to try and get them to sell it uh because because i just i've got yeah. but i mean if yeah. if the the moral of the story for me so far is the swab set that you think is worth just throwing in the trash might me might be the greatest thing that you ever grew. You oh, just, I was just kidding about that. that you just don't know. <laughs> I've got some great stuff. I've got some regular stuff that's like regular outdoor cubes that I've been picking at right. for years that are like they're better than they started. Like everything has potential. Everything has some merit to it, or I wouldn't be growing it still. Like I, yeah. I do grow things that I reject. There's there's grows that I have that I'm like I'm not taking a single spore from this because it's crap. Right. Right. You know. But I'm also looking for that like small odd percentage, that one little runt in the corner that's got a little twinkle in his eye, you know, that might have potential to become something someday. So I mean, it, I, I usually still end up taking some spores and running them again a couple times. Just you're just time. looking for star quality. But I'm but I I'm, I'm changing I'm changing gears in a couple of ways. Like first first and foremost, I'm trying to move. That's the big thing. Okay. Now I've been trapped in the same house for years. Uh, I had uh, first I had some like lung infection problems, and the pandemic hit, and I had a other lung infection then the pandemic lifted and i had emergency surgery and i was locked down for an entire year healing from that and so like i'm just now to the point where i'm like up and like getting out of the house again and i'm starting to be like active and and so i want to do more like i i need to, i need more room i'm gonna move i'm gonna get more lab space i'm gonna increase my workload but in in focused ways and uh and and vending is really just not part of that i mean it, to some extent though i mean i Okay, so like, so here's here's Nikki. Here's this guy Nikki, right? He's got the website. He's gonna sell the stuff. He's gonna get all the money. Uh, I'm just sending him the stuff, and I and, and I'm working for him basically now, like, because I got to do all this promotional crap. He's like, he's like, Dave, you gotta you gotta post this, you gotta post that, like, and I like, I give him my swabs back. I mean, I'm pulling the plug on this thing. It's, it's the whole point was for me to not have to do any more work. Right. But. Or anyway, anyway, well, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. It's, we're just but he's, but I'm telling you right now, he's visionary. He's no, visionary. No, this, this is really, this is a great combo. Like uh, we've yeah. been working together for a long time now. Like, <laughs> like make no mistake. Like we didn't just meet. Like uh, we've been, <laughs> we've been sending things back and forth and 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 helping each other out in all kinds of ways. You know, Nikki was instrumental in saving my life when I had my emergency surgery, he, he did fundraisers for me. He like, he, oh, that's he, he paid my bills literally for a few months while I was bedridden. Like I, I, I the community paid everything. your bills. I, I, all I did was like organize. Well, he sent me a bunch of money and I paid the bills with him, you know? So I had, I had to do some of it, yeah. but, but I mean, that's still, you know, 
At it's least good. the truth finally came out that it wasn't Nikki's money, but no. it's good. Yeah, well, some of it was. Probably. No, but that's important, right? That's, um, you know, the last time Nikki was on, he talked about all that. Like uh, the August yeah. West guy, he kept his fundraiser no, money. No, but to be clear, the community is what came together there for days. Yes. Like, yeah. all I did was sit down, and we, we maybe took a little bit of time and organized it all and, and whatnot and, and donated some supplies to it. And, but but in the end, we, did, we didn't – I don't want to say we paid his bills. He did – transfer the funds to my account well so like yeah. the, the august west sure. and i go like remember august yeah. west yeah, remember, remember that remember yeah him. yeah he did a fundraiser too <laughs> he didn't send me yeah. anything no no good old august west <laughs> is that group uh, still around i don't uh, yeah it's still there it's still yeah. there it still pops up with some disgusting memes every now and then it's the ashy turd the ashy turd yeah <laughs> Crazy. But so okay, so like so like look, I, I gotta move though. That's the thing. I've got I've got this tiny workspace here. I'm crowded. I'm in this little duplex. So I'm moving. Uh it's gonna be a few months before I can do it, but I'm I'm gonna be moving to a larger workspace and I'm gonna be having a, a, a better lab set up and I'm gonna be expanding in a bunch of different directions. And uh, I, I'm also trying to write a book. Uh I've mentioned this before. Uh I still haven't done anything on it other than a basic outline and and working on labeling a million pictures, but I am trying to put together a book of uh, some basic grow techniques, but like my take on them, like the right. just just basically what I've done over the years and my progression from learning to grow to working with genetics and basically just a step by step what to do through all that. You want to do your own. So Long book or short book? It's gonna be a book. It's gonna be a decent book. I I I guess I can make a little like just a little quick instruction flip book, you know, with little cards. I mean, I, I think if you do anything that's it's remotely book, it's legitimate, like it's going like to so be pretty well words. received. There's going to be a lot of words and a lot of... I think people would love a big, thick book from me, dude. Yeah, it, it's going to be P a pretty big Periods, time. commas, an so, occasional semicolon. But so I need yes. to put work into that. And so right, my plan yeah. is when I move, like that's one of the things that I'm going to dedicate myself to is, is that's one of my tasks is getting that done. Nice. And then... I also want to. I also want to get out more and 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 get around the country and get to some of these mushroom events that I, right. I've been invited to like every mushroom meet for years and I haven't been able to go to any of them. Like right. except for I did get to go to the Mountain Mush Fest back nice. October, going again in April. Nice. Wait, it's April. I told you I'm bad with dates. I'm Soon. probably supposed to be there now. I yeah, don't even know. Like, yes, later, later this month. Today. I'm not sure what day it is today or year, but I'm I'm going to the Mountain Mush Fest. Nice. That's the plan. That's good. People want to, you know, hiking with Dave. It's good. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, we just want you to get healthy and not deal with all this lung stuff. I mean, I work in the ER. The The lung stuff is not fun. No, I, no. It's, I, it's, I, it's, I see it. It's not fun. It's miserable to watch somebody else do it. It's even worse to do it yourself. It's just yeah. not awful. Yes. Do you remember there was a movie uh, way back in the day, uh, Abyss, I think it was called. These people were going down to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, and they breathed, like, they breathed the, like the apparatus where they breathed the water, the yeah. like liquid. They had, yeah. They had this liquid air that they breathed. Yeah. And once they had it in their lungs, it, it protected them from the high pressure of the depths. Yeah. And that's what you feel like when you're breathing problems kick in with your lungs, yeah. except that it doesn't give you any oxygen and you die. So it's drowning. That? That's what it's called. It's drowning. I forgot. I forgot what it was called. Drowning. Yeah. Drowning out of the water. Don't don't do it. But I'm breathing good fun. now. Look, look, I can talk. I can breathe. Like I'm I'm actually really healthy right now. I'm I'm feeling great. Like I've been That's exercising. Good. I'm I'm eating good. Um I feel you're, eat, great. you're eating I'm well? Great. I'm eating well. What have you been eating? Uh, pretty much everything. Without <laughs> we know that to be true. I'll eat stuff I find outside. Like I am curious about nature. Well, you know, during the podcast, if you get hungry, just let us know. Oh, oh, we'll, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have a snack here in a little we'll, bit. We'll, we'll give you some time to take a snack. Before, yeah, before we get into that, can we, is this yes. an appropriate time to talk yes. about that world record fruit? Yes. Oh, let's do that. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in case people don't know, that group might, I mean, a big old mushroom has just been birthed. So let, let me pull up uh, this video. Is it here somewhere in my ledger of videos? All right, guys. So yeah, if you're on Facebook and you follow Nikki, you've probably already seen a little bit of this in case you haven't. 
This is a Psilocybe cubensis mushroom. It looks just a little bit different than a B plus. All right, correct me if I'm wrong. That said 1219 grams. I think it was 18. 18. Maybe 18 maybe. That's big. Yeah. That's a big That's boy. Big. Forget <laughs> the 400 club. Me. Forget the 400 club. That's like no, that is right now recorded as like the the largest. Not, I mean, some people are trying to say that some of the blobs, some of the enigma fruits yeah, will but, count. Yeah, but those conglomerate though; those start yeah, off as exactly. Like, yeah, it's like going look at my cluster weighs four hundred. Big deal. Exactly. No, but that is the, the largest. Uh, That's one single basidio fruit. carp right there. Yeah, yes. yeah, that thing yeah. is uh, crazy. My buddy uh, Jason Wilson got a hold of me because uh, he always has grown just insane sized fruits. He got a hold of me and said he was out of agar plates one night, and he was I, he, I didn't even realize what the reasoning was, but he was really nagging me about it, and he does me favors all the time. So I was like, okay. all right, well, like I have, I'll bring you like twenty, you know what I mean? No problem. And I, I buzzed on down there, and in the driveway, I saw the post. He just posted it and weighed it and said that he was having a contest about it. Um, and this was weeks ago, so the contest is over. So no one try to find it, <laughs> but. Um, uh, it was it's huge. It was the biggest thing I'd ever seen, and we got inside, and I was able to take some pictures of it. And do you have any of those pictures, or? Uh, yeah, I was just looking for those. Okay, Let's see where sorry. They're... You 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 keep talk. You keep telling the story. I'll, yeah, I'll but, be looking but it for was these. The absolute largest fruit ever, and that uh, that culture is just it, it, basically at this point, it was gifted to him at one point from um, a Sporgan Myco off of Facebook, and. Yeah. And at, at some point, it just got mislabeled or miscommunicated. No one can really for sure say what it was or what it is. Uh, but uh, his something. Instagram is Spore Dropper. And, yeah, he, he holds the current record for the largest single-body cubensi unless someone goes ahead and breaks that here. And the other one, he had he actually had two of them there. I don't know if you, you end up finding the photos. There's two of them. And the, the other one was 988 grams, I believe. And that, that also had broken the previous record, which I think was uh, 916 or something like that. It's all reported in, I think, a Facebook group called Myco Monsters. Wow, a Facebook group I haven't heard of yet. Really? No way. Yeah, I don't know about Myco That's Monsters. That's an older group. Yeah, they've been recorded. It is an old group. It's been around it's for a cool long time. Group. It's a cool group. I think, I think it's one of Toad's groups. Is it, Dave? I think so. I think it's Toad's group. group. Yeah, he, he's got a lot of little good groups. Nice, but yeah, that was that was a extremely extremely impressive, uh, impressive. I effort. mean, so I had to just the stars that. align once in a millennia, and and you get that right there. All right, okay, just found. You know, pictures. I've always wondered. Okay, have have you ever have you ever looked into like uh, uh, the pumpkin growing contests? Like people try to grow these gigantic oh, yeah. pumpkins. Oh, yeah. oh so I've seen you do is right you you plant that. your pumpkin. And then when they start to grow, you cut them all off the vine except for one, right. like, and yep. then it focuses all its energy yep. into that one. So uh, it doesn't work that way with mushrooms. So I did try it with a small tub. Uh, if you pick like all the pins but one, uh, it just grows that one pin like a regular mushroom and gets really. Better. Yeah, Damn. it doesn't. Uh, I, I I tried that a good. couple times too with <laughs> zero success. I feel your pain. Like just, just, right, just I think I just give it, it give it to the big guy, you know. But that that is that is really that that mushroom is redonkulous. It, <laughs> like you I can, mean, you know, it's big when you look at it, and the, your first thought is, I could just beat someone with this mushroom. You could knock somebody it, else. It, I think. It, it felt unrealistic in the hand for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. So speaking of that, the the pictures, I think the you know the little harvest video, you understand it, but you don't really understand it until i think we get some of these pictures up on well no because like his hand like it's like your hand can't close around the stem i mean this is yeah, like a yeah. like a like a yeah like that's a, a big boy it's a, it's a bbm <laughs> yeah no further big comments boy, necessary sure. there all right hold on it's processing we'll get these 
Dave, that that Ragnarok you had almost like it might uh, compare. I I I'm supposed to pick that actually after the show. I'm picking that, and 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 we're doing a contest in my group for that one. Let me go grab that real quick. Yeah, grab that right now. That All right. So while crazy. while he does that, I'm gonna pull up these uh, oh the monster God. fruits. Here yeah, we go. Look at this, guys. Right. I can't oh, even wrap my head around this. That's two of them, right? By the way, that's, that's two. Yeah, so that's twelve hundred and a thousand, basically. Yeah, two kilograms right there, guys, straight up. There we go. That's that's me. That's you. You. Nobody's I could tell, like, like holding them. I could. I could tell. Just kind of made you feel like a superhero almost. That's what someone. Yeah, someone said yeah. I look like a character select on a video yeah. game. I mean, yeah, come on. some big boys. Come on, man. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, give away a swab set of one of these at some point in yes. the next, like, 40 minutes. I'm going to have you guys at some oh, yeah, point wait. in the next 40 minutes, not till I at a, a, say, a predetermined start commenting uh, in the live. And uh, I'll have you comment 1 through 10 in the first part. What was that? How ma- I mean, like, how many, how many swab sets do you get off this fruit? That's what I want to know. It's not giving you a whole lot of gill. No, he and he he's not much of a swabber. He he yeah. takes a lot of clones and stuff. Um, I mean, but I think he got he got a nice either. handful. He got probably fifty. Yeah. Okay. You could have gotten more. I mean, just more. come on. That's just that's absurd. It is okay. Okay, give me some screen. Give me some screen. Yeah, I mean, give me some All screen. Right. Okay, me that's screen. it. We we got that done. Okay, so All right. here, so, hold on. I'm I'm gonna actually give you proprietary screen somehow here if I can figure yeah. out how to do it. That's you. Uh, no, nope, you. Here it's you. I'm gonna turn me on. We want less of you. Nope. That's, nope. That's less of me. Thinking. We want I'm more the colorful of him. guy. The guy with the colors. Okay. Okay. So uh what you got is you got uh Ragnarok. Uh Yeti and Crooked Mystery. I crossed Yeti with Crooked Mystery uh to make uh something new uh what i got was jelly beans they were teeny tiny little pigmented fruits uh terrible looking but uh in the next couple generations they turned albino and got big and they split off into two different directions which was uh i named nanook which is a more yeti looking one and ragnarok which was a little bit more crooked mystery looking but they both have elements of either uh but so this is this is going to be ragnarok uh and if we can get in the tub there we can see down in the top there that is a regular size bic lighter i don't know if i can get a good angle on the side of that fruit but it's you can't really get down into the tub to see it but the thing is pretty big it's not as big as those monsters that nikki was showing uh but but these are some pretty big boys uh and these have a really neat uh kind of a translucent kind of quality at the top of the caps you can see through the skin on the top of the cap and you can see the gills through the top surface. Uh, but this is, this is Ragnarok. And uh, so there's a, there's a contest going on in my group right now on Facebook. Uh, if you can find the post for that, you can uh, guess the weight on the fruit and uh, win a swab set for the, the three closest guesses. I'll get that. Uh, I'm not doing that during the show though. That's, that's Nikki's thing. I didn't want to steal a thunder on that. So Nikki's going to do the contest during the show and I'll do a different giveaway uh, later when it's my turn. There you go. There we go. Okay, sorry. I, I'm not a streamyard master just yet. Um, yeah, those are sexy. The the I'm interested in. Uh, I would like to grow a mushroom where I can see through the cap into the gills. That, there's that there's I've got a few like that. Uh, I'll I'll point them out. They're they're gonna pop up in our little my other little slideshow that I have at some point too. Nice. Like there's there's a couple that do that. Yeah, everybody's excited to see Dave's faves. Oh yeah, so uh, well, let's do it, guys. Okay, right. disclaimer, disclaimer. Uh, this is a really short list because uh, I was pressured to Top come up 10. with ten. Uh, <laughs> and you guys know that I love like everything, so it was really this was really very challenging to do. And and there's probably more that I could add to the list. And if I spent longer thinking about it, I'd probably swap some out. But this is a good top ten to start with uh, because they do have like fantastic qualities. Uh, so, so yeah, let's go. Got to start somewhere. All right. So without further ado, Dave's top 10. Let's get into it. All right. Start in no particular order, correct? I'm not sure. We'll find out when they start. Okay. okay. <laughs> El Choco. Yeah, these are in no particular order, but this is a good one to have right at yeah, the front. One of my favorites. Wanted to start, start strong. 
All right, so El Choco. I think it's El Choco, or is it El Choco, Dave? It, it well, it depends on your accent. It's a regional yeah. difference, Nikki. Yeah, Just my like bad. Nikki. That's fair. West Coast. <laughs> If you're down south, it's Choco. You know, it just depends upon where you're from. Chico, El Chico. Yeah. Well, see, and if you're, if it, it starts with L, so it's Spanish, so it would be El Choco if it was Spanish, you know? Correct. So it's, it's just, you, you got your Spanish, you can put your Spanish see. with your English accent on it. Or you can say it Choco, like it's chocolate, because it is chocolate. But but that's the whole point of it. It's chocolate mushroom. It doesn't it taste like chocolate. chocolatey mushroom. It does not taste like chocolate, but boy, it looks chocolatey. <laughs> I have not grown it. I have. You sent me some swabs of it. I have yet to grow it. It's, it's on the list. I'm. I've only grown like eighty some cultigens at this point. So. There, there's a range of El Chaco it's, out there now. Like like a lot of since it's been out for a couple of years now, it, it, it expresses itself a few different ways. The ones that I'm running now are like rock solid, like little bricks. Like they just keep getting shorter and denser. The earlier really ones like. were were more flat capped, and and showed off more of the hairy texture. And then the newer ones are, are kind of smooth and kind of like melted chocolate a little bit. I, I like the little bullet heads. I like them to dry firm, yeah. and I don't like them breaking up. I yeah. just picked a couple last night. They're very girthy. That were Girth. so, it, it sounded like ripping Velcro off of the substrate when I was picking them. Because they 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 were wide. They're so wide at the bottom, and they're attached. The entire bottom is attached. These things hold onto the substrate like nothing else. Like, they grip it. It was a fight. <laughs> I'd just be slicing. I'd have to pull out the, the fresh number 11 and go to town on it. They actually didn't take a whole lot of sub with them. I mean, they let go of it, but it was just, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a struggle. It was loud. It was loud. You just got to tweak harvest. them back and forth a little bit. Be careful not to wake the kids up with that harvest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, man, I, my, uh, I got three kids. Only one of them cares about mushrooms. It's my middle child. Uh, but she's a great harvester. She's, uh, there you go. yeah, man. She she harvests my tubs with me. If if I harvest without her, she gets real mad. So I just always wait and let her let her help dad out. All right, next up, ASIM. Yeah. Well. Amex, asymmetric. Okay, so you know you got this 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 wild Mexican red spore cubensis I've been growing for a little while, and it it doesn't look. It, it's a little interesting when it grows its red spore version too. But it sprouted so many different things. This is the one that uh, Chaco World and, and Chupacabra came from. And then okay. it sprouted these, these albinos. And there's like a whole family of albinos that have come from it now too. But the asymmetric one is is special because it's got these these branching gills. It's got these like lightning bolt, like almost morel mushroom kind of gills. And they're, they're just, yeah, look at that. That, that right there. That, that. Yeah, that's, I haven't. I think I grew a Melmac once that maybe had just the lightest. Some of them do that. Some of the Melmacs will that, do some weird branching too, but this is like extreme. I mean, yeah, this is this really, really extreme. They're like thorn. And then the mushrooms yeah. themselves are pretty cool too. I mean, these are like, they're like silver caps. They've got like, they're, they're bumpy. They're lumpy. They're weird shaped caps. None of the caps are round on this one. They're all like an odd shape. Some of them have like varying degrees of doubling where it's like, it's not quite two caps, but it's, like oh. one and a half caps, like maybe two, three quarter caps kind of stuck together. So it's like a long cap or or it does a lot of uh, conjoined fruits and and like two fruits growing into one cap or one stem splitting off into two caps. It does a lot of that, too. It's just it's got mm -hmm. a lot of branching issues. It's stable in its instability. It keeps doing it. It keeps right. doing it. Now, the other the other the other Amex mushrooms, there's silver ones that look very similar, but they're round like the caps are actually round. They've got radial symmetry and the gills are straight, like straight, smooth flaps and no branching. I like what it. Can you do? I don't even know if I've seen you post about this one and yet it's in your top 10. How the hell? See, I I just, I'm not on Facebook enough. You're anymore. not on Facebook enough. I guess. They post so often and so much that some oh, of his posts, if he posts like three times in a row, will get buried. Yeah. That but is true. Like, yeah, he'll post yeah. like... If people ever want to go through and see his stuff, you if you go to his group Wombat Labs, which is where he posts almost everything now, if you just go and you like type in his name, you can hit his actual uh, little member button, mm -hmm. and it'll show every single post he does. And he posts like fifteen times a day. He, I think he updates the group on every single time he checks it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sometimes multiple. Yeah. Well, I, I I figured out, like, and this is this is Facebook. Uh, 
Facebook savvy stuff here. So, so listen to this. So if you're making a post on Facebook with pictures, right, you can have five. Yeah. And it'll put them in a little square. You'll have one, two, and then one, two, three down the side. I'll be giving these all away. If you put six pictures on there, your last picture is going to be the fifth oh, picture. Oh, yeah, the count. Yeah. yeah. Or, or it'll have like plus two, plus three, however many pictures and are. And no one looks at them all. No one looks at them. Or if they do, it's annoying. So, and yeah. then it's hard. Once you start going down the list of pictures, it's hard oh. to get back to your main screen. So it is right. a pain in the ass. So just five pictures per post now is what I do. I won't put six pictures or 12 nice. pictures on a post unless I'm doing like a massive photo dump. Like here, look, everybody, here's a bunch of bullshit. But you have to strategically look because sometimes, sometimes you have to place a photo as number three or number one instead of number two or number five or else it crops out right. some of the most. Yes, it does. Parts of the photo. Yeah, but it once does again, let's stop right here. These are all the best tips possible. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just, no, just these format. are, yeah. The, you just want to format it so that it's easy to look at. So, I, yeah, I so mean, I it is it. true. Some people just mindlessly, like, go through life as cavemen and think about nothing ever. But if, yeah, anybody actually stops and thinks about this stuff, yeah, no, no it, one it likes, I, I do the same thing. I never post different. a bunch of photos because no one's going to look at them all. Yeah, no, just fine. It's, it's same fine with it. Instagram. I never do more than a couple. Well, because and, and, and it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be an odd number two. You can do three, or you can do five. But if you do two, it, it crops right. them in a weird way. It'll yeah. cut the heads off the people in the pictures. It does all kinds of weird shit if you do two pictures. And it, it's random whether it puts them side by side or stacks them vertically yeah. too. So it's like two pictures just sucks. But three is good. Five yeah. is good. Yeah. Four, four you get one big one and three small ones. So it depends yeah. on what you're trying to show. Yeah, that can work for some things. Yeah. Like it's you got to plan like right now. But now, you also said, Dave, on the first podcast we talked about this, and I think uh, we talked a little bit about this when I had you on talking about ethics. Um, you were the first person, and I think maybe still the only person that's really said this as a, an approach, which is if you take pictures of everything and you post it, you just have such an amazing visual paper trail of the work that you do, and it serves as evidence of, you know, if there's ever a debate about where something came from or its lineage or what it looks like, people know what you're, if people pay attention to, to your group and see what you're growing, somebody else grows something, they, oh yeah, I saw, oh, you're growing that thing of Dave's, right? It's, it's good for lineage. It's good well, and for... I've noticed like people are answering questions for me sometimes. Like that's somebody great. Will post a question in a group and somebody will come in and answer because it's something that they noticed that i posted a while yeah. back or whatever and they're they're just passing it along so i don't have to and it saves me some yeah some struggles but but yeah the the hold on computer error give me a second okay okay i'm good i'm good anyway hi dave's uh, like an it cyber security master and he just got a special notification but no we, you, you should think about everything and and, and yeah, I, you, you should think about everything. when i'm posting things i I type out a post and I, I often go back and edit it a few times before I actually post it. Like I'll reread. Nikki it, does try that too. Try to make sure that it's. Uh... Um. <laughs> no, he does. Oh my god, uh, oh, Nikki no. is more neurotic about posts than you guys might think. You might go, "Oh, he yeah. uses extra letters and he doesn't care about spelling." No, he also thinks that's about just it. Just a, that's a just, different, that's just different his, approach. Yeah. Yeah, he's, you he's know what the thing is, is it, it, if I don't care about spelling, I always have that extra potential bump. Because if I spell something yeah. wrong and I really want to bump a post, I can go back and under my comment just correct it with right. with the right spelling and put that little star next to it. Yeah, and it just yep. kind of like re is that extra free bump. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True story. All right. Everybody loves this one. How could you not? How could you not? Yeah. Classic. How could you not? A new take on a classic. So, so KSSS was my my favorite for a lot of years. Uh, I just just to eat, it's still probably my favorite to eat, like effects wise. Like I absolutely love the thing, and so having it with no color is just prettier to look at. But it's the same mushroom. It's still packed with power. It's rock solid. I mean, these are the densest. the 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 core of them is like the the meat of an almond. Like they're just they're just wow. so dense. And they, they really, they dry up to almost nothing. Like when you dry them, you end up with just the cap and like the whole bottom bulb is just like a smear on the bottom of the cap. Mm -hmm. They look like nothing dried. But Is this KSSS the one that you ended up reviving? 
Yeah, yeah. This well, it turned albino after it came back. Like, okay, I, I'd grown it for years, and then and then lost the culture for whatever reason, contamination. Sold all my swabs, didn't pay attention. Uh, so I had somebody mail me some in back. There. In the meantime, I dug out this ten-year-old print, and it was like a a triangle, like a little triangle from a corner of a flap oh, yeah. of a cap, and and it was on a piece of notebook paper. Like, I mean, it was the shittiest print ever. And uh, and it and it came back to life, and it eventually uh, came back as KSS has squats, but it went through some struggles first. I mean, it did some weird stuff for a while, but then it but then it produced the albinos as a result. So that was like the ultimate reward for uh, for that. And I, I've actually was so obsessed with the albino version then that I I still haven't really like grown the pigmented ones again since. I got them started though. They're coming. They're coming back. That's going to be. Just a big wait problem. another ten years, and then you revive the original chaos. I'm going to be so excited when they start the popping up in the club, though, because they really are like my all-time favorite. So there's going to be a big post for that when they come up. But they're on agar now. They're coming. <laughs> they're on a plate. They're growing fuzz. Nice. And it is fuzz too. These they, they've always had the most yeah, tomentose mycelium. Yeah. Like it's never it's never rhizo. Like no matter what you do, it's just it looks like mold. Yeah. Hmm. You second guess it every time. Like it always, you look at it and it's like, this looks sketchy. Have you like, noticed they sometimes don't colonize super, super well before they fruit too? Sometimes yeah, they're terrible at colonizing the sub too. The sub looks like yeah. it's like not colonized and then and fruits just start popping up here and there. Yeah. I've always noticed that with those. And a lot of times with the, that your albino case at, I've grown that a lot and I've seen that grown a lot by a couple of friends and almost they every just time. It's like bare it substrate. Them. Like just. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's so interesting too because that's usually a sign of bacteria, but I'll see it with completely completely clean clean spawn over and over and over again to where i think it's got to be it's got to be just a genetic issue the crooked mystery does that too it it, it just yeah. it just grows fruits and it doesn't grow like any pins except for the ones it's going to grow like there's no extra <laughs> well that's everything Ooh, i like these guys all right okay. you've been this one's been getting some good traction lately and i can tell you hold uh a special place in your heart for Mr. Peanut. So, Mr. Peanut, besides being a, a good looking mushroom, I mean, that's just, it's, it's got pretty color. Uh, the yeah. caps are wavy, you know, it's, but, but it's, it's, it comes from a couple of favorites. Uh, and then, and then it has aspects of both. Like, so it's like, it, it lost the chocolate color right off the bat, but it got some craziness from El Choco because it, it's got some, it's got some wonks and waves that, that yeah, the PP the just has never done. But but also Mr. Peanut fell into my heart through through AI art, uh, because if you type in Mr. Peanut into any AI generator, you can type in Mr. Peanut at the beach, Mr. Peanut driving a car, Mr. Peanut, anything. Uh, Mr. Peanut and AI have some kind of weird relationship, like just do it. Do some AI. Mr. All right, Peanut. guys, that's your homework for next week. Go AI, Mr. Peanut, and we all we want just post oh on God. Facebook. We want to see your Mr. <laughs> Peanut AI. We're looking for the most unique, interesting. That's gonna and, be and crazy. maybe one of us will cough up like like a prize or something for the winner. But yes, <laughs> Mr. Oh, Peanut though the, the the fruits though. So anyway, let's back back to the fruits though. Forget the AI. The AI art's cool though. We gotta like the AI. Is, AI is fun, but the fruits are good. They're 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 kind of intermediate speed. Uh, there's slower than regular fruits faster than pe they do have a slight spore drop uh but it's it's a productive it's an active productive it loves to grow uh and and then there's versions of it there's there's it, there's a long version there's a pale version there's there's i'm working on a, a giant version like there's just a bunch of different branches nice. to it now and they're they're doing some neat stuff and i've got some pictures of some of those coming up in my slideshow when we get to that part uh but this is this is the basic mr peanut right here this is like the original mr peanut uh, not not the brand name Mr. Peanut guy, but I I, I do like that guy too. Yeah. He's All right. Before I, when you when you when you AI Mr. Peanut, that's not who's going to come up. You're not going to get Mr. Peanut from the brand name. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> that's half weird, the fun, Dave. Weird <laughs> hybrid dog fun. aliens. Like it's it's <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> All right. I, it's like I'm I want to do it right. right now, but I won't. <laughs> All right, before we move on, uh, my buddy Dr. Rick, who's been on here before, he's an he's a awesome guest every time, um, he was in the chat, and he wanted to ask you a question. I'll pull it up here. A uh, question for Dave and Nikki. What differences, if any, are there between KSC peyote cuts and KSSS? 
Well, the, the peyote cut, the cap, the cap was kind of sucked into the top of the fruit like a butthole. Like it didn't really have a cap. So it was just kind of like just the fruit. And then it would have like kind of like a little sprig of gills in the middle kind of. Uh, and, but, and so like, and these have, my, my KSS sets have, have very wide flared up curled caps okay. with a lot of gills. That's, that's the main difference there. The peyote cut is really rare. Somebody, somebody, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Not too long ago, but usually when you see it, it's the same old picture recycled and shown again. Yeah, yeah and and I haven't actually seen. I remember it was Michael Clay that recently just got some genetics from what he thought was that, but they, they didn't end up uh, growing out to be right. anything like that original photo. Yeah. I've never seen anything replicated. That's like one of those long lost. You know, long, long, long lost cultures that was probably, Man. probably and and it might have never, yeah. it might have never repeated. Like, it yeah, might have exactly. never repeated yeah. because I, I mean, photo, I was photo, though. heavily involved with those guys, and it was supposed to be sent to me on so many occasions, and I, I never got it. Yeah, it's kind of elusive so, now, kind of like one of those, you know, ooh, it's like the unicorn. Sasquatch of Cubensis. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's the peyote cut of. Sasquatches, uh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, any I, I, I wouldn't worry about like whether it has cap or not though. Like as long as it's got that pumpkin shaped body though, it's going to take yeah. you out of space. That like, density, I think, is what holds potency. It too. is. It is. It's. It just. It. It seals it in freshness. There's. There's no oxidization because it's all yeah. trapped. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting. That's a quality that we don't talk about a lot. I remember Ed one time had a post saying, "Hey, you know, I'm going to try to start isolating." you know, traits and fruits, what traits would you guys want to isolate? And I don't know if anybody ever really talked about density, but yeah, I think it's really crucial. I think it's a good one. Same with even if you grew a fruit that had a hollow stipe, yep. now you got, you got an air, you know, yep. <laughs> it's got a hole down the middle. You're getting more air in there. You don't want so that. Even like, even the short fat El Chocos have a hollow stipe. They've got a little air tube down the middle. But yeah. the walls are thick it's as so hell. Thick. thick. They're yeah. so yeah. thick, and it's like clay. It's it's like solid clay. They're they're just really tough. Yeah. Nice. Onward right. from Mr. Peanut. What's next? We Let's got Mr. Peanut. Going. Oh, chocolate crinkle. Oh, okay. nice. So, All right. so I say choco, you say choco, but well, we all say crinkle. Chocolate is actually chocolate. It's it's short for chocolate. This is chocolate crinkle, but it is it is the product of El Choco and uh, Mr. Crinkle which is a, a really weird tat mutation that started off nice. without any gills or spores whatsoever. Uh, but it eventually got gills and spores and they were crooked and crinkly. So it got the name Mr. Crinkle, uh, Primasome, you know, Primus, Mr. Mm -hmm. Crinkle. Uh, so, so chocolate crinkle can grow uh, enigma type brains. It can grow the chocolate crinkle brains or it can grow mushroom shaped mushrooms or it can grow lumpy weird things that are kind of both <laughs> or have aspects of either. Uh, it likes to do uh, like kind of a brain thing that grows like a ribbon of cap that kind of surrounds the entire fruit. Like, it does a lot of weird stuff uh, and you never really know what it's going to do, but that's, that's what's fun about it. But it has, it has common, common traits to all of these things. They're all super dense, very slow. Uh, fruits can take like upwards of a month to mature. Wow. Like this is a really, 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 really slow. And, and you're guaranteed to have the weirdest looking tub to take pictures of ever. Like your friends are all going to be amazed. And I tell people this isn't a, this isn't a great mushroom for like, say you're trying to like fill up a 60 quart tub to stock up for the music festival. This isn't right. going to be your best bet because it doesn't perform that way for you. It'll, it'll fight with you. It'll, it'll frustrate you. But what it will grow is some of the most unique and strangely different mushrooms. Super just, spicy too. Like they're really just going to be just for you. Like it'll never right. grow the same way twice. So whatever it grows for you is unique and special, and and it's in, it's the strongest mushroom I've ever eaten. I'm sure, like it's got to be. Oh wow, okay. it's ridiculously strong. Uh, the the sample that got tested was like 2.06 or something percent alkaloids. Wow. Like I mean, something stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it is it is really spicy, and and that can probably range too. If you if you pick it early, maybe it's not as strong. I don't know. You got to be patient for this one. Yeah, because you got. I would make the spores for those, and it's so hard because like it's very much with the chocolate crinkle. It's very much one of those ones where I'm putting a drop of water on the gills and then putting it on a slide to see if there's even spores on them because it's it's so low spore and it, it will have blonde gills for a very long yeah. time and it, yeah. they'll, they'll, it'll get spores but sometimes yep. they're there and you just can't see them and then yep. sometimes they develop really late so sometimes exactly. it'll actually darken up but it's just it's so random you just never know what it's going to do and that's, that's even fun. fruit to fruit within the tub 
Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a life is like a box of chocolates. Right. <laughs> life is like a box of chocolate crinkle for sure. My life is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's definitely it's it's definitely an adventure. It's I, I I I need to grow more of it. They're fun. Boo. Dark Dance. matter just had a comment. Seems like B plus has a treasure chest of possible expressions. What well, my B plus though? Yeah. I grew this B plus for twenty years before it did anything different. So like, crazy okay, too. Mind you, for ten years of that, ten years plus, I did grain to grain with the exact same culture. So exactly. it didn't even because how long different. that was. New so okay, so really, I didn't grow it for twenty years with evolution involved. Like I, yeah. I just kind of grew it consistently for twenty years. But but there were a lot of times where I restarted from spore and then kept going again. But it, it really, it was super consistent. Like, I mean, the most regular, regular B plus ever until that first chocolate uh, El Choco mutant came up and it was dark and hairy and it, it just, it stood out, you know, and, and everything from that point on has been just weirder and weirder. Right. I, I, I honestly, I don't even have the B plus that it came from anymore. I don't think, I think I just like completely abandoned them for El Choco. It's so hard when you're running and phenol <laughs> hunting to keep all the cultures and stuff. Oh I. God. You in the beginning, I used to obsess over it so much that it would drive me actually crazy. And at this point, when I lose something, it's just like mm, it just kind of like rolls off your shoulders. You have to let it, or else you're just upset all the time because you can't keep. You know, at a certain point, it, it, you'd be looking at keeping 500 plus cultures, and you just can't do it practically. Right. <laughs> I, it's it's I, I I tried to describe it as running downhill in an avalanche. Yeah. Like you're just, you're flailing your arms and legs as fast as you can, trying not to fall down. Just keep going. Just, yeah. just try to run with the avalanche. Like you can make it. Surf down that bastard. Okay, oh, now, this one, this one. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So this is again coming. You don't from like this one, do you, Nikki? I love this one. Did, no, what you, oh, never mind. I got you. Oh. Coming from El Choco again. This is, this is El Choco crossed with Gumby, which is a, a kind of a bullet capped long narrow growing Melmac TP offshoot. This is uh, one of your newest crosses, right? Yeah. And and it's a weird one. Uh when I when I did the original cross, I threw it in a tub. Multi-spore cross, like just put them together on a swab and threw them in in a dish. Uh threw it in a tub, whatever. Uh it grew uh, a little a little fin, a little like fin like it was going to do enigma and then and then trick popped up. So I was like, oh, I got to save the little fin. So I was like, well, this this didn't work out because it contamined, and that's a multi-spore risk. You know, you take that risk when you run multi-spore right. shit. So, uh, but I saved the fin, and I cloned it, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll get another Enigma-type thing because I've got, like, three or four of them already. Why not another one? So uh, so then I grow it, and it starts growing little fins, but then all the fins grow caps on their edges. And and then one of them grows into this this fruit on the on the left here, this, this kind of uh, curly curly thing and then another one grows into this thing but but it doesn't it doesn't grow all of it like some of it grows like enigma type brains and then it picks and chooses an, an individual piece and kind of expands it into a full mushroom yeah and this is the another one that has branching mushroom. gills uh i did a, i did a post in my group the other day after i after i picked one where i i zoomed in at different levels so these gills have side gills that come off the sides of them and then those little gills have gills on them and if you zoom in all the way down to like like 400 times on the microscope the gills are covered with tiny little ridges that that are on their surface like it's God just like it. i have to get this now and grow it because i have to look at that it, okay. it's it's like it's like diving down a fractal rabbit hole like it just that keeps is. getting smaller and smaller and That's there's awesome. more and more levels of gills to them the, the smallest ridges are just barely wider than the spores it's it's really bizarre but it, again, it's not a big producer, at least not yet. It hasn't. It's still pretty new. Uh, it, and I'm, I've only grown really small batches of it, but I'm working on trying to build some up so I can grow a bigger tub of it. But but this is a really exciting. Weird this is one of the ones thing. I'm most excited about. It's so unique. It's 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 truly unique. Like there's there's really nothing else quite like it. And, and that's what I like about it. Plus, it's got the chocolate color. Like, you can't even see the tops of the caps because they're all wrapped up, but they've got neat color on top, too. You've got some pictures of some of your... You've got some more pictures of some of these isolations, too, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Just go... Yeah. Just... All you got to do, guys... And this is, again... Go this to is Wombat another... Labs. You can see... Yeah. And also, pictures. all of these are, like... Like, we've been talking about this whole time. All of these are up now for 15 bucks a set uh, at NickyMikosMarket.com. Perfect. And right now, today, we're doing a 10% off... Uh, the code is thank you. Um, I'm almost 99% positive that's it. Just one word. Thank you. 
Um, and uh, and if it's not, so right? people, someone will message me, and I'll make sure that it's it, it we'll is that. It. We'll, not, we'll switch so. it to that. Yeah, cool, man. That, I'll get a lot of emails. And I'll well, so it. since we're on the chocolate and and we're reminding people, um, you know that all like the chocolate. stuff is now readily available on the site. Let's pull up one of your promotions you got right now, or oh, yeah, one of your. Packages, Chocolate Lovers Collection. I love it. I think this one is the one I need yeah. to get. Yeah, this <laughs> is like a box of chocolates. Yeah, the, I like... I this like is the, the one you buy your girlfriend, right? No, so this, this is, is it's got like... If you look at like... This is the this is the Choco Mac down here at the bottom. Oh, I yeah. done messed up my mm -hmm. screen. Uh, the Choco Mac down there at the bottom, you can see the hairy texture on it. Like that comes from the El Choco right there. But then it, it fades to that like almost white at the cap's edge. Like that's just... That's lovely. Those are I mean, neat. They're like they're like they're like uh, buttermilk pancakes on stems. Like, yeah, they look insane. I was gonna say they look like you just want to eat them like a caramel. I mean, you kind of do want to eat them. You do. I mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget the mushrooms are yes. for that sometimes. <laughs> All right, here. Let's let's go back. Sorry, just we and didn't oh, we didn't me, exactly more, perfectly tailor how we were gonna go through this stuff. One here. more thing so, about right. the chocolate gumby too. It, it's just like the chocolate crinkle as far as speed goes. It's another one where the fruits Slow. take upwards of a month to finish. Uh, so it's a long wait for it. Uh, and that puts you at risk for contam also. When, you, when you're working with something super slow, that's right. just more time for other stuff to set in. So it's really hard to get past that first flush with it because by the time you get that in, there's already something happening on the edge of the tub getting green or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's still, it's, it's, it's available. It's super unique. It could still probably use some work, uh, but you guys out there can do that work too. Like I get it and, and grow it because yeah. I'm growing some other stuff now. No one person can do all the work. There's plenty of other ISOs yeah. that are extremely fast growing. You're, you're WTAT. You're, I think yeah, we're coming to the next one too. This is, yeah. this is a slow one for the patient people. I love this too. This is one of my favorites. Okay, another another super unique one because because if you know the Odisha the Odisha mushrooms or Orissa if you want to be old school cultivator and and not update the name, uh, <laughs> they're big cubes. They're like regular cubes, big spore droppers. Uh, the the pictures on the website they always show the same pictures from like when they were originally collected, and it's some guy holding up a mushroom that's like the size of a dinner plate right. that grew on an elephant turd. Uh, yes. So so. Tell them about the, the the Providence change so they know what you're talking about there. Okay, in 2011, this is a state in southern India. They changed their name from Orissa to Odisha to, to reflect how they actually pronounce it in local language. Uh, it was renamed Orissa when British colonists took over and put that name on the maps because it's easier for them to say. So it's See, not, there's it's, naming issues wherever you go, guys. It was it's never it was never called Orissa by the people that live there. Uh, so... And, just so, it and so this was in 2011 where they officially made it official and said, we're putting our name back on the map the way we want it. And it's literally only spore websites that have it as Orissa for anything anymore hmm. because they just haven't updated their list of spores from like 1974 when, when John <laughs> Allen went and got the shit in the first place. So, yeah. I'm glad you had That's my Some of those websites, you're like, wow, this website is probably from 1994. Well, and if it's still selling, it's still selling. So whatever, yeah. call it whatever you want. But this is yeah, these, these Odisha squats are something completely different. Now, it, it grew squats for me first that were golden cap. And they're not squats like the KSSS squats. They're taller, yeah. but they're real short and dumpy. Uh, and then and then I lost the, I ended up losing the, the colored ones and it, gave, it gifted me more. And I they immediately those. went albino the second time. And they're like, they're like little marshmallow puff balls. I mean, they're, even when they're growing, like, you know how you do the squeeze test on like an ape? These you are can't. soft. These are soft their whole life. Like they're they're just puffy. And they're they're little, they're delicate, they're, their caps open up and they go blue like Jack Frost. Uh, but uh, feedback on these has been that they are like incredibly visual. Like they're they're smacky yes. in the face visual and and uh, I actually haven't eaten them. I have to admit. Man, I just want to put them between uh, two graham crackers and a piece they of chocolate. Are, they're, they're one of my favorite lights. That's what I want. I'm yeah. going to do that this summer. I think. Wise, I think they look incredible. They are truly like beautiful little things, though. They're, yeah. they're, and, and just so drastically different from the original. I've seen them grown in larger totes, too. And they I've seen them fist-sized. You know what I mean? You, mm. I think this is right here. Is this one of your mini monos? Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. And, so. and that's a thing too. Like you, you guys have to realize that I grow everything in the tiniest little tubs. So yep. like, oh yeah, my oh, my God. my conditions like things kind of scale themselves to their uh, to their environment. Yeah, I've seen a lot of these grown. Like my albino KSS were were large. I had a couple hundred gram fruits off my albino yeah. KSS. I've I've gotten a couple of big ones too, but when I do, I just get one. Like I just get yeah like one big fruit in that little. And tub. then it makes you feel like we were talking about earlier. It makes you just want to go ahead Tiny. and pull every every pin and see what and it'll all. Yeah, those tubs. are the ones. Those are the ones. But it never does. Sorry, I had to get up out of my seat for that. Um, we were uh oh his he might have even smaller ones now. He's, oh, he's, nope. Same same size. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. This is a, it's a different brand, but this yeah, is but a, a, it's a, I think I got mine from Michaels. I think you got yours from Joanne Fabrics or okay. vice versa. Yes. Oh, hefty. Yeah, this this one's from oh. Walmart. This is the Walmart, oh, okay. the 6.5. Uh You can see my my Fay modifications is a quarter inch drill oh. hole. There's two of those on the sides. Just nice. a little hole. There's a little hole right there. Can I see it? Where's, where's my camera? Yeah, oh, I can there's, see the one yeah, hole. There's a little hole. Yep, there's holes. There's two little holes on each side. That's it. That's the whole tub. Takes me like two seconds to, I got a Dremel tool and I'm just like, meow, 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 yeah. meow. Like a pit crew. I can no make liner? Like tubs in like 10 seconds. You don't use any liners, Dave? No. No yeah, I don't for those either. For the little ones, I don't for shoe boxes either. I, it's only for bigger stuff. Yeah. No, I because well, yeah. I've got like a thousand of these things. You know how many fucking trash bags I'd have to cut up? Yeah. And I'm never. I don't know about you, but I'm never going for a second flush on it. I'm just no. getting a flush and moving on. Yeah. I don't even go for the first flush half the time. I just dump them. <laughs> yeah. I do actually do that sometimes. I'll get impatient and I'll be like, hey, I want to grow something else. Like. Well, I mean, right, certain things that if you're not seeing the action you expect to see, you, you get a like, feeling like, yeah, just, this is not yeah, happening. Like, on. it's doing something, but it's not what I wanted. Yep. All right, where are we at? Okay, ACRS. Okay, here's another. This is, uh, this was, this was a, a Colombian rust spore, uh, which is a red spore, regular cubensis with, mm -hmm. with rusty spores, uh, except... When I grew it, it uh, was albino and uh, had clear spores and looks really, really PE-ish. Uh, so, so these are a nice one. They're like it's, bowling pins. It's a fluke. Yeah. It it just happened. I, I, I put it in a tub and this is what it grew. I did not do this to it. They remind uh, me of your AMD. I just yeah. got lucky. Mm -hmm. It just happened for me and 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 it stabilized very easily. Uh, with the exception of the fact that if you look, there's like almost no gills on these things. Yeah. Uh, so when you, I mean, the gills are like just barely a raised ridge right around the very edge of the cap. Uh, so that, that slowed me down a little bit in that I can only make like a handful of swabs right. at any given time. So I, I, they've been, they've grown well. I've had no problems growing them. I've just never stocked up on the spores really. Uh, yeah. So I never did like a major release because I only would get a few swabs at a time. So it actually took me a while to build up to the point where I actually had enough swabs to send to Nikki so he could sell some. Because yeah. if I actually, and, and I do that with a lot of things. Like I don't, I don't, uh, it's part of why I'm not a, a, a full on committed vendor is I don't do the, uh, like, 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 let's take Tuke, for example. Uh, he, he made sure it was really good and he stocked up so that he was ready to do a big release on it, you know? Because as soon as he releases it, you know, the community has it and that's your opportunity to make the money on it is right at the beginning, right? I never do that. I don't stock up for stuff. I'll just, I'll grow a tub of it like I always do. And I'll be like, I guess it's ready to go. And I'll just kind of quietly sell a few of them. And then uh, it's out there, you know, but I, I don't stock up and prepare for like a big, a big release right. event kind of thing. But also to be fair, your, your game isn't, it's like uh there's a book, uh, I used to be a writer, there's a book called uh, Writing Down the Bones, and one of the lessons in one of the chapters is the idea that if, if you're a creative type person of any sorts, you should be able to take all your work and just throw it out. Well, Because if you're in love with one of your creations, it gets in the way of you continuing to create. Well, and then I, I create it for, not just for me, but for everybody. Right. So I yeah. want to get it out there, even in small amounts, the sooner I get it out there, the sooner it grows and the sooner it spreads and shares. And yeah. and the more people are growing it, the more it gets posted, the more people see it, the more people want it, and then they have it, and then it, it's everywhere. Except it's like it's Michael, pay it forward. 
Yeah. 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 You just yeah. like I just I, I want everybody to enjoy it as much as I do. Really, that's what it's yeah. about. Like I when I go in my closet and I, I open up a tub and I see something weird and unique, like look at the caps on these things. Look yeah, how smooth exactly. they are. They're like they're like they're like porcelain. They're featureless. No, not a single bump. Like one of those, you know, those little specks that you get, like the Amanitas, like the little yeah, veil no, remnants. No, no, no. Nothing. These are baby smooth. How weird is that? Like little details. Like just look everything. Yeah. Like these are neat. They're neat. They're plus they're like they're PE dongs. Like they're like they're just straight dicks. Like they're they're solid. They're they're hard. dongy. They're dongish. They're, they're dong. not, if if you want a lot of spores, they're dong not ask. Not yes. if you're if you want lots and lots of spores, don't get them. But if you want more mushroom than spore, this is a good one. Yeah. The ratio of mushroom <laughs> to spore is very high. <laughs> I like that. That <laughs> is a ratio I do yeah. not. That's the opposite of my old my old Cambodians that I had Ooh, back in the there day. There we go. Anybody I swear to God, yeah. I had Maybe these Cambodian mushrooms out. that made more spore than there was mushroom. Like I don't know how the volume of spores came out of these things. Like would black a tub like it was yeah. like forest fire. Yeah. Tiniest little mushroom, whole tub black. Like yeah. why? I don't know. I mean, that's like some of the medicinals, right? Uh, shiitake drops a lot of spores. Holy Christ, yeah. does uh, reishi just drops. You're like, I I think it dropped more spores than its physical presence. Chestnuts. Chestnuts drop uh, some spores, You haven't, you haven't grown chestnuts too. yet. Your whole, your whole shit looks rusted. Yeah. All right, I had to backtrack because when I hit Jack Frost, Nikki got a little excited. So here we go. We're going back. I think okay. he stays excited. This is <laughs> he has enthusiasm. It is a rare quality, and but no, real enthusiasm see, is awesome. We keep showing off all these strains and being yeah. like, "Hey, they're amazing strains, but they're crazy hard to grow." This this is the strain for anybody that's. Yeah. This has always been my tried and true. If I'm ever like looking for oh, yeah. scrub fillers, yeah. it's Jack Frost. Well, and that's, just that's, a stunning. It's a stunning mushroom. The look, I mean, the look is one thing, but I mean, it's just, it really is just, it was a perfect meshing of things. Like it was this, first off, it was the first cross that I did with the double swab method. So that was like the very first one, like before I was, I was cross streaking on plates and taking from the juncture or, right. or, you know, just doing all kinds of different things to try and get like these matings to happen. And Jack Frost was the first one where I just took one swab, swiped both fruits with it and stuck it in the middle of a plate. And it, yeah. it grew one phenotype from the start. And it was the Jack Frost Fino. The gills turned blue and it got its name because it looked so frosty. It was so, meant to be. But it really has like just like it's got like the blue came from the ape. The the ape that it had that it came from had very blue gills. And and it's just it's like it's just it's perfect. It grows really well. It's got it's got the tat performance with the ape strength. It doesn't have full ape strength, mind you. It's it's a little it's a little faster than ape, but it's a lot more cooperative. Like it's have you ever seen like a really good ape canopy? I mean, not, not often. Really. <laughs> there, there are some, but they're they're not like your traditional spore works. Like not ape, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. like there's like ape semi reverts and ape yep. offshoots. That, and, you know, open gill apes almost yeah. is what I consider. Them. Or open. some of the new, some of the new apes like two twenty one, and you know, mm -hmm. some of these well, like right. It's more Melmac shaped though. Yeah, it's, it's not, way, it, yeah, it doesn't it's not look apey. Ape yeah, those are still. They got, up, it's got to be. It, it had to have at some. To some degree, some amount of re reverting has to have been occurring there. Well, and, and it's just evolution, you know, and it's just, yeah. it's, it's hard. Like, I, I, the ape that I created the Jack Frost with, I lost it, and I've been trying to get it going from Spore, and I haven't gotten it for, like, the last two years. I've been fighting with this thing. It's growing a bunch of different weird stuff, but it's not ape. And I, I, I'm still trying. I've got a few swabs left, but I'm, <laughs> I, it's, it's stubborn. It, it grew really neat fruits, but it never grew well. It yeah. would give, grow, you know, like a handful of really cool fruits, but it never colonized the whole surface. It never did a canopy. It, more unique in phenotype, but not performance. All right. So I got to pull this up. I'm not, I'm definitely not making fun of them, but this just, this serves as a reminder that there are, you know, people coming in and out of this community that, uh, that the community is so large. Sometimes people, stuff for me that's common knowledge isn't. Somebody actually said, oh, gosh, darn it. This is what happens to many comments. <laughs> Somebody said, wait, Dave made Jack Frost. Yeah, yep. he did. 
Yeah, that's one of your OGs. I mean, like that. Yeah. Like that's like I remember when Dave was very, very, very first coming out and stuff, and that was like over three years ago now that Jack Frost was made. I, I think I'm almost positive, right? I'm not good with dates. It, it was over three years ago. I just looked. I posted an El Chaco post in the Shroomery on Facebook uh, in 2020, and you made El Chaco like a ways and it's funny that you're talking about those audacious spots i re- i have a culture of those too i remember that was one of your that was one of the first that's, like that's my, an old one too yeah i was super into those squats i was super super into anything squat so remember that guy you were growing with uh or or in collabing with uh cole graham he had yeah. a mad pekka squat as well and i have that as well too because anything squat back then i was like oh those are the gems yeah. those are the the cool ones <laughs> yeah the, the actually the acrs that was supposed to be his his uh Colombian rust sport ISO is supposed to be a, a long legged ISO. It's supposed to just be a really yep. long stem. Yeah. I remember when he was working with those red sports. I remember that. He was he was a cool guy. He just kind of fell off a while ago. I yeah, I don't know what him. happened to him. Yeah, I, every once in a while I talk to him. I think he's just out of the out of the scene. All right, let's keep going here. All Ooh. right. Last okay, but so, not least. Yep, and, and, and now this is what? this is another one of those Pandora's box mushrooms i love these this is, so much this is so so huatla huatla mexico a little region in mexico this is the cubes from there but it's like a really unstable line of them uh this is this is the one that my maria sabina iso came from uh yoshi's maria sabina flowers iso came from that as well uh when I when, when when i sent this to yoshi and he grew it I, I was talking to him about it later and he was like wait they're pigmented and I'm like, yeah, well, yours aren't, but they're supposed to Clearly be. Clearly, yours aren't. They're just, yeah. You never know what they're going to do. They're really wild. Like, oh, so, so, so this is a typical. The the pictures here are all from the same tub, but this is a typical mixed tub. There's like, there's like little flaps of enigma type stuff. There's albinos. There's little silver capped ones. Uh, but even the golden cap fruits aren't normal. I mean, if you look at those caps, oh, they're no. very yeah. on the edges. Like they've yeah, got a big normal dome in the center. <laughs> very light spore drop. Um, and and this is a. It's just a. You, I mean, how can you not like a surprise? Like when you open your tub, or a bunch of surprises. You could have a bunch of surprises. I have gotten a couple of grows of them where it was like mostly just one type, but when I did, it was all one weird type, like all albinos. You have to so say that it, 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 stays like, it stays weird. It yeah, stays I mean, weird. It stays weird. It could the weirdness tub, might vary, but yeah, like it, it can weird. give you a tub of just enigma type brains too, with no fruits. Like it's just you from spore. Like you just yeah. don't know what it's gonna do. And so and I want to hear you say this one. Is it what? What the fuck? What the what? fuck? <laughs> what is what it? The fuck? Say it again. What the fuck? What? What oh the yeah, fuck? it's one of those where you don't have to overdo it, do you? It's literally what I said when I opened yeah. the first tub. What the it. fuck? <laughs> I mean, that was the first thing out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorites too. Uh, this is a good one. What the fuck? But yeah, so like, so if you if you're looking for something that's super stable and going to grow all the same mushroom, this isn't it. Like. Uh, uh, or it might be, but I can't promise, like, or what that <laughs> will look like. But it is fun, so it's it's a good it's a good one for like the, the genetic explorer types. Like, if you really want to like find something unique, this is a great start. All oh. right, we did it, top ten. And 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 yeah. while we're on this one, let me just mm-hmm. say, I I just I just grew the second tub or a second generation of a cross of this and chocolate gumby. Oh, and. Boy. It's uh, it's good. I can't even put my it's good. around that. So so it's doing it's doing the HTF kind of thing where it's got some little Enigma parts and stuff, but the Enigma parts have caps like the chocolate gumby does, but they're light colored. Oh. And so like I'm waiting for the I've picked a big a big leucistic fruit with a heart shaped cap, and I've swabbed that and cloned it, and I'm gonna see if that repeats. But uh, but I'm, I'm waiting on these these lumpy brain things with caps to develop now and see what happens with those. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for that one. But this is an example of me crossing weird shit with other weird shit to get weirder shit. Like, so we're, we're pushing the envelope. Weird uh, plus weird hopefully equals weirder. And you have a couple of photos too, don't you, Dave? I've got I've got a whole pile of photos, but you can't look at me while you're looking at them because i got to swap my screen out. But uh, we can still talk while I've got them on the screen. I'm just kind of kind of scroll through. We can talk about whatever else. But uh, uh, what, I, what I'm going to put on the screen here is I've got a slideshow of just pretty much everything that I've sent to Nikki in the last couple weeks. 
that I've been sending him just like package after package after package as I'm like, as I'm getting things sorted and labeled and bundled up for him. So uh, it's Perfect. just going to be a bunch of pictures. Some of them we've already looked at, but there's going to be more pictures of, of different ones and, uh, and, and stuff. And, and I might interrupt and, and we can talk about things if something interesting comes up. But uh, let me see. Do it. Pull it up. up. How I can do this. And while you're doing that, I'll pull up uh, I'll pull up some of your other packs here. Dave's faves, you get uh, you get all ten, all ten that we just talked about. Yeah, those are yeah. That's the that's the combo for it for sure. And I think we have it up there for for twelve bucks a swab set if you buy all ten, which that's is great. a stilio. And then oh, if yeah. you just want to hit top five, you can do top five. Yeah, that's a. That is a pretty good combo. Yeah, that's a good combo right there. Again, again, like arguably, you could ask me for my top five tomorrow, and I might come up with a couple of different ones. But El Choco and Chocolate Crinkle are definitely going to be on there, regardless. And Chocolate Gumby, it, it's it has to be there just because it's so unique, but it's new, so it's like it's kind of fighting for a spot too. But it's fresh in my mind. So Somebody's I'm, putting well, him on the website. I didn't even realize. Like I, I've always read when Dave will send me the written PDF of what what I have available to buy. I've always read like Monster TAT, but it wasn't until he sent me the pictures and I uploaded it today that I was like, oh, I've been sleeping on that because it looks fantastic. And then along with the others, like I, that's the thing is is I think we put up between fifty and sixty variants of Dave's in the last like four or five days. And I haven't even had a chance to actually sit down and look at the photos from all of them. But they're all up on the site now. Uh, but just going through and scrolling the other day and trying to prioritize what I wanted on the first page of the site, I was just blown away at how some of these were. Silver Surfer was another one that I, I personally thought was like one of the most beautiful that I'd seen in, in forever. And I remember that release a while ago or not release, but like, like he said, he doesn't release them anymore. He just, it's, it's kind a of and I do you don't like grab it right then, you might never get it again. Uh, up, like somebody will grow it out and it'll end up on somebody's menu. <laughs> they look amazing, though. I swear, the Silver Surfer is slept on. El Chaco was slept on for a long time. El Chaco, for I feel like two years, I mean, just wasn't even talked about or mentioned at all. And and that and AMVP, to me, were always like some of the, the El Chaco, AMVP, Jack Frost, um, uh, Wombat TAT. Those were all things that grew really, really well for me always. I never had any issues with uh, with with not getting the weight or nothing I wanted, and those were all like some that you they've been out for you know they've been being worked for three three plus years. Right. Well, and that's what happened with the monster tat is that it it, it is the original wombat tat, but it's just what I did to it over the years, picking the thickest fruit and the lumpiest, <laughs> bumpiest stem, and eventually it just kind of moved it up like Frankenstein. You did all the right things to it. <laughs> So I've got my I've got my slideshow up on my screen, but I'm not seeing it on your screen. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, oh, so you have to go to present. I did that. Oh, you, so you did the present uh, mm -hmm. share screen. Yep. It says I'm sharing it, but I still don't see it on your screen. Hmm. I'm doing it. Hmm. I also don't see it. I'm assuming you don't see it either, Michael Geek. Here, you have spoken up right now. No, I would have gone. Yeah, exactly. No, That's yeah, that, yeah. So nobody seen it. Yet. And and we would have had someone commenting by now saying we see it. If oh if yeah, yeah seen nobody see. They it. would have let us. Nobody know. Don't it. worry. Okay. Nobody well, we have that established it. now that nobody is seeing it. Yes. So. Well, we're getting this figured out. Uh, somebody just messaged me and said, "I can't figure it out. There's over 300 people watching live right now, and only 120 people have smashed the like button. Why is that?" <laughs> I can't figure it out. I, can't believe I don't know if you guys know the subscriber thing doesn't fucking matter anymore. If you guys want to get this podcast out to more people, like it. Smash the like button. Yeah. You gotta really smash it too. You gotta like with so the spirit we'll, of we'll, smashing. We'll, we're figuring this out too. Uh, what's the best way for me to do this? Do I should I just tell people right now to comment one through ten? Oh, I, I, I think I got it. Already? Huh? Hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Never mind. Bam. There we go. Sorry, what is the best way to do what, Nikki? So if I want to give away that, that swab set from that world record fruit. Uh, yeah, Jason, so, okay, let's, you want to do it? Yeah, let's just do it right now. Let's just okay. do it. Okay, so guys, be, before we get into this, 
Let me just pull it back off for a second. Okay. So right now, everybody, the 302 people who are watching live and have the ability to comment uh, in the live feed, the first person, Nikki is going to think of a number right now. I thought of it. Between, <laughs> it's simple, guys, 1 and 10. Yep. The first person that gets first it person. in that feed, we've already had two guesses. All right, guys, there's only so many numbers left. Where are you at? Let's get it. I can't see them, so you just have to tell me when. Oh, oh okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I can't see you, the numbers. You can't see it. Okay. No, I've never been able to figure out where the comments are. Okay, oh, all right. right. So you guys oh, can oh, oh. Okay. We can stop now. Why don't you just announce? Numbers. I can see the numbers now, but I'm not even kidding. Some... Oh, there we go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have to figure out who the first person to do it was. Who got it? Nobody first... else got you got to scroll up and start from the top. Damn, people are quick about that. I, shit, okay. <laughs> Donnie Juan, 88. Nope, not 1 through 10, my friend, but I appreciate it. Someone already got it right now for sure. So the number is 7, but no one else gets, obviously. Okay, here, I'll, I'll scroll back. The yeah, first 7, that. Jedi. Jedi? Well, are you sure? Jedi. Let's be sure. Yep. Yeah, I'm going back. Yep, the first number was 2. And then and I don't know. I don't have to YouTube or anything. So you, I'll just get all of your info. Just give it to Michael Geeky if that's cool. And so I Jedi, it. just figure out a way of DMing me. I have a couple Perfect. ways of doing it. Yep. And I and appreciate we'll... you, Michael Geeky, for going ahead and yeah. taking that 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 burden on and receiving the message. Yeah. Uh, of course. So so let's just be clear. Jedi just <laughs> won a swab set of the world record. Yeah albino mystery fruit and that's really not even me uh that's that spore dropper on instagram he went ahead and said hey nick that's give awesome. one of these away so that's don't even give me all the credit there all and i Jedi, did was throw up with some plates for it <laughs> don't don't forget who made that happen for you brother so when you start growing monsters left and right because i have not broken into the the 1200 club nor the thousand club no, nor the I'm 800 not, I'm club. Not a nerd. i, I yeah, think that, that thing was the what well, that thing was over uh, over 120 grams dry. Now, was that in um, that was in a 20 quart? No, no, no. That those were in a, a 64 quart. That he oh, it was in. okay. It was a yeah, lot. It just looked like a 20 quart with those mushrooms. Yeah, exactly. It's That's hard. hilarious. Yeah, it's that it looked like a 20 quart. To me. Yeah. <laughs> now, I even have. If anyone's interested, really quick, I have the exact ratio he did on that tub. If anyone's curious. Yeah, sure. Um, I had him go never to be and, duplicated, but let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. So he did a, a one to two ratio. Obviously, uh, one being uh, the grain, two being spawn. the square. It was a sixty-four quart tub. So, yeah, so five quarts of spawn, ten quarts of sub. He uses LED lights above it um, for twelve on, twelve off. And the room, he, he's he's neurotic. It's seventy-two to seventy-four degrees. Uh, Damien Bucket Tech, um, mm -hmm. and and the, yeah, Spitball Monotech. Uh, and his oats and or his his grain is always an oat millet combo, which I also am in love with that. And do that same thing. So yeah, I, I wanted I, to I go like, ahead. And give I that like oats and millet. <laughs> nice. Now, next question: um, Humidity. Does he control humidity? So humidity is basically controlled by the whole tub design. The humidity outside of the tub, while it matters so, in the sense so, that like. No, yeah, but no, what, what's the what's the ambient room relative humidity? And then more importantly, way. Nikki, what I really want to know is, does he love them? Does he, he loves he loves them. He loves them very very the much. Secret. Honestly, he sits in there and he's a, he's a DJ and he sits there. He plays his music for his mushrooms. That's awesome. You know, he's one of those music DJ lovers. Yeah. <laughs> now was that that was first flush or was that a later flush? That was the first flush. That was first. Okay. Was first flush. And both mushrooms that came off of that tub, uh, one was nine hundred and eighty eight, one was twelve hundred and nineteen, and both of those had hit the previous beaten the previous record, which yeah. I think we reported at like nine hundred and something grams, nine hundred and sixteen yeah. or something like that. So we beat the record two times, almost two times, or not almost. But now you harvested them, right? Uh, no, they were harvested when I got there. All, oh, okay. I did was, all I did was clone them. And then I was telling him, I was said, dude, this is really freaking cool. You should be recording a video or yeah. like we should be, we should record. We have a video of us cutting open. If you go on his Instagram, he's got the videos of us cloning it. We're goofing around and it's crazy because it's so thick um, near the stem. You just see him. He just 
cracks a piece off like it's a carrot and that's all he has to do to, to get into some tissue that's not been exposed by air and uh yeah he, he made he made a bunch of clones off of it i know he's making lcs out of it i know that uh people have been hitting him up like him for crazy and he loves that <laughs> yeah um and and I i'll know be that, curious how the the cloned culture yeah. grows yeah. well in my in my understanding i'm super excited to talk with ed about this kind of stuff later but what my understanding is is that he's already growing a clone culture. He's that that mm -hmm. culture that he has was cloned from a massive fruit he had grown before. And so my understanding is is cloning it further would be the same as just taking another transfer. It's already right. one dicaryotic colony. Yeah. And so and I'm excited to talk to Ed about this because my understanding has always been once you have a single dicaryotic colony, once it's not actually MS anymore or multi-spore, you could take another transfer off of a plate. You could take a clone off of any fruit, or you could actually clone the substrate from that tub, and all of those things would be the exact same. And, and the way I was given that example once was basically with uh, with the tampenses I grow, uh, was that you could go ahead and you could clone a fruit if, as long as you've isolated it down past past multispore, as long as you've transferred it away to a point where it's one single dicaryotic colony, you could go ahead and you could clone a fruit, or you could take a, a clone from a truffle or you could take a transfer from a plate and those all would essentially be the same culture and they would perform the same. In theory, I think that's absolutely true. Well, well I'm super excited. We'll pull, to we'll pull Ed to, to talk on that a little bit more. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, was... I know in the wild, when, when so imagine all the spores drop everywhere and, and they're originally haploid and they eventually dicaryotize and all that. You might have different regions of different things, but... And, and again, Ed will talk about all this, but my understanding is the fruit itself, the basidiocarp, is a distinct genetic. Yeah. So anything you take off that is, right. and then you clone that, then now anything you grow from that point on should be that specific dicaryon. Once you make that first clone transfer, yes, that, that would be true. So for you, if you've been doing transfers multiple times, multiple you know, people that do a lot of LC and stuff like that, it's pretty safe to say that is an, an, a single dicaryon existence. Yeah, and that's, and that's where stabilization yeah. comes in when it comes to yeah. spores because it's easy to repeat something from a clone because it, it really is just the right. same thing over and over again. Correct. But with spores, you're introducing that, yep. that random reset. And so you want to have, you want to have the deck, the deck stacked basically so that your odds of getting the same traits right. are, are higher from the spore combinations as well. And and you can have a clone culture that, that grows consistently over and over again, but if you haven't stabilized it through spores, then taking swabs from it and giving it to people isn't necessarily gonna give them the same results. So even right. with those giants, we don't know what the, what the swabs from those- No, absolutely. Is. That's a crap. Yeah. We know they're gonna have some potential. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely gonna have some potential. And then, and then in my case, like if I was to put like, if I was to take that clone culture from the, from the 1200 gram fruit and grow it in my little six quart tub with one quart of grain, I don't have enough grain to make a 1200 gram fruit. No, exactly. So I'm not going to get that, you know? No, and one of the, one of the best things, I think one of the things that people are most interested in with uh, Jason or Spore Dropper is he's actually got the LC that was used to produce that fruit as well. Right. And so That'd that, probably be what I would be most interested exactly. in. And that's what most people have been interested in. He actually had a lot of people initially ask him, hey, are you going to clone that? Are you going to sell it? And he kind of said, I won't really clone this and sell it unless someone nags and begs for it until I've fruited it. Because he has no idea what, exactly. first, you know what I mean? There's so many different different things that could come into play there between mutation, contamination, or or environmental. And so, the, the but the LC that created that mushroom that guaranteed for sure for sure has at least the potential to recreate that and yes. i think there's a good chance that that tub was environmental i think that like we've talked about in the past a lot of times you'll get massive mushrooms from mushrooms that have one to two mushrooms in the tub and dave was saying earlier he's gone ahead and he said all right well i'll run that theory and he's picked all the mushrooms but one and he said that he, that, that did not uh, yeah. It did not divert energy. They, they, it's like their their future potential was planned at birth. Yeah, like I they think knew right they were going to get. I think that sometimes right at pin set, it's decided how much energy it's going to go ahead and divide evenly throughout. And sometimes I'll see that with the, like a culture that I get the biggest mushrooms ever from. I'll get a really heavy pin set. It'll be across the whole tub, and they'll be way way smaller. And I'll be very disappointed. I'll go, geez, 
normally this culture produces some big girthy fruits right. but i think it just you know was a little more evenly spread right than that specific culture even wants all right so i i gotta pull this up uh mycology simplified thank you very much for the for the support brother um he well, said appreciate sweet. you guys let's get to the freaking chicken oh my god uh we this will. Don't you worry. Do this. That's the cliffhanger. That's the cliffhanger, buddy. We're we're getting there. Um, <laughs> we we will do it. Now I I will, I'll tell a little story. Uh, my buddy uh, Stun in Twenty One, he produced uh, what I think is still the world record ape, and it was at uh, oh my oh god, my why god. am I drawing a blank on this? Four hundred twenty one grams. And uh, so, you know, he sent me, he sent DC Mac, uh, sent a few guys from the Discord, um, clone culture of it, right? And we proceeded to grow absolutely nothing at all like th those monster fruits. No yeah. one ever did. And, and even, even Stunnin never did again, to, to my knowledge. I could be wrong. I think maybe right afterwards he had a couple other tubs that had That's some so big insane. fruits, but they were not 400 grams. So, so chasing that going to play there with with getting something yeah. to recreate, you know, you can never go ahead and pass Coltron and guarantee it's going to do anything. All you can do uh, is never. You know, give someone yeah. the biggest probability. Yeah. yeah. But now I will say some of the DC Mac line, some of the stuff from like the DC Mac OG that which was just the ISO from, you know, a Homestead PE. Yep. That stuff is pretty consistently big. Yeah, um, I have seen. I've that, seen a lot of. I think one of the things that was with the DC Mac is I think a, in the very beginning a lot of culture got out, and I think a lot, a lot of culture got out of like two to four of his original DC isolations. Yeah. And I think that that he got them all out clean right away, and and in the very beginning it diluted, not diluted, but it just flooded the market because DC Mac. I remember not hearing about him at all. I remember when he was just a score man, not hearing about him at all, and then. Boom. Every yeah. single tub I see was DC. You know what I mean? And then I know I know people have to be a little bit careful right now because I actually just had a buddy uh, uh, in the UK. He got scammed uh, by a DC Mac profile. And it definitely was not DC Mac because I don't think DC Mac even has a profile. Michael Geeky, am I correct? He does not have a Facebook profile right to now. To my knowledge right now, no. I think yeah. Chris Black, you know, of Black Science yep. is, is still um, in the game, but yeah. But that to name my is so well known DC now, and people not. see that DC next to full flushes so often, it makes a lot of people right. feel safe. So just, oh, everybody always be careful. You know what I mean? There's no reason to ever, you know, go ahead and take any risk. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right, and an internet purchase isn't worth it. Yeah. So, yeah, but anybody that uh, is being told, oh, yeah, I'm DC Mac, um, I'm pretty sure they're not. Yeah, I'd be um, skeptical. I, I would be skeptical. I, His me and uniform. numerous guys on my Discord, uh, we were pretty pretty tight with him, and I, I think we'll know if he's yep. back in business here. Um, but I'm trying to find this uh, message. His genetics aren't impossible to come by by any means. A lot of people uh, no. I don't. I don't have a ton of them, but a lot of people carry – his original culture is still and yeah and yeah he did a good job of getting those everywhere oh god yeah yeah he said here um it's originally it right what's that he's doing it what's yeah. happening oh what 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 okay we're gonna go full screen here what I'm, hold what on I'm trying to, what i'm trying to yeah. think of is uh, i'm trying i'm to gonna pull both about. nikki and you're my not, camera you off because i don't want to shy your sauce or anything like you're not even it's raw, bro. It's got to be nothing else. But, but no Worcestershire. It's like sashimi. It's chicken. Yeah. Okay. So 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 what I want to do though is I want to. Okay. Try I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk. I'm pulling us off. I don't want yeah. people to watch me go like oh yeah, or no, anything we're... like that. Okay. Hold on. Let me get me off. All what right. I'm the to do floor. Is I'm to, a way to, uh, to tie this in with with mushrooms somehow. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, this is chicken. Uh, this is raw chicken. It's uncooked. Let me see if I can get it closer to the camera here. You can see that. That is raw, uncooked chicken. Uh, so people are scared of chicken. Uh, and, and a lot of it is just, uh, it's, it's people make generalizations. It's easy to make a broad sweeping statement. Uh, you could say all raw chicken is, uh, is deadly. It'll kill you, but it's not true. Um, just like you could say, uh, if your spores fall out of your mushroom caps, your whole tub's ruined and it's never going to grow again. It's also not true. Uh, but people just, you know, say things and, and believe them. Uh, so let's talk about salmonella for a second, because that's what that's what chicken is. We, we worry about salmonella. 
Uh, salmonella is a normal bacteria for, for chickens to have. It's a, it, it thrives at their body temperature. It lives in their gut bacteria, just like we have E. coli in our guts. Uh, so salmonella is part of a chicken's daily life. Not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's only bad when it gets into other parts of their body like the meat, uh, which it normally wouldn't be in unless there's some kind of cross-contamination that happens. And, uh, and then uh, add to that, uh, the bacteria has to proliferate at an, at an unsafe temperature. Like say you have meat left out at room temperature that's touched a chicken's butthole or a, or a freshly laid egg or rodent feces. Uh, so you rub rodent feces on your chicken and then let it sit at room temperature for four or five hours. Uh, now it's probably toxic, uh, probably not a good thing to eat. But fresh chicken, like fresh, clean, uncooked chicken is not any more dangerous than if you took a bite out of a live chicken running around. It's got its own immune system working still. Uh, it hasn't sat out and, and festered and rotten. This is fresh. It, is, it doesn't smell bad. If you touch it, it's it's a little bit slimy, but it's not what you're looking for is like, you don't want it to be sticky or, or, or really, really, you, you, you know, when it's weird, if you, if you have rotten meat, it's disgusting. It smells, it feels gross. You wouldn't eat it. Like this is fresh. It's just like sashimi, like a piece of sushi, like raw fish on a sushi tuna, something like that. The texture is a little funny, kind of like raw fish. Uh, the flavor is, is chicken. It tastes like chicken. Now I don't eat raw chicken as like a regular part of my diet but I'm not afraid of it. And if I'm making chicken, I like, I like to cook chicken. It's, it's better cooked. You can season it. You can make it in recipes, but I'm not afraid to snack on it while I'm cooking. Uh, just because I, I know it's been handled well. And now there's a little bit of trust there. I'll, I'll admit like you have to trust your butcher or wherever you're getting your chicken from. Do you buy sketchy food? You probably shouldn't eat sketchy food. Uh, but, but you have to have some kind of faith. Also, Salmonella itself isn't necessarily dangerous. It can be, but there's over 2,500 different varieties of salmonella, and some of them won't make you sick at all. And even the ones that do make you sick have to be populated to a certain level before they'll get to the point where they can affect you in that way. And then when they do affect you, it basically just gives you diarrhea. So you're not going to die from it unless you're like 100 years old and you'd die from anything else anyway. So, so back to the whole, yeah, I eat it cold. Looking at the looking at the uh, the the comments there, uh, if you warm it up, it's gonna be weird. Like you you, you got to if it's cold, it's got to be cold. If it's hot, it's got to be hot. Like you got to cook it all the way to 165 degrees to make it food safe, and then you got to keep it at a at a high temperature and not let it sit and fester. And I mean, I used to manage restaurants. You know, I know how to serve food to people. It's not gonna kill them, and and I know how to serve food to myself to not kill myself. So so there you go. It's it's chicken. It's good for you. And I'm probably not going to die, at least not today. I'm not going to bite the head off a live chicken. I like animals. I'm if if it's if it's alive, it would be my friend. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't eat it. I have a lot of pets. But if somebody else kills it, I'll eat it. It's like fish. Like if you ever have a, a sashimi, like like sushi, like a like a, a rice roll with a slab of raw tuna on it. It's about the same as that. All right, Dave, there's your tie-in. It's just chicken of the woods. Well, well there you go. There you it's go. It's just no, but, chicken of the woods. But, 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 but people... I just got diarrhea watching you do that, so I'm just, I'm, I'm being honest. That is a bold move. Um, but I agree with you. Yeah. Have you ever tried raw hamburger? Like truly just fresh from like, the plastic. I've got some hamburger and no. I'm going to make some hamburger patties. No. And I'm just going to have a little bit. It's good. It's good. No, it's kind of salty. Not done that either. Uh, you just got to try stuff. Okay. I love sushi. Sashimi, I, sushi, I, all that good stuff. Uh, but just this, I think it's got to be from the ocean for me. I don't know why. When I, when I was in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, I've had pate. Was, yeah. When I, was, when I was stationed in the army out in Hawaii, I, I would go to the grocery store and get just slabs of fish from the, from the meat market and eat them right out of the package. Like, it's so fresh. It's just so, oh, that's good stuff. I think if I, like, when I was young, we had a neighbor that would every year, you know, get a couple hundred chickens. And the slaughter day, we'd go help them, you know, 
pluck feathers or skin them or chop their heads off or whatever. I think I would do it on that day. I you can't get much fresher than that. I think I would do, I would need it to be still maybe a little warm. And so yeah, so there is, there is some, it. there is some, there is some, there is some leap of faith, faith there, I guess. Yes. You know, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that the meat was handled safely before yeah. it got to me. But yeah. I'm also, I have my own senses to, to yeah. tell if it true. smells. That's absolutely true. Okay, I, I managed, I managed for KFC for a while and okay. I have encountered bad chickens and there is no mistaking the smell right. of a bad I chicken. Agree. Like it's truly foul. No pun intended. Nope. It or, is. Or, or intended. Absolutely horrible. Yes. Um, Forever Gaming said, did Nikki go and puke? I don't know. Let's find <laughs> out. Let's see how he's doing. Uh, okay. No, okay. Right. It's a good thing my therapy session's tomorrow, guys. No, yeah, that was not. pretty crazy. That was a little intense. So. I, I don't see how it's so frightening. It's just a piece of food. Like you would take I, a bite just, out of an, you would take a life. bite out of an apple or uh, another person. My whole life, I've been told that raw chicken, you know, will. will but that's what they tell yeah, you. But but yeah. look, here's here's a tie-in with mushrooms because mothers tell little kids, don't touch that mushroom in the yard. Well, it's true, poisonous. Right. It'll kill you. And you can touch the most poisonous yep. mushroom you want. You can yep. even take a bite out of it and exactly. taste it. Exactly. Yep. you. We've been convinced. I know. We I watch Alan Rockefeller do it every other week. Yep. We've convinced my kid's teacher now, which is, we're not just convinced, we've ex we've educated her to a point where my kid will come home. And the other day she came home with a bag of gallerina. And, and she just, you know, she gets home and she goes, Dad, Dad, Dad. Th my teacher went ahead and she said that I could, I could take these and I could give them to her and that she would put them in my backpack right before I left and got on the bus so I could bring them home to show you. And I'm like, you know, fantastic. And it's to the point where I've explained, like, hey, you could go ahead and, and, and yeah, handle – or take a bite and spit out the most poisonous mushroom in North America and have have right. no consequence, essentially. I wouldn't yeah. go ahead and risk. I wouldn't. I'm, a lot of people go ahead and after doing that, and Alan doesn't. A lot of people do a rinse and spit just to yeah. be sure that they're not, you know, swallowing gill fragment. But Alan doesn't. <laughs> but Alan's also just part of beast. Core. He's a good spitter, I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're a good spitter, you don't need to rinse. He's it's all about how good is your spit. You would appreciate that, I think. Yeah. Well, maybe so you want to save it for a little while. Now here, um, so one of my buddies on uh, the Discord was telling me that in Japan they will eat raw chicken as well, but they'll take the fillet and they actually will cut all the sides off so that right what they're about to serve you was never the outside of that fillet well and that's just that's sense. just an extra layer of trying to make Caution. sure they're removing part that yeah, anybody yeah. touched like they're Anything just trying to like those remove any chance of contact when i asked when i was asking dave questions about this originally and i was saying dave like is this something you've done before because i had no context i saw you mention right. it like, the other day michael geeky and i had never seen dave's i haven't actually sat down and watched his old podcast so i didn't know that it was ever mentioned so i was like what are we talking about when i asked him i said is it something you've done before? Is it safe? Do you enjoy doing it? And his reply was, I, his reply to that was, I'm not eating them alive, Nikki. <laughs> and I was just blown away. I know you're not eating them alive, Dave. I, I still think that well, you know, they'll, they'll be like screaming and scratching at you. Like it's, yeah. it's dangerous. Yeah, no, that is, vicious. that is insane. But I, I'm, yeah, I'm blown away. And you don't ever... You don't ever sprinkle salt on it or nothing because I've eaten raw ground beef. My, my I, I won't eat, do this, but my family, I had I had my dad's side of the family. They used to go ahead and like leave out ground beef and just grab a tiny little piece of it here and there, and nibble it off the counter and stuff. The well, day. and that's that's the context is is usually when I am eating raw chicken, ground beef is not the same it. You do that with. It's when I'm making a meal and I'm cutting up chicken and I'm getting stuff ready to cut in the yeah. pot, and so it's not seasoned yet. You know, it'll I get eat, seasoned yeah. when I'm cooking it. I live on the coast and I eat raw tuna all the time. It's my favorite way to do it. Oh, if, I, yeah, if, I, if I get the yeah. chance to see it, even albacore, which is like people, you know, poor man tuna, but it, but still cut up and not shredded, just, you know, in fillets. Mistakes, I'll, yeah. I'll, I love that. Yeah, cut it up raw. And I'll tell you, like, I, I've learned my limit. And it's about two pounds of raw tuna. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's when I'm like, okay, this will have consequence the next day. Opposed to I can do I, or just searing it. Searing it, yeah. We're just talking about fish now, not mushrooms, yeah. though. Yeah, I actually like it, uh, albacore sushi, where they just barely sear the outside, that, and then they slice it up, 
They that's put good. a couple little whatevers they put on it. And the that's thing about favorite. it is you serve it cold. You sear it, and then you put it in the fridge, and then cut it, and you serve it cold like cold sushi. That's the way I like it the best. Yeah. I like to do it. I like to do it Hawaiian style. They they make a dish called poke, which is I a, love it's, poke. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you dice up the tuna, and you got like some some sweet onions and some other shit in there, and some soy sauce, and a little bit of lime juice, and and it's and maybe some peanuts. I mean, you just, you can throw a bunch of different shit in there. But if you go to Hawaii, that's like a that's like a, a treat that you'll have like as a as a bar snack instead of like oh, a, yeah. like instead of like peanuts on the bar, you'll have little bar little bowls that's of raw spam. fish. So oh man, it's good. Hawaii. I oh, love spam too. But they eat a lot. I was always surprised by that. Like everywhere I go, I'd be, you know, to like these really they nice like Hawaiian spam. restaurants and they're eating the, on the menus like a Spam burger. And I'm like, whoa, that's just so, <laughs> yeah, weird. Yeah, that's, um, you know, it's, it's an island in the middle of effing nowhere. So uh, no, I get it. canned so, meat, uh, it just keeps a little bit better. You, you see the shirt. I, I understand. Maybe a tanker, a tanker washed up on the beach one day full of spam cans, and yeah. they've just been snacking on it ever since. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I when I'm in that. Hawaii, I'll, I'll eat spam. I, however, am never, ever, ever. In the gas like station. Spam. In the gas stations. Like, you know how you have hot dogs in the gas station here? Uh, if you go to Hawaii, all the gas stations have what they call spam masubi. It's like a, it's like a oh, sushi yeah. rice roll, like a sticky yeah, rice yeah. roll. Like yeah, it's actually good. Like, like oh, like question. marinated like katsu katsu sauce fucking ham on top wrapped in a seaweed wrap and it's it's amazing. Spam I is delicious. Just sliced thin, fit thin, fried on each side, and put on like a sandwich with mayonnaise. And that is I I I, I love a spam sandwich. I'll I'll be honest, yeah. But spam is not like affordable meat anymore. Spam is like like three to five dollars a can now. So because the Hawaiians really, drove the price up with the demand, like it's God, God yeah. damn it. That's like those King's Hawaiian rolls. It's the same thing. But, but you know, yeah, once again, we're not talking about mushrooms at all. We're talking about canned meat again. It's what we do here. We, we go, go on tangents. We just, we get a little tangential. Okay. Well, those, and, you think we're on a tangent now? Wait till Ed gets here. It's going to be. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Here's the I challenge. Here's the challenge. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Okay. So we've got Uncle Ben's, right? We've got the Uncle Ben's bag for Cubensis. Okay. That's like the poor man's like ghetto tech, right? Yep, yep, yep. Anybody can grow mushrooms. Shout out to ninety second. It, it it might not it might not work for you, but if it does, it does. But it, it can work. Okay, so mm -hmm. I want to see somebody grow some cordyceps on a can of spam. Oh, cordyceps. William right. Padilla Brown, if you're out there, if anyone can do it, it's you, brother. And. Mm. I can't wait for that. Post. And we've got a carnivorous what mushroom. What I want to get into next. There's it's a carnivorous a mushroom. mushroom. <laughs> They're a cool yeah. one, and everybody, and everybody knows too. about them now. Ever since that, what was that show? I haven't watched it yet. Uh, uh, Last, Last of Us. Last of Us. Have you watched it, Dave? No, I don't no. watch TV. You watch the movie? No. So hey, I'm gonna pull this up. Um, ninety second. Speaking of uh, Uncle Ben's. Uh, just gave a shout out to one of my buddies, uh, Bonsai Fungi, um, who he does, uh, he's got an Instagram where he just grows cubes and, you know, various containers and it's oh, artistic yeah, yeah, yeah. and cool. I saw cool. the spam cans. I saw so the spam super cool cans. guy. He, yeah, he did. Actually I actually have the spam. magnet on my refrigerator. Sounds yeah. delicious. All right. Already those mushrooms sound. But they're not, but they're not grown on spam. Like they're not no, grown no, no, on no. spam. Yeah. That's they're, true. yeah. It's just, oh, well, so. grown on spam sounds delicious. Yeah. Well, everybody, just go to uh, go to the shroomery and just search uh, spam tech and let us spam know. Spam tech. Let us spam. Know it's going. The shroomery loves when people just come over there with spam. So we're gonna spam them now <laughs> <laughs> with spam. <laughs> yes. Okay, put my pictures back up now. Put my uh, pictures. Yeah. Back okay. Up. Okay. Okay. We're back. We're back at it. We're, we can we're still talk about other stuff, but oh, I forgot this was even a thing. Yeah. There we go. Just a reminder. Uh, wow. This is this is all the stuff that's going to be over on Nikki's site, or I mean, it's already up on Nikki's site. I think everything's it up there now. Susie, uh, a long time. So, a little shout out to Susie there because that was, yeah. She, we're not good at at like uh, the site stuff, at all. Not even the teeniest bit. Neither am I. You know what? I had a I had a website for like a day and a half. I and, saw, and it was a rip roaring success, and uh, and I retired. That was it. <laughs> yep, we were there. I got very excited and very oh, no. unexcited in almost the same breath. Everybody, everybody has an issue with them um, uh, in the beginning. I know Yoshi had the same issue. Yoshi had a lot of his payment platforms get shut down, and he yeah. he went ahead and 
took my advice and kind of ran things a little bit the same way I do uh, with accepting the cash app and the Venmo and the PayPal and the, yeah. the alternative payments for a minute. Credit cards are, are, are always a risk for everybody. Not they for everybody not purchasing. I don't mean to say it like that. I just mean they're a risk for your website all the time. Yeah. 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 The credit card companies just don't like it. They, they don't want liability no. of any kind. There are ones you can find that are high risk and they take really high percentages, eight to 12% usually, but it's, it's worth it. Honestly, I just, uh, things have always gone well. I don't think i I don't think we lose sales. I don't think people ever go on there and, and are not able to, because I think most people nowadays are able to use their debit card on PayPal or cash app or things like that. Anyway. I just do what I'm supposed to, alien, so I never have any problems, alien. but yeah, people get into, you know, somebody gets mad, man, I hear all the vendors I'm friends with tell me all the stories, like, oh my god, people, you know, they make an order, and then the next day, they're complaining they haven't gotten their order yet, it's like, physically, they couldn't, you couldn't even get your order yet, Why? Right? like, just No, I, I, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people go ahead, and they'll order something untracked, which means that there's nothing after we send you an order confirmation, there's nothing that we could ever even send out. And then, and then two days later, they'll say something like, uh, like, uh, or maybe three days later, they'll say something like, I haven't gotten anything yet. And, yeah. and I'll wonder myself, I, I'll say, we haven't actually shipped it yet. So <laughs> right. it, it's been, it's been, it's been one to four days. We, we get a lot of orders We're we're sometimes we're backed up. Sometimes it's a weekend. And if, if you're ordering on a Friday night, it's not every weekend that we take off, but especially now coming towards summer. We might not fulfill that till Monday or Tuesday just due to the fact that we also, you know, do things and have lives. While we're, we take on a lot of the vending responsibility here and we're, we're pumped to take on the overflux, we still, we're still going to do some stuff. We're still going to, you know, take our little times off. So it, it's, it's yeah. good for everyone to remember it. It's a one to four day business days is, is what we're guaranteed our shipping right now. Okay. This Stop for a second, because this one that's been on the screen. You gotta, you gotta stop it. I can't this stop is, it. No, you got. No, really oh, 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 maybe. Oh, uh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the screen, but I can't control the speed at which this. No, is I'm, I'm changing the screen. You stop the talking. This is, oh, okay. uh, this is one of the newer ones. <laughs> He's talking to me, bro. Okay. This is, <laughs> this is. Uh, I was just waiting yeah. for my chance to interrupt. This oh, is one of the newer ones. Uh, this is the alien egg noodles. Yeah, uh, I like the, this. Ooh. What happened was I had uh, Sporeworks PE. And uh, Sportworks PE was doing great things, and then it, uh, it 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 stopped doing great things and grew some reverts. And uh, the revert fruits, these aren't them. The revert fruits were like your typical cubes, like your basic, like standard cubensis, kind of good sized, but but basic golden caps, golden teacher looking cubes. Right. Uh, but they grew a couple of little skinny fruits that had kind of a little nipple in the cap, and clones from those produced this tub here, which is the alien egg noodles, is what I call them. They're really skinny. They're really hard, like like wooden, like stiff wooden things. And these also have like uh, that that translucent cap quality that I was talking about. Where uh, like this is kind of an earlier picture, but when they get older, uh, they start to uh, they start to get see through on top. So they look kind of like porcelain. And if you hold it up to the light, if you pick it and hold it up to the light, the gills light up like one of those light bright toys. Like the light just goes right through the caps. Uh, so, so the earlier, this is like one of the earlier generation picks here. Uh, the earlier generations were very skinny. They're ranging now where they're growing some skinny fruits and some thicker ones, but they've still got that, that fried egg looking cap and, uh, and the translucent quality there, but that is kind of a neat, uh, yeah, that's cool. I've seen some recently where the translucent segment will be a more a bluish color. Um, but this is the first one I've seen that's got the kind of a caramel color. Well, yeah, that's pigmented. It's a pigmented fruit. Like usually you're yeah, going to see cool. the, the translucency shows up more on the albinos. Yeah. But these are these are so colorless, like the whole outer rim of the cap is like pure white. So I'm, I'm excited. That, and, these, and these are still kind of relatively new, uh, but uh, but they are uh, they're different. They look like the gnats. I see a bunch of people commenting that, and I agree. They look like... Like almost, the color on it, it's it's yeah. a really intense color. Like it's, yeah. you, don't, you don't get that color too often. It's beautiful. Okay, you yeah. can talk. To we're just gonna go back to regular pictures yeah. now. <laughs> now we're just gazing at the pictures again. Um, by the way, uh, I got a couple uh, donations. Thanks, guys. I, I appreciate the support. Um, 
uh, and, and uh, multiple people have said, and, and I appreciate it, you guys have, have done better, um, but man, if you haven't uh, liked the, the the feed yet, just click that like, it's really appreciated. Or like 90 said, you can just touch the like. <laughs> you don't You don't have to hit it or smash it, you can just touch it. It can be, These are those, it can be uh, kinder. Those albino KSS. Yeah, this 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 oh, yeah. tub. These two fruits right here were like a pair of monsters. The rest of the fruits were kind of small, but these two kind of hulked up. I've gotten these, like I said. I wish I, I'm I'm always unprepared, and we we scrambled uh, this last time just because of the holiday, spring break, and the holiday. Everyone on vacation, so it was hard to get everything done. But I've got pictures of these. These are these guys get softball sized if you run them. I've there. gotten some. I've gotten some like yeah. up in like the low two hundreds. Yeah, these are wow. a fun one, and I just love that they're so thick. We That's what I like. Just it's just like a yeah. perfect little Zen fruit. You feel like you could knock someone out with one of these big ones, like when you're holding it in your hand. It feels like a softball. Is that the monster TAT? No, this is this is this is the albino Lang. Yeah, those are those are girthy. Those are girthy boys. They have been extra stout. What was the story with Lang? Because I, I, I had some of the early generations of that as well. Lang was Lang was one of the first uh, isolations I got from the original TAT uh, source genetics, and it was my my goal with that one was that originally I wanted to get a squad out of it, but I was I ended up being satisfied with it just being kind of thick at the bottom and and really dense. But it's just like a really thick, dense golden teacher, basically. Uh, well, until it turned albino, and then if you've seen uh, the there's the the last the uh, the Lang albino super squats. Those were uh, Seven Delgato's creation, but they're like full squat from the Leng line. He killed it on a bunch of stuff. That albino Riptide, I like from him. I think he did the uh, True Albino Burma, maybe. I haven't seen that one. True Albino Burma is amazing. I, I, we've got him up there. It was one of the times where we we ended up having two tubs of it, and I made posts for both tubs, but the first tub, we had a power outage. I don't know if you remember this, but we had, we Susie had gotten done, she had 500 sets drying, we had a power outage, the hood went off, uh, and I made a post about it basically saying like, hey, we're going to give away all these swab sets because wow. because the power had gone out, and uh, it was Keylor and somebody else had hopped on and said, hey, you know, realistically, you don't have to like give those away, they're probably still fine, but we didn't yeah, feel comfortable. Been. Yeah, we didn't feel comfortable with just selling them, so we, I think we marked them for like $2.50 each. There you go. Yeah, we said we were just going to do something cheap for it. And so we, we put them up there, but the, they were good. They were they were a fun one, the Trail Bino Burma. What are these right here, Dave? Yeah, I like these, man. What is this? Yeah. These are these are, these are are the uh, uh, the Amex Long. I like these a lot. Oh, okay. Those, yeah, those Mexican red spores gave you a lot, didn't they? they they're, they're so weird. Like, they just, they do, and they're so different, does so many different things. But these are, these are another, like, silver cap. Like, the caps start off, like, really silver when they're small. As they get big, they'll kind of whiten up in the middle as they spread out, but they'll keep, like, a hard silver edge around the rim. Nice. It's kind of a blurry picture, but you can see they're kind of long and crazy things. I like, I like, I like. Now, this is, this is also Amex. This is the Robusto. Oh. This is, like, a, it's, it's. It's less silver. It's more just white and a more of a straight up and down, thicker kind of wide capped fruit without all that squirreliness like the other ones do. Stuff like straight really up nice. and down. Wow. But again, it's another another fruit from the Mexican red spore that looks completely different. I like those a lot. Yeah, stuff like that's always fun for swabbing. Like this is this is the this is the albino Normac, and this is another one that does the translucent cap. These ones had very translucent caps earlier in their life, but they're they're kind of darkened up and blue now at this point. And the twisted stems. Nice. Ooh. This one is is this the I can't remember if this is the three the three thirty eight or the two twenty one, but it's one of it's one of the ape kings. Yeah, I like those. It's albino. Yeah, he had some he had some big, huge. I've seen some people grow in those from spore too, and I think I've seen people getting incredible results and a lot of varied results. And I think it's because that a lot of those cultures right there, like that ape king culture, I think it was never really sold as swab sets. I think it no. was always sold. No, sold yeah, right. yeah. All, all, those, all those guys are just their culture only. Yeah, they're exactly. 
So once you go and take that to the like to swab, you're you're dealing with first generations and the 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 variety of phenos you can get from it are you know it's up there. Yeah, these were really cool. And I saw I think a Sporgan just grew a tub of those that looked beautiful, and uh, it was straight from Spore. Okay, and this one this one's the three thirty eight right here. I think this one's the three thirty eight. I thought the other ones were too, but I didn't want to. Can't remember which one's anything, which. Although I guess I changed my mind. We got the asymmetric. <laughs> yeah, you said really, something. So the silver caps on these. Shout out to ninety. Thanks, ninety. Orange is the new orange. That's what they're saying now. Orange is the yeah. New this orange. is awesome, dude. I, I I never had the comments open before, so I didn't. I never saw how supportive everybody was the last uh, the last stuff till afterwards, but. Man. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Every yeah, once it's in a while, they go they go on a tangent, following. but yeah, it's it's fun. You've got a nice positive following going on. Oh my gosh! It's trying it's trying to spread the love, man. Yeah, and and Dave's just mowing down. That was good. On that chicken. Man, okay, so I, I would have full screened you there. We're up on we're up on a, a B squared now. This is my. Uh, it, it was. I first I had B plus B plus turned into El Chaco. Then El Chaco had a revert, a partial revert where it lost its chocolate color, but it still retained some of its density and thickness. And that became uh, my B squared isolation because it didn't turn back into the B plus that it used to be. So yeah, yeah those are really fixed types. I figured yeah, it's and, that's and kind really, of, I mean, yeah, I like that. any spore drop at all. Like it's like, it's about as close to a, a P E B plus as you can get. Oh, someone's got a question here that I actually am always wondering. Oh, yeah, where is it? What's up with uh, Dave? Are you still planning on running Clockwork Orange again? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah it's I'll coming. Pull it up. Yeah, that is one of my absolute favorites. I have that sticker in my lab, the the Beatles sticker, or I think I think it was the Beatles image you used for the their their. Uh, no, that's right, the, from the from yeah. the movie Clockwork Orange. It's the guys, the guys from the Clockwork Orange movie. Yeah, see, look how uneducated I am on movies. I always <laughs> Stanley Kubrick, movies. dude. Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, it's just you know I'm doing it's so many movie things. Like, I can't I can't possibly do everything at once. So things get like bumped out of rotation. What happens is like I love those. I might well. throw it back into rotation, and then if something goes wrong, like it contaminates, then yep. it takes it a long time to come back up again. Yep. So and that's what's up with the with the CWO. Is oh, I've, I've been, been there. Up it, keeping up with things has been impossible. In the very beginning, for the first year of sport vending, it was it was feasible to a point. But as soon as we decided we were going to try and grow things, it everybody's coming out with such amazing isolations and, and being able to keep up with growing them. Like it, it, it just becomes not feasible, which you is why we keep do. all of them going at once. You're yeah. Really why, and, and if we're going to outsource anything, it makes sense just to try our absolute best to outsource it to the creators. Yeah. We like the nutcracker from clay or, or like uh, Dave's isolations from Dave. We're always trying to just keep it, keep that money in the community. We've seen these pictures. I'm trying to get fast. I uh, get, they get. Oh, hey, that's. Awesome. I really like those though, especially those ones that look like they're snow capped. Oh, I'm getting to those. I, I wanted to stop at this one first, though, just because those are too cool, dude. The hairy ones are just like super this. rad. I like this. Yeah, what is this? Like they look powdered sugary to me. This is this is the same thing, but they grew like a fuzzy white cap of mycelium on the cap. And like so you could lick you can, this mushroom and it wouldn't be sexual at all. It would just it's, be it's white it fuzz on the chocolate cap, but you can see the brown through the white. And then it's got little tendrils of spore color coming up on top of that. So it like the whole thing just yeah. comes out looking like they're dusted with cocoa powder. Yeah, those are delicious. Oh, this is that uh, okay, crooked mystery. Crooked oh, mystery. So this is this is this is what crooked mystery looked like. Is uh not that one. But that that one, yeah. See, crooked mystery. It's it's crooked. It's uh, <laughs> it's crooked and mysterious, right? It's but crooked is, and slightly mysterious. This fat one here, though, this is the first one that started the lonely boy ISO. Wait till this one comes up. Shout out know. to that Z guy. So so this guy. So this this fat fruit, like it grew one that wasn't crooked, and I was like, holy crap! Crooked mystery grew a non crooked fruit. So I was excited. So I cloned it, and then and then this became the lonely boy ISO. Because the following tubs would just grow one big stupid fruit by itself, uh, and and it's kind of like you can see the sub doesn't even look like it's colonized. Like it's just like it's just like bam, here's one fruit. That's all you get. Uh, and I've gotten a couple from it. Sometimes it'll grow two, maybe three. 
Uh, this other picture, I think, was a, a three. This was a three tub of it, uh, kind of crammed into one corner of the tub. But uh, but still still a mystery. Just uh, but this is a this is a great one if you're trying and, to get. And now uh, though you are not pseudo casing those, so that they just no. truly don't ever break the surface. No right. You I mean I really I just yeah, I you usually can see those see grains right there. Right? No yeah. But that's a good one if you want to get into the if you want to get into the into the hundred club. Uh, Crooked Mystery is a really good one to go for it. Uh, where, where's where's my big squirrely tub? These, this yeah, the there was a customer tub. submission of that too recently, wasn't there? There a customer submission that was yeah out yeah there was like a six hundred and something gram uh, yeah that came up. Uh, I think that was a Reddit post that I saw that on yeah or yeah. I saw someone share it on. I wish I was more active on Reddit. I can't figure yeah. it out. Yeah, six hundred. It was like six hundred and fifty grams. Big stupid fruit. Damn. But it these ones good. here, uh, this is a this is a thirty two quart tub. Uh, these gigantic fruits, like we're all in like the one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty gram range. They remind me of like chains, like they you you'd yeah. use those stems as like the chain between your nunchucks or something. I don't know. They well, and so also, did you just did you just assume we all owned nunchucks? I mean, you you were like it's like the chain in between your nunchucks. Yeah, you guys don't own nunchucks. You know your nunchucks, the ones yeah, you keep under your bed next to your shoeboxes at Cubensis. Yeah. Oh no, no, not next to your bed. Next to your bed, next to your door. Yeah. So you're able to answer the door with your nunchucks side by side. You don't have a nunchuck shelf next to your door, a shelf specifically designed for your nunchucks. Dude, I have a hook. I have a nunchuck hook. Of course, he's like I'm. It's a classic. I don't habit. have high end nunchucks. I'm a very practical like, nunchucker. Yeah. yeah, we're very organized in my house. They go right next to my keys, right next to the door. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> this one right here. This is a, now to it's, scale. How large are these? I think I'm. Is it is I, it in your mini well, mono? So it looks like it's what three or four well, inches. These were actually these were actually a bad grow. These were uh these were a bad grow, and these are like maybe okay. three or four inches tall. They're not huge, mm -hmm. uh, but this is Doctor Strange, and it's another mystery genetic like Crooked Mystery, where it came from an unlabeled swab that I have no idea what it is, and it's grown weird and different every time. But the most recent grow grew these nice hairy cap fruits, and Ooh. this. This bag of fruits had the most incredible mushroom smell. Like, you know, they tell you, oh, you know, that mushroomy smell, you open it and you get that good mushroomy smell. This yep. just had that mushroomy smell in so much more of a quantity than mm. any other any other mushroom I've ever grown. Like, it was just so, so fragrant and good. Like, they were just the best smelling mushrooms. And you can see, like, they've got really, really irregular caps. Like, they're just really bizarre. I, I don't they're know. It's a little weird. It's, they're it's strange. Dr. Strange. It is Dr. Strange. strange. No did they drop, drop? Did they drop spores? No, no, they've got love, spores. They just don't I've drop seen, them. I've seen stuff like this, but like, yeah, man. To me, every time I get so excited about anything that drops, I mean, because everybody these days is, and I, I everybody loves swabs, loves swabs. But man, do I love a print? I like Amen, the print brother. Too. Something like Amen. that, like a print like that. That's that's. Mm, I love a you know a nice compiled solid piece of chunk of spores that could yeah i like that a nice prints are really cool I, w I wish more things would print like i mean yeah. you can take like a you can take like a like a melmac cap that won't drop a print and you can maybe like smack it on a piece of paper really hard yeah, yeah and and there's some um, stuff that prints in really small amounts that like right you're not gonna be able to actually see a print but it does print and a lot of albinos yeah. not a lot I'll, I'll rephrase that there's some albinos for instance uh Avery's. Avery's. I wouldn't be surprised if you're WTAT. I've tried with Jack Frost a lot of times. They they don't seem to want to actually mm -mm. inject much. <laughs> I've even gone as far as to take a slide. And, uh, no, I tried I tried yeah. very hard to print my tap in yep. the beginning, and they would not print for me. No. Nope. Avery's. I, I have gotten prints off of Avery's, and you know what's really crazy is once if you do get a, a Cubenzi strain, uh, strain to eject spores and albino one, you can kind of see them with a, a black light. You can go ahead and see those albino spores, the black light on the foil, and the dark a little bit. Yeah, Albinius White, the the creator of Avery's Albino, sent me. He had a printing ISO of Avery's, and he sent that to me. And he, along with like thirty Avery spores that I gave away maybe two years ago, and uh, I've always thought that was really really interesting. Now I don't know if you guys ever do this. Um, I've had some Melmac uh, cultigens that were supposedly not spore droppers, but if you're willing to sacrifice the fruit and you wait long enough 
and you, when you're cutting the stipe, if you really cut the stipe completely off, I've found that I can get them to eject spores and, and, and get some prints. I've done it on a few. Sometimes days. it's just, it's a matter of like, it'll do it. It just takes a lot longer. It's more work. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like it's it, even I've got some, some kind of like intermediate speed things that, that do drop prints, but like some, some caps, like some fast growing ones, you can set them on the foil and move them like every couple of hours and get multiple prints yep. from the same yeah, cap. And I've got other ones that you have to leave them in the same spot for a day or two to even get a half yeah. piece of print. Yeah. And it's crazy the amount of spores that per print can make such a difference. For instance, like if I'm just selling prints, uh, I just want to make sure that there's a solid print that's very usable and very visible for someone to be able to receive. Yeah. But so say I have, we have a couple customers that will just go ahead and load up their like dispensaries or load up their websites with sports syringes and they'll order them from us. and one thick print like if you have a good sport producer and you leave that on a piece of foil for 24 hours one thick print can be the equivalent of 20 or 30 thin prints and I've, it's even oh, yeah. gotten to a point where i've looked at it as as weight and spores and i've looked at it like as i need about a half gram of spores for this many milliliters of water and it's crazy because one print can produce a half gram of spores or one print can produce one fiftieth <clears throat> yeah. of a gram of spores yeah. So a huge, huge, huge difference there, just be depending on how it's printed, the size of the cap, and the strain. Yeah, and honestly, if you, you know, I like to do my little, uh, I don't know, artisan prints, and I like those thick, but not so thick you lose the differentiation you, yeah, of you the want lines. That. Yeah, you want to see the yeah. details still. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but man, are crisp and beautiful. It, if you miss it and it just, it truly dumps everything on there, it's also kind of a pain because when and I don't know about you guys, but when I go to use the print, um, I'll just take a swab, right? But when you really have a really thick print, you end up just wasting so many of the spores. Like, there's no good way of getting an appropriate amount. You're always getting too much. So it really does pay to pay attention to your printing process. Yeah. And, and so one, one comment thick. here, if, if I'm allowed to just go ahead and highlight comments, and I, I will say... So I outsource through a, a handful of different creators for their original strains when it's feasible. If I've got a big tub of Jack Frost, you know, the, the likelihood of me not swabbing them is very small. So, or if I have a big tub of Nutcracker, but one person that always has, uh, I've never had any complaints from is, is Dave Swabs. Uh, very, 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 very rarely to a point where I don't think I've ever, Dave, have I ever contacted you and asked for a replacement set for you after buying bulk? I don't, I, I, don't I have some that. sometimes, like I send out bad swabs sometimes and, and people will let me know and I send them a new one. No, but it's never been yeah. at a percentage. I don't think I've ever contacted you after purchasing no, swabs. And, no, been like, no, so. and, the, and it's, that's because if I buy a hundred sets from Dave, maybe two of those I'll have a complaint on and I have no problem sending that out and just taking that, that that's a good percentage for me. But, uh, one person says, Dave has the cleanest swabs I've ever gotten. What is your process? And uh, I'm, I'm a little curious, too, because realistically, you have you have the, the best rate of, I probably go through five different creators for different isolations, and there I do reach out to some of them every once in a while and say, hey, you sent me a batch of 25 of these. So far, I've sent out five of them, and three of them have had an issue, which is not even on them, and I'm not trying to say it is, but... Uh, you know that those it's noticed when it never happens i'll say that okay well okay here here's 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 I'm gonna uh, run away for one second too i got a cool thing to show off i can here. i can run through the process real quick this is pretty simple um okay so your 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 biggest risk of contamination for the swabs is going to be the fruits themselves obviously so so you want to make sure that you're not swabbing a tub that's like moldy or uh even if it's over mature like if it's reached the point where the fruits are getting really soggy, the chance of some other kind of bacteria spreading or, or mold is, is much higher. So there's like a window where the spores are mature and the fruits are ready to swab right. before they get soft and, and soggy. And, and, and then so, so, you, so you start with like the cleanest fruits you can possibly have. And then I'll, I'll move those fruits to the tub and I'll cut the bottoms off it. So I'm not mixing substrate with my gills, you know, and, uh, and, if I can, I'll set the fruits in the in the in the hood so that they're they're capside down with the stems up in the air. Oh yeah, so hundred percent. Gills exposed, gills aren't touching anything. And then like uh, the the next step is the swabs. I'll stage my swabs. So we're gonna wash our hands. We're we're being sanitary. We're washing our hands, 
And then I'm going to open all the swabs that I'm going to use. And I'm going to have them standing up in a little jar. Yep. Head side up, stick side down, jar full of open swabs. So I'm not opening packages for each swab that I'm taking. Because now you're going back and forth between yep. different tasks. One task per cent. So I'm opening all my swabs, got them all staged. Now I'm going to wash my hands again. Now I'm coming back to swab the fruits. So I'm grabbing my swabs that are already open from the lowest part of the stem that I can possibly hold on to, twist them in, setting them in another cup, uh, stick side down, head side up so they can sit and dry. And, and, and I'm just focusing on one thing at a time. So I'm going to open all my swabs, then I'm going to swab all my swabs, then I'm going to reload them all back in the package again once I've sat for dry a little bit. But I'm washing my hands between each and every thing. If I, if I stop to scratch my butt, I got to go wash my hands again. You know, this is just yeah. common sense. You got to, you got to not cross contaminate things. Um, and you'll, and you'll find like when you're, when you're doing anything in the, in, in the sab or the hood, anything that goes wrong increases the risk. Like, so if I'm, if I'm swabbing fruits and I go to put my swab in the cup and I throw it in the cup and it bounces out of the cup and lands on the floor, like, okay, that one's no good anymore. Don't put it back in the package. You got to have some integrity here, you know? Like, you know, if you squat, if you scratched your butt and started swabbing again, you know, you're like, oh, maybe I, maybe no one will notice. You know, they're, they're going to, somebody's going to notice. They're going to have a butt swab. So yeah, don't assume your butt's clean. No, (laughs) it's it's not. It's better to assume it's not. That quality right there is really, really, really important. I've been there a thousand times and I can't tell you how many times where you're going to go set a swab set back into one of those cups because we use a a very similar method and you accidentally brush your hand or your glove or or something yep. against a couple pieces of cotton, then you sit there and you go, okay, I don't even know how many touched. I'm going to grab five of them. I'm just going to remove them from the cup. And, yeah, yeah. and you know, you basically just wasted a small amount of your time and, and it's not the end of the world. But but you, you want to reduce the odds. Of, you do. You know, yes. you can't control everything, but you want to try and keep it as tight as possible. And, and, okay, so here's another thing. I've been using these plastic swabs, right? Plastic handled swabs. And mm-hmm. I've had some complaints about them because some people are like, I like to break the heads off of my yep. swab and your swabs don't break. I hate them. And uh, I hate them. and uh, I'm sorry, but I feel like the plastic stems are more sanitary than the wood. Just in general, they don't harbor things as much as the wood does. But when I'm putting them stick side down in my little cup to hold them, they bounce. They bounce like crazy. The wooden ones don't bounce. The plastic ones will launch right back out of the cup. So I'm constantly like spiking swabs across the room and uh, I need to work on that. But I do like the plastic swabs. They cost about twice as much as the wooden ones. But I do feel like they are uh, a cleaner product. I mean, it makes sense to me. Now, the I think Ed and I talked about this one night. Uh, now, at work for me, I do a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that's got multiple steps. They're sterile processes. Um, I'm sticking things into people all the time. So it matters <laughs> that I have sterile tech, right? Yes. Every time that I don't do what I do exactly the same way I usually do it is when I fuck stuff up and have to start over or when I accidentally drop something. You got to put everything in the same place. You got to touch the stipe the same way. You got to touch your swab the same way. You have to get muscle memory for this so that you're doing everything perfectly. And you're you're just not it's it's real simple you just can't you can't touch the swab you can't touch the last couple inches of the swab keep your hand away yep. from the end don't bump it into anything like dave was saying I, I mean i never even thought about this i just assume no one would do this <clears throat> but definitely open assume you're gonna swab 20 40 swab sets <laughs> open them all up in the beginning 100 percent do not in like i mean dude i couldn't believe you said that and i'm like wait i bet there are people that maybe do that don't do that make your process as clean and simple as possible think about it always be thinking about how you can simplify that process and be more sterile and make less mistakes well and and the way the, the reason why i look at it that way is i'm thinking like it's already so hard for people to order anything from me in the first place yeah. how hard is it going to be for them to get in touch with me to get a replacement if something goes wrong dude i hear you yeah like years later dude i'm i'm way. usually giving away my swabs 99 percent of the time and i don't want to send somebody a a, a a dirty swab i think it just 
makes me look like a bad cultivator. So no, I, I honestly, I don't like putting a dirty swab on a plate myself. That's that's no. where it comes from. Is like that I keep yeah. them clean for my own use more than anything yeah. else. Yeah. And and dirty swabs happen. It's not something that can be a hundred percent avoidable. None of us are Correct. or at least I'll speak for myself and I'll speak for you guys because I already know you don't either. No, but none of us are growing in sterile environments. Mm-hmm. That would involve, you know, a clean room and you entering in a bunny suit and um, right. it, it would be unpractical. And I don't think that there's anybody, honestly, in the United States that would be growing cubenzi mushrooms in a clean room. Well, uh, there was a, there was this one guy that was posting on Facebook at, at one point in time that he was coming in and posting all kinds of extravagant things and, and claims and stuff. But that was one of his things was that he, he did have like a, a clean room where he had to like put on like a bodysuit and, and you had to shower before you went into it and all yep. kinds of well, that uh, it, oh, it uh, Mushman Nine Thousand pretty much does that as well. Then yeah, that he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. No, no, sorry, didn't mean it. That. Works. Well, uh, see, <clears> my <throat> thing is, I've I've got a flow hood, and so like I don't have to get you in. Don't it have to in order yeah. to do the, the sterile work. Yeah, no. Like it is my clean room. Yeah. And and I've always subscribed to the idea that realistically, if you have clean spawn and a strong genetic, you can go ahead and create a monotub inside of a dumpster, and and realistically. Your your contam is not going to come unless unless there's something compromising that spawn. As unless you, you like have... grab the filthy garbage and rubbed it. Yeah, yeah exactly. If you right. went ahead, and it's all it, the tech. It's your yeah. technique for sure. I for a long time we we went ahead and bought a house two years ago out out where we're at now. But for a long time we lived in a very carpeted house where we grew in a very carpeted area, and my dog would sleep on my bed two feet away from my tubs, and it, it yeah. was never. It was never even an issue. When we very first started out, we had amazing results from our swabs, just, you know, swabbing fruits that, like I said, grew for just, just very close to, to our living space. And right. I think it, yeah. I mean, so uh, somebody, uh, Forever Gaming, just had the question uh, about tips for working in a SAB. You know, it's all doable. It's just a little harder and a little less predictable. I, I, the, the hardest part about the SAB is, first off, everybody does it wrong. <laughs> There's that, and, and and that's and that's 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 the biggest. Uh, Nikki's eating Nikki's eating raw chicken. Nikki's no, eating raw chicken. I would swear it's not. It's, it's <laughs> macaroni and cheese with cooked meat on top of it. Is it raw sure. meat? It's not. Well, no, I would though. I would. I'll eat almost raw anything that's not chicken. That's the thing is, <laughs> I will. No, I love. I love it. Like I, I, I'm a huge meat guy. So I'll eat raw fish. I'll eat raw elk. I'll eat uh, raw deer. You know, like realistically, I would go ahead and take a bite of pretty raw pork if I just killed the pig. Like I would. There's. It's like what Dave's saying. It's about. It's about handling. My mm-hmm. issue is is Dave's trust in any butcher. Or a person that handles a chicken is much more trust than I have because I've had friends that have been in charge of wrangling chickens up and, and like rank like you're you're in charge. When you run in there, you grab all the chickens, stuff them in a sack, and then those are the chickens that are going to go off, and we're going to go take them to our local butcher. And that's how a local organic farm operates: is they hire a kid to go wrangle chickens out of their big chicken coop and just start stuffing them in bags. And I've just seen chicken not be it's always really poopy i just would be nervous yeah. chickens are but dirty they are they, and it's not their fault they're not necessarily treated the best of all of the none of the animals uh, i don't i'm gonna get no, off the thing the is with the chickens is they're they're only poopy on the outside yeah if, you're if right you kill them, if and, you, and, kill and, them and you told me Steve, you you said you said nikki i don't eat the chicken skin and you said it like it was so obvious and i mean obviously yeah you're not you know Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You, one question I think everyone has a million questions about the raw chicken, so I'll ask a couple really quick. So uh, one of the questions is, like, do you always buy skinless, boneless chicken when you do this? No, I can I can take it out of any chicken. Okay, any chicken. So you you would buy a whole chicken, and you would still – then my next question is, is uh, do you remove the outer layer of the chicken regularly or no, not, not necessarily? The only outer layer that I might remove would be the skin. The skin, yeah, the, just the skin, because obviously you wouldn't eat the chicken raw chicken skin. That's insane. It's like slimy and, and bumpy texture. It's kind of skinny. Weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would be crazy skinny. because cooked kind of like like wolves and stuff. When a wolf kills a deer, it doesn't eat the skin. It it, it opens it up and gets the insides. Yeah, <clears throat> right out the yeah. butthole. 
Oh, wait, back to this. Back to the SAB though. Let's talk about the SAB. Uh, so, so the first the first thing that people do is they spray the inside of it with ISO instead of soapy water, and that's like that's like the biggest fatal flaw in the technique. You're not yeah. following the technique. Uh, the whole SAB technique is that you're supposed to have beaded up soapy water on the walls, and that catches and traps particles. You're not trying to kill the particles. <coughs> you're not trying to catch them. You're just trying to get them. Work. So, so first off, you spray the inside with the soapy water solution, not not alcohol. And then, and then the other hard part is just moving slow enough to not stir up air conditions, air air currents while you're working. Yeah. Uh, my my issue would be towards the end of my sab session. I would start speeding up because I would be getting frustrated and, and bored and tired. And, right. and that's when I'd start fucking things up. And that's when things would start coming up contaminated. You have to move really slow. You have to be very deliberate. Uh, and everything has to be precise. You can't bump into anything or make a mistake or a fumble. Everything has to be, you open the lid just enough to get something in there and close it again. You know, it's got to be real, real on point. Like if you're trying to drop off a transfer on an agar plate and you can't get it to come off the scalpel, if it doesn't come off on that first try, second try, it's going to be like 50% chance you're contaminated, you know, and it just mounts right. up from there. Like you got to try and be smooth. So it's muscle memory. It's a you lot gotta of You got to be real smooth, real slow, real steady. You got to be all the things I'm not. So and then and then <laughs> yeah. or or that was, buy a floor that was and, that yeah. was I saw that little mite you you did there and that was that was hella smooth. <laughs> oh, dude! I saw you hit take that hit, yeah. and I knew it was coming next, brother. <laughs> I tried to. I was like, I'm gonna control. I this saw thing. you had the face of trying to hold it, and yeah. I could tell. Like, yeah, like, you were, that was that was very yeah. smooth. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well. Uh, I, I just saw our buddy Ed just sat down. I think he finished doing whatever he was doing. And uh, I hey. think he is fully dressed, actually. That's, so let's pull him on. We'll change that. Hey, go ahead. And so without further ado, welcome to the show, Ed Grand. What's up? <laughs> Wait, is that, is that a pineapple? <laughs> That's what you got to do. Say, Diki, you got you to gotta show the love. You say Hey, from here on out, while advancing, 30% of donations go to him. Uh, yes. And I bet you they start rolling in, huh, Ed? That's what we got to do. Oh, my God. Where is he at? He, and and his him? microphone's muted. I wonder what he's saying right now. I don't even know. Shit, shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, you missed the song. Uh, I was doing the happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> How's that go? No, Meryl, oh, please. my God. Oh, Bill wasn't the first one, man. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm too old. Yeah, no, oh, Mar dude, I, that I, I reference was that. so old, it took me two seconds I to know, get it. Oh, man. Anybody remember uh, Marilyn Monroe? Oh, yeah. No. Nope. No? Oh, you should look it up on the internet, man. <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, yeah. I know she, the, I, I've heard of the person. Marilyn Monroe. He called her a person. Raquel That's Raquel. how you know you're young, Nikki. Oh, oh Raquel Wells, Marilyn Monroe, and yeah. uh, Linda Carter. Oh, yeah. Forget all the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dating myself, though. I like oh, that we got the Hawaiian shirt gang going on. Oh, Dave, yeah, pineapple. Grab one. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, they got really the water. good. I actually bought it specially for the, the podcast. Yeah. I even washed it before. I wow. You know, actually, it. actually, more pineapples come from Thailand than from Hawaii. Oh, I'm oh sure yeah. They do. I, I want to see it. I have a buddy. They have fields of them here, like it's crazy, but it's in like a couple provinces where like the whole, which is like a county in the U.S., like, you know, a huge, huge county, they're like all pineapples, no, like everywhere, everywhere is pineapple, pineapple, and they propagate them clonally too. Did you guys ever try no. taking the top of a pineapple no. and it'll like grow a little one out of it? Ah. They take that and they then they just like clone them. And which it's is not, a, it's not a long turnaround either. I think pineapples are like something like eight months to 15 months and you can get, go ahead and you're you're getting pineapples off of them which like yeah to me, that seems like a long time to me but okay no but the, for a tree a lot of fruit trees yeah. look, think about what you're looking at like an apple True. tree oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like a pineapple in, in in eight months if you went ahead and did it inside and in hydro like that's i'm that's super true. into the idea of hydro vegetables and hydro fruits because i used yeah. to have a friend who would harvest blueberries and strawberries out of his closet every 45 days and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. 
I do know banana trees, when they get planted, they take well over 10 years to produce fruit. So See? I guess I guess pine pineapples Wait, are banana. doing all right. Wait, bananas? If I'm wrong, yeah. I'm sorry. Bananas, they do clonally, too. Yeah. Like, that's the problem with, like, the Cavendish bananas now and the virus. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called, Vi some black spot virus. They're all clonal. Right. And so, like, the, the billions of banana plants in the world. Can you blow up that to... handsome comment from Ed right there? That would Where be perfect. Because, for... like, like, I love that. Now, this is coming from the same viewer who, who asked earlier after Dave ate chicken. He said, I wonder what people taste like. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to frame this with that. Uh-oh. But Dave, I think Dave had, uh, I've seen him with more facial hair before as well. But yeah, grow the beard out. I know the, I know the Thai girls, they probably don't like it though, huh? Wait, no, I gotta, I gotta quote, quote Dave here and say, I'm, I'm only poopy on the outside. God fucking damn it. You're like kicking Oh my God. Um... <laughs> Man, I knew this was going to degrade quickly. Deep science, guys. We're doing it. Deep science. We're doing it. We're doing the deep science. Oh, deep. Clonal, clonal propagate. Oh, we shouldn't go there either. You said it. <laughs> clonal propagation. Bananas. Cavendish bananas. They're going to have to come up with a new cultivar. Yeah. Um, because, like, all these, I think they call it black spot. It's like a bacteria, yeah. but they call it, or maybe it's a virus. I think um, they already bacteria. have a new one, but I'm, it's, they yeah. don't like it. They want something better. And I know yeah. there was originally an older banana. I watched a banana documentary because I'm white and middle-aged and <laughs> I have Netflix, so it's what I do. But, I Dude, mean, I the amount of documentaries it. is staggering now. Like, n name a, anything, there's a documentary about exactly. it Exactly. Exactly. Literally. You, you know what I like, and I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, promote something that I don't get any kind of kickback for here is the Wondrium. If you look into that, uh, the Wondrium is a website. It used to be the Great Courses, and it's like, it's like it's like oh uh, it's, yeah, it's all college lectures and documentary shows on any subject you can dream of, and it's a it's a like a yearly streaming service. Like I think I pay like 150 a year. It's like the original master class. Oh my god, it's amazing. Like I just, yeah, I just I've never heard of this. Like, I'm looking uh, at it like now. Like Mesoamerican cultures and and uh, uh, and the Viking Viking mythology. I mean, just just you name it, they've got it. Like, nice. there was another stuff. one that was called TTC, the Teaching yeah, Company. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it was a similar. Thing that's like that's an good. old one. They used to be like like audio tapes. They had yeah, that, yeah. and then they expanded into video too. And I think this like incorporated that into there because it's that kind of style. But they have like all these like. They don't have Ed, but they've got other like like professors from from universities and stuff. Uh, but if they ever did like a mushroom one, maybe they should call you up. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I used to have them when I only had an MP3 player, you know, before we had yeah. smartphones. And I would just run. Yeah, they've got like thirty or forty lectures, and you could fit them on my like one megabyte MP3 player or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, and I would just listen to them on the bus. And oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, they had and a lot could, of really good stuff. Oh, I learned so much from that because I never really had time to read all that, like anthropology and like yeah. you know European history or whatever. And I just, I just don't got time. And so yeah, I but that's the thing is, you you have time, but you don't have time to focus just on that. But like if you can do it, yeah, while reading you're doing something yeah. else, you can absorb it. Yeah. Like I don't have time to go to college and get a hundred degrees, but I can learn all these subjects in my spare time and, and be happy. Exactly. Like, I, just, I don't For have free, dude. I don't get free. I don't get the piece of paper to to, to allow me to tell uh, people that I'm a doctor of everything. Yeah. Something it's tells mostly, me it's mostly a waste of time. Uh, yeah, it's mostly a waste of time. As someone who hasn't paid off either of his degrees, it's a waste of time. <laughs> it's just another reason to drink for another four years. You're like, hey, I didn't drink enough in undergraduate, and like, uh, I need another four years to drink and try to get laid, like before I. <laughs> <laughs> like you're a late bloomer. <laughs> the fern yeah. girls, man. The fern and the mold girls. You know, yeah. they're really, they're in their thirties. They're like, ah, eh, anybody will do. Fern, fern that people, was it. I forget it was the fern people are cool. Like I, I met a guy who was super into ferns, and like he was just like not a sexual way at all. 
one of the coolest things <laughs> ever. And it got to be funny because, like, every time I'd walk by a fern, which I don't know if you know, if you live out in the, the Pacific Northwest, there's, there's a lot of ferns. A lot of ferns. Yeah. So yeah. when you walk by a fern, yeah. it'd be really funny because he's looking for specific ferns. But I would mm. point out every fern to him. So going <laughs> yeah. for a walk is like, yo, Connor! And he would yeah. jump and I'd be like, that's a fern, yeah. dude. I, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah. I thought I knew a lot about plants, but... but I didn't know there were that many ferns. Yeah, oh, do this? Big eye hundreds of them. Corn dog Thousands of them. Wow. Big on there. Finds a lot of them. I bet you didn't know, didn't know there was 2,500 kinds of salmonella either. I didn't know. That was a new one for me. I, I had no clue. They're all pretty much about the same as far as we can tell, but uh, <laughs> they have slight differences. They're just not like, major differences. Is, there's a lot of there's different lot of, like, phenotypes. Like, like, maculus bacteria. There's a ton of different maculus. Edward oh, Biden. bacillus, oh, yeah. yeah. I bacillus, mean, that's like a yeah. whole... I say everything wrong because I turned. I taught myself everything by... It's all good. I mean, no one no one cares. It's no, I don't. Anybody that cares doesn't matter anyway. But I just exactly. want to get a little context. Exactly. Is it I mean, when you read everything... None of us home, know how to say every word right, dude. It doesn't well, yeah. matter. And then when you never talk to... When you learn everything in your house or, or try yeah. to, to uh, try and learn everything... <laughs> yeah, you, you I, I still know. say trichoderma, and I know yeah. it's trichoderma, yeah. but I don't give a well, shit. I'm 46. I'm gonna... Some people say core, core, like core, or core. Ag core. Ag agar. Core. I say agar. I say agar. Core. I get corrected a lot. Agar. What's up Coyer. with our hobby? Coyer. There's so many words that are like. Choir. <laughs> Choir? Yeah. I feel is like it choir? Is a word. Like you can say fey. You can be like, hey, that needs more fey. But some people are like, I can't like, say that. F A E. Like, what do you I do? have to say F A E. I can't really? say fey. Really? I can say fey. It, no feels, like, be like, it feels like, like, like I've you, taken you it too up. far. You need, you, need to, <laughs> you need to open the fey up on that tub. No, I, like, I, will, I won't correct crazy. anybody, but, but I, I, I just. Like but it's F A E. Man. You know, I won't correct you, but it's F A E. Yeah. Now for the agar, auger, auger, it's not auger because that's a tool, but I think you can, if you want to say agar, say it. If you want to say auger, say it. No one cares. I know Gary, fresh from the farm, he says agar, or no, he says, he says, What do you say, Ed? You're the, Ed's the, the, like, licensed psychologist. I, I used to say auger. No, but something about this, you guys, I've been all around the world, like, if you hear people in, in different languages saying like even lactarius like yeah. lactarius 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 yeah. and you're like what the fuck like i heard this <laughs> russian guy i was mushroom hunting with in north carolina and so like of you know course. carolina you can i uh, everybody says things different a british guy i hang out with he was like arkansas he was like i'm gonna go to <laughs> he's like right. i'm gonna go to the u.s and, and visit <laughs> arkansas Right. And everybody was just looking at these other three American guys. So like, wow, you're right. really British. Or the people you? from no, Oregon. Said, said like nobody ever like yeah. go to visit Arkansas of all places. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the no. Here's the thing is now I got in my head Arkansas because I fucked all the damn British people. Right. And yeah. next time I say it, I'm like, and the same with agar, auger, agar. I sound like I've got a speech impediment now. I'm like, agar. Oh, no. I thought when Nikki asked you how you said it, I thought you were going to say agar, agar, however you say it. Because, like, every time you say it now, I can tell you, like, worry about someone saying yeah, you're saying yeah. it wrong. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's like a, uh, uh, like a, so it doesn't I matter. Call it... Here's the thing. Like you guys said, if anybody fixates on your pronunciation of a genus name or agar yeah. agar, they're probably, they, they need to worry about other things. They probably don't matter. Yeah. They're a douchebag. Yeah. They're a yes. douchebag. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what? So not that he goes ahead and sets standards, but Alan told me once when I, we were out foraging, he said something among the lines of, of a word, like when it comes to mushroom pronunciation, it's however you're most comfortable. And anyone who sure. says otherwise, he, he essentially you're a douchebag. Right. Yeah, you're a douchebag. Yeah. If you're out with, with other people who are mushroom hunting and enjoying themselves, and you ever feel the need to correct somebody over, you know, yes. the specific pronunciation, you're not out there mushroom hunting. You're right. out there being a douchebag. Yeah. My yeah, whole thing I mean, is, I mean, do you know what they meant? I've yeah. got an example. Yeah. That's all. Example that's what language that. is for, right? Exactly. That's okay, all that. So, you've got psilocybin. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then you've got psilocybe. Mm -hmm. 
yep. but you could or also psilocybin. say but you could also say psilocybin. <laughs> and if you can say psilocybin, you can say psilocybin. I yep. mean, yeah. why not? The British say psilocybin, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a species. You could also species. say psilocybin. Yeah. If you yeah. wanted to. I mean, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And we're all going to know what you mean. Awkward, I mean yeah. yeah, people change the vowel sound depending on where psilocin, psilocybin, psilocin. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. they change the vowel sign, and it's like, why did you change the vowel? Even fungi, fungi, fungi. Yeah, yeah right. It's yeah. like I, I, I saw one of those documentaries, one of those nice ones, like Fantastic. It wasn't Fantastic Fungi, another one. And the woman kept saying, fungi, fungi, fungi. <laughs> I know it, who you're talking about. I was yeah. like, what? stop, <laughs> stop. Like, and then, no, the funny thing is, then there was a guy, and he was like, fungi. Fungi. It's like they were competing with each other, like fungi, 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 <laughs> and it was driving me fucking nuts. I was yeah. Like, Fuck. yeah, I mean, I don't care how you say it, but they were like competing with each other. Right. <laughs> like, you was like, my way. Just, just had a discussion at the beginning of the show and agreed on one. You know, <laughs> like which yeah. one? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was a professional yeah. documentary. One. Of I'm sure guys. that was a vibe. I'm sure there was other stuff going on because, as uh, Ed has explained to me, the mycologists, they're ruthless. Oh. You think it's bad in the the underground cube community? Yeah, they it's were probably big, I... suppressing a lot of deep seated like loathing and hatred for one another. <laughs> Well, you know, I believe, like the, I believe it. It, the the meetups that I've gone on there, it's very much like a, a, a clicky type of thing. Clicky, yeah, yeah, very clicky. Like, it, 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 you have to be able to really, like, I don't know. It's it very much feels the entire time like you're trying to nudge your way into something like that, mm-hmm. opposed to like, you know, that's I always show up anytime I'm going like to a new mushroom group meetup or anything like that in person to go foraging. I always make sure I have a, a friend. Me and my buddy Bryce go to like all of those together. But like, if if I'm just gonna go myself, you gotta be careful because some people think they know everything in the fucking world, and some people have absolutely, you know, no no decorum about that. They'll just they'll just nope. go ahead and put down and and almost be like just an awful time to be around. No I'm reason. always like, oh, oh, I thought you liked mushrooms. It seems like what you yep. like doing is just being an asshole. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it'll yeah. be out of nowhere, too. It'll be something dumb, like people arguing over a, a, a chanterelle species. You know what right. I mean? Being like, this is canferellus or, or, or rose. But, I can't even right. say any of them properly. And then it's but, like an alpha lotus. But, like but I'll go out there and I'll be like, I'll be like well, you know what? <laughs> the, they're both they're yellow awesome. chanterelles that look delicious. Like, we can, yeah. well, let's get them in the basket and move up the hill. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> keep right. the keep the picking going and the arguing to a less. Yes. People have really big egos in the mushroom community. Oh, God. I think they do everywhere, but everywhere. Yes. I'm sure I think everywhere. in our community we keep I hoping don't... that because this medicine does cool things, yeah, that it's going to somehow make us not just human beings that do all this dumb fucking shit all the time. Yeah, it's but just I've people. About I it think before, people but I in think general just are people. We are expressing as people exactly how we are supposed to be. That's Alan Watts taught me that. He's like, people are doing exactly what people do. They're going to keep doing exactly what they do. They're going to click up. They're going to argue. Some of them get real big egos, and, you know, that becomes more important. It's just how it's going to be. Yep. What can you you do? Can I swear now? Yeah, we've let a couple slip. It's okay. Okay. I the didn't know that I, was a thing, by the way. We, in the beginning, we try not to. They they demonetize and uh, like uh, they don't like it. Yeah, I feel like what that's something you gotta start. You you need to get a pre written copy paste. You gotta start out like this. Welcome, thank you. Smash that like button. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. terrible. I probably swore a couple times in the beginning. Even. <laughs> no, you didn't. You did fine. Okay. I just Good. telepathically There's... encourage you to. I buy I super too. too. I try. In the very beginning, I'm super, super conscious and super tense always. I'm always like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to slip in. And then towards the end, I realize, like, oh, you kind of have to just kind of talk when you're ready. It's okay, Nikki. You can show nipples now. I know. I you show nipples in the you show everyone before show, we even you can show yeah, I you can sh- but I have the big <laughs> fingers, bro. I have the big old nipples, bro. So it's it's like if we're showing nipples, like people are gonna ask for me. I should get but all, by the Dude, way, I'm, I'm, this is getting demonetized, guys. This is getting way too adult. <laughs> and that's not even my fault. He encouraged me. Uh, he did. Dude, I met four times. But it will last be good to mine. 
It, it won't I had like an hour long conversation. His, his grainy video and his tiny little nipples. They'll be like, oh, but look at that dude. That nipple looks like a boob. No. Wait, did you did you hear Nikki? Nikki just started um, comparing nipple size with you, Ed. <laughs> it was done before you caught on. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> nipple size comparison was like a little ways back. Oh. Uh, dude, I met four young Thai guys last night, and I was like, wanted to talk to him about mushrooms. What I bought a Paikal and Taikal, you know the Shelgun books. Yeah. And he's like, I'm a pharmacist, but within three minutes, we we're talking about dicks. Yeah. And I was just like, why? Like young Thai guys, and they were like, there was a table of girls across from us, and it's like, you guys, should we really be talking about like Ron Jeremy? And like, <laughs> it's like, why do young guys want to talk about dicks? I'm dicks? like, <laughs> I, don't know why I mean, just... that's like on Instagram when everybody grows a mushroom that looks like a dick, and what do they got to do <laughs> every time? Yep. They got to hold it down by their zipper every time. You, but like, you they know, just you know, gotta do it. It's hard not to like. Yeah, I had Rosie a little bit ago. If anyone saw me earlier, I, I ran out of the room and I was. Getting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, muted. Though. Oh, they can still hear you. You can keep talking. Oh, oh, Sorry, oh, oh, somebody oh, made oh, a comment. Deep. No, so they're good. joking. They're going. Oh yeah, look how deep the science is tonight. No, that's so terrible. I had <laughs> Rosie running in here or Susie running in here with the tub earlier and of a couple of fruits. I was gonna hold up next to my zipper, but she actually slipped on the back porch and dropped all of them oh. with a tub of broken, fucked up fruit. And on we, accident. No, it was totally on accident. She was trying but, to say uh, you. It was, it, she like came around the door. She's like, she had one fruit in her hand. I was like, there was four fruits in there. I was like, I was like, just put me in the tub. She's like, and I was like, I was like, that's not yep, the fruit. That's what they got to do every time. Bring me the, there we go. See, perfect. Yeah, I like Every it too. See, and that looks so nice. You know what I mean? It does. Yeah, Roger Rabbit doing some weird stuff. You have to eat it now. I know that. <laughs> I'm gonna eat the whole thing. You Fuck have to you. at least Fuck be you, you almost got me to do it. Fuck you. I know. <laughs> well, it's going on the dryer. It's going on the dryer. That's probably a good place for it. Uh, good lord. We can ask, I, I can ask science questions now, right? Yeah, Perfect. science. But you can. Right. We can. You guys did a good job. We, we get there eventually, guys. Uh, no, I, I can't jump, jump into it. You have to ease it. Yeah, in. you can. Go for it. No, no I'm just on. saying. Okay. I mean, so, he's been on for a while. We've, we've definitely yeah. not been talking about All science right, no, yet. Because I have, yeah. I have, I want to make some confirmations that I, these are things yeah. that I think. Yeah, like four pages of notes. He's ready yeah. for you. Perfect. He's ready, oh. Nikki. Get ready for your notes. Okay, He's so one ready. of the questions so. I have is, so my understanding is uh, spores germinate and the likelihood of you having MS, if you're taking like, if you're taking transfers purposely to try and isolate single colonies, as in you're taking transfers, uh, you know, small grain size transfers off of what you believe to be, you know, and, and sorry, my bad. No, good. Get your water. Individual colony. Uh off of a germination plate and you maybe let me a couple transfers down the odds of you having ms still are like kind of slim right the idea is after a couple transfers if you're if you're looking for the morphology of a single colony growing on a plate and you're transferring from that you're going to end up after a couple transfers with a single dicaryotic colony correct yeah you would hope so uh, a lot of people so. ask uh, a lot of people ask about this yeah that's why i like those 11 scalpel blades i I, I like, like you say a lot, like a uh, great, like even half a rice grain. I yep. sometimes use the tweezers even like, I think a lot of people do. Oh this, yeah. Uh, pluck uh, a little aerial yeah. piece of mycelium. Mm. That's what, and then I take that piece and I actually cut the end off. So I only get just a, like you said, about a half a grain yeah. of rice size. And, and I, please, I can, I can add something to that too, though. Oh, yeah, uh, when, when you're depending on how you start your plate, uh, okay, let's let, your typical, MS is usually referring to a syringe. So you're, you're assuming you've got like countless thousands of spores in here and you're going to jizz them yeah. on a plate and then you get multiple colonies popping up. Uh, so this is a multi-spore plate because like, you've got numerous like dicaryotic colonies. Uh, but if you're putting a single swab head in the middle of your plate and just setting it there and it's all growing out radially, there's still tons of spores on that swab head, but they're not all going to germinate. 
Right. No, the first ones that do are going to grow yeah. out and, and pretty much dominate the plate. So you're not starting, not even though fish. there's thousands of spores, you're not starting with thousands of combinations. Really. You're starting with a few. You just don't know. And so you just kind of, you don't know, you know. So the only way to really know for sure is either cereal dilute and isolate just one. Or you can do like, like if you do a streak plate and, and kept cap, capture yeah. individual things as they're popping up, you can do it that yeah. way too. But like... For me to do the multi-spore tubs that I do for for pheno hunting, it's actually hard work to get multiple genetics to grow together in one in one plate. Right. So yeah. you, you really have to risk a contaminated plate and just yep. send everything to the fucking yep. the whole thing. Well, you know because what I do? The transfers day? you do, you just you you've reduced it somewhat. You just don't know how much. Yeah. You know what I'll yeah, do this sometimes? Is... Oh, I'm sorry. Don, I'll go ahead. Well, sometimes what I'll, I'll comment on that, Dave, is sometimes when I'm pheno hunting and I, I'll go ahead and I'll put down, like, for instance, I'll use like a pedal method and I'll go ahead and take a small piece of the swab off. I think that's your, that's you, one of your, you or Yoshi's. Uh, I think it's like, a Yoshi, product. but yeah. Yeah. But I'll take a small piece of the cotton and I'll place it to the agar. And uh, if I want to go ahead and run that whole thing, something I'll do to kind of clean it up is, is it'll grow out and I'll take maybe uh, a, button size transfer from the germination point from it i'll actually remove the whole cotton too and just due to the fact that when i transfer that that little tiny center piece to another plate instead of it starting from spore again it's starting from uh from just you know uh from mycelium that's already active and growing and so it'll grow a lot faster than if any contaminant originally started and i'll do that and i'll do that once or twice and then i'll end up cutting that center out, removing it and sending the rest of that plate because it, it, I don't think at any point there, if I continued to always cut the circle out from around the original germination point, I couldn't have lost any genetic there. Any genetic potential would still be on that plate, if that makes sense. should be. Like, I, I do the center cut too. I do some plates like that too. Like, I'll yeah. do my initial swab plate and then I'll make a copy of it because I want to try and run it again. But you're still taking a chance on, as the mycelium is spreading, like a dominant culture is going to grow a little bit faster Absolutely. than that. That's the, that, that's the fear there. And so, yeah. so there is going to be some competition in there and you're going to end up with like, you know, the strong survive. You're and de depending on your timing, you don't know if new dicaryons, uh, you know, or, or if monos are just germinating later yep. than the initial. Yep. And, and then, absolutely. and then, you know, either Buller's phenomenon or but however one of my original, doing it. So the original reason I asked him the question is, so this is something I've always wanted to clear up is, so say I go ahead and I've had a culture, I've been running it for a while and I've been running it for long enough that it's safe to assume that I'm running a single dicaryon. For instance, like on my temp enzys culture, I was sent, uh, I was sent it and I, I assume it was originally a clone. Right. And, uh, I know that I've run it probably, you know, 40 transfers since then, just through LC, just through through agar over and over and over and over, sending it to grain and then doing grain to grain over and over and over. I know that it, at this point, I would assume it's a single dicaryotic culture. I've always been explained that taking a clone, and I want to be corrected on this if I'm wrong, just so you know, Ed. I don't want you to hold back and, and sugarcoat it by any means. Um, no, dude, you know, by, by any, I'm not really the, like, authority on this by any means. I no, just I write face. I just write Facebook posts like with my. No, no, thoughts, no I know. But I just value your opinion. Is, like, no, just in the last minute, you brought up like four separate topics that all could be like an hour long discussion. <laughs> no, no, I get you. So here, about, I'm really bad about, about that too. I'm really all over the place. But here, let me let me ask my my real question is basically, if I have if if I do confidently have a single dicaryotic colony, right? Um, like for instance, a tampensis colony. And I was going to go ahead and I was going to clone a fruit from it. Would that, would cloning the fruit versus cloning a truffle versus just taking a clone of the substrate all result in the same culture? Theoretically, yes. Okay. That's where my four, and this is why I was just reading a bunch of stuff about cannabis and this, what you're talking about, maybe senescence. I just learned a new thing, Muller's Ratchet. Uh, there's other things about pathogens and viral things being in your culture, epigenetic factors. There's another thing I've been thinking about differences in certain chromosomes, like mutate faster. So somatic mutations as it undergoes mitosis. Okay. So if you, sorry, I'm using big words here. No, you're uh, fine. You, like if, over kind of like if, the aging of things. If, yeah. So this is another topic that, um, 
I hate to say it, but was kind of a little bit pushed to the forefront by the mushroom cultivator by Paul Stamets. He's okay. got an extensive discussion about what he refers to as passage numbers, or sometimes people call them Paul numbers. What we call T numbers, transfers, like so T0, T1, T2, etc. He called them P numbers. In mammalian cell culture, they talk about passage numbers. So here's the problem is when you have a fungus that divides mitotically and makes a new cell, new cell, new cell, there's a certain ingrained sort of probability that uh, you will get a mutation. It's okay. been shown that that doesn't happen very often. I mean, you, ha you literally have to go through probably thousands, if not millions of cell divisions before you get a single mutation. And it might be a mutation in something like, I hate to bring it up, but the ITS region that doesn't have any effect so probably, you know, we only use like probably 20 to 25 percent of our genome and that all that other 75 percent could Just be there. junk. Yeah. So a mutation there wouldn't necessarily affect your phenotype, but it would still be there. But that one time you get a mutation and say, like, if you get a mutation in a sperm cell and that becomes a new baby, that's going to be significant. <laughs> Yeah. But if you get, you know, mutations in a skin cell on your arm, you just, eh, it sloughs off. Yeah. That's, you know, and it hopefully it doesn't turn into skin cancer. So it's the same kind of idea with our fungi is that, like, it, it's a matter of, like, how many cell divisions are you mm -hmm. talking about? Do you want an exact replicate? I know in the cannabis industry, Gary talked about this. Maybe, I don't know if it was on yours, but Gary from Fresh Cap about cloning mother cannabis plants yeah like the right. clones now most of this discussion comes from the cannabis industry because they're having to go back to tissue culture right to take these land races and basically clean them up because they're dirty like what we know as like white widow or northern lights is just so viral ridden because you know when cannabis people they cut they're like i need to touch the plants oh and what they're doing is essentially sharing viruses you know right. yeah. like i live in bangkok don't touch every you know right. don't touch things they but... definitely have some viruses <laughs> like, don't touch everything you see you know um, and something it's that has always made me curious about like the aging of things is it's kind of like an example i don't know if you're familiar at all with like uh with the cactus mutations but there's a, a really popular oh, yeah. Trichoceras, uh, which is just uh, TPM, Trichoceras pachynoi monstros. And this cactus can grow like a completely normal pachynoi. And then at random points in its life, it can start to grow this this crazy random mutation. And like, a, like I, I own a couple of them that I grew for one to two years and it grew like a traditional cactus. And then randomly it would grow this weird spineless mutation for two to three feet. And then it would go back to growing regular cactus. And so I always used to think about that. And I think, is there a way I could compare this to Cubenzi or, or any mushroom genetic at all? And I could yeah. say, Hey, this, this for, for literally four months grew a certain way because of its, I think because of its age, maybe because I don't know, I don't really know, but, but well, mushrooms do the same thing, right? Yeah, of course. They're, they're called sports in the plant world, right? Like sports, like the little offshoots. Yeah. Like if you're growing a lot of the like the dwarf herbs, uh, dwarf um, like those hedges and stuff, the dwarf cedars and stuff. They're basically mutations, uh, and you can clonally propagate those. And one of the things the plant people have been looking into for many years, even before cannabis, is like you know if you get a, a banana that looks nice and you grow it for many many years and you set up your production like cavendish bananas they've got like in uh, costa rica and down wherever they grow them they've got whole factories set up to process cavendish bananas and so if that banana shrinks an inch or two or they have Throws to harvest it off. yeah the whole thing right. gets whacked and and it's, we luckily don't have to deal with that but so the idea i think with our i mean that we're all over the place here but the idea i think with our stuff if you Sorry. want canopies no no it's brilliant stuff but it's I get like I don't know when people ask these questions. I'm really all I don't over know. Too. No, everybody is me too. That's why I write damn post-it notes. I, I got like them. twenty. No, because I have to. I've got about fifteen Microsoft Word documents opened up where I just have one like viruses, uh, epigenetics, and other ones like in fight. And I'm like, I feel like I'm going crazy. Like one of you guys was saying earlier, there's a point at which you have to compartmentalize and be like, <laughs> fuck that shit for now. Fuck that yeah. shit. 
Like, you get a swab, you put it in the little sleeve, and you're like, fuck that for now. Like, yeah. I can't deal with that. Like, I got other stuff to do. Or like you were saying, Dave, like, I literally yesterday just threw away four shoe boxes because I'm like, yep, fuck those shoe boxes. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's when you know you've been growing a while, when you just start going, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. My guess, friend, I... I got swabs off of, off the Hawaiian yesterday, and then there was still, like, four little fruit bodies on it. And I was just like, fuck it, and I threw it in the garbage, and my friend saw it. And she was like, what the fuck are you doing? I just I just didn't have enough jars and I dumped out a few jars that were like halfway colonized because I wanted to put something else in them. So. <laughs> Tired of waiting on them? Nope. Yeah, yeah. I've already got those. I'm going to grow something yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, okay, here's, here's an example on the mutation though. Uh, you've got my El Choco. El Choco came from B plus that I'd grown for 20 plus years. Exactly the same, mostly from clone the whole time. And after 20 years of being exactly the same, it popped out these dark brown hairy mushrooms. So, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't breed it from spore that many times over 20 years. So it really did most of its changing just on its own. But I didn't see any changes for 20 years. So it's like, who knows when whatever mutation occurred. And I just happened to roll the dice and get the spore combination up or whatever. But it was in there. But uh, you went from being super consistent to super weird. And it's been just getting weirder ever since. I think there's like a like a like a uh, like a like a threshold or like an event horizon where like when something begins to change, like now it like snowballs and it's like now all bets are off. And you don't yeah, know what it's Yeah. Yeah. It's like those, when you go to the water park and they've got those big tubs that fill up with water and then yeah. it dumps. Yeah. Yeah. There's a certain point, like a choke, like and that it just, it's like, Oh, I'm going to switch now. And now uh, we're going to be, who knows what's going to happen next. See, and see who knows what that. like environmental pressures can trigger that yeah. or you know you know all of us sitting around here we're growing on cv for a while now we're gonna throw azomite in now we're doing this or oh the weather changed or oh i didn't wear my fucking gloves for a while and because <laughs> i didn't reorder them and right who knows and ed talks a lot about viruses and we were talking about prions today on, on the discord yeah. and you know, there are a lot of factors that can trigger that those genetic mutations. Too. Well, see, for us, that's really cool because you get an El Choco, right? But for, like, the cannabis industry, that is a yeah. fucking disaster. Yeah. Well, like, that, you well gotta, it could go either way. It's, it's, I mean, it, there's no there's no promise that a mutation is going to be a benefit. Like, yeah, it's it's totally random. Like, it could totally make it worse. Mm -hmm. So so it just it happens to right. be like, random luck when it happens to come out as an improvement. Like when we get yeah, mutations, but, it's like you said, when yeah. we get a mutation, it's usually a tumor. You know, it's it's not it's not a we don't get X Men powers. We get we get deformities and and, and dysfunction. Exactly. Yeah, yep, exactly. But true I mean, for people wise, of course, when we just start crossbreeding, you know, things yeah, I'll just grab start, a mutation really quick. I'll grab they a mutation. start expressing differently, right? Different looking people. But but if you look internally, medically, pathologically, right, like everybody is predisposed to different cancers, different chronic health concerns. Some people can smoke their entire, can chain smoke two packs of cools every day and never get lung cancer. Other people can smoke cigarettes for five years and die by age 48 of lung cancer. Like, so there, there is still in how we breed. There's a lot of different ways that we don't express phenotypically, but might express genotypically and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mexicans can drink the water in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, well, that's, that's another okay, factor, next, yes. Next time, you don't, not live, raw chicken or live chicken, you can drink some Mexican water. <laughs> drink some Mexican water. I'm not yeah, trying well, to kill myself. Forget Mexican <laughs> Coke. You want Mexican water. Okay, I'm sure somebody in the chat from Texas, they can go down to, like, the Rio Grande and, like, scoop us. Yeah. <laughs> Pull a 10cc, like, else, uh, like a syringe for you. And... Yeah. Oh, but you know what? Bacteria, this is, I mean, this is why I like reading about bacteria and plants. Bacteria, they have what are called heat shock proteins. And they literally can turn on and off certain types of <clears throat> behavior. Like, if mm. they want to express a certain phenotype. You can change the temperature, like maybe just three or four degrees Celsius, you know, like 10 Fahrenheit. Oh. And they, they completely change their phenotype. 
<clears throat> so when people like azaleas say, for color with pH, kind of. Uh, but, yeah, similar, right, yeah. but with the temperature. Right. So the the fact that our 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 little phenotypes express differently in Thailand or Texas or Europe right. is not really a big surprise. So a lot of the people out there that they get um they get kind of shocked when they do a grow from a from a swab and they see the you know IG picture and they're like this doesn't look right. It's like well you kind of gotta get used to it. Yep. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> like just small get things used to can it. make such a huge difference too. Like. Yeah. Like you're talking about just location to location. Like I, I remember Dave not that long ago commented about how uh, in the winter he ends up having his tubs dry out more, not due to the high humidity outside, but due to the fact that the space heaters in people's houses or I think yeah. his house. And I noticed this is something he said it too, just has the air dryer. And I never really thought about it, but like I live in a really humid area where it's not, unlikely for my house to be at 60 to 80 percent humidity just because of ocean mist um right. <laughs> but but i'll notice during the winter when i actually started putting up a little humidity thing that because i'm heating my room so much it's at 30 yeah. percent humidity and i'd be like whoa yeah. okay that makes sense why my tubs are drying out a lot faster than when my room's at 60 percent humidity Right. But, no. And then you, you're running totally different because it, it is so much more humid there. Whereas yep. guys like Dave and I, we're used to 30%, 34% humidity in our house. Totally when, we're, when we're all setting our tubs, people will like, well, you'll post a picture and somebody will be like, oh, like, what was your, what was your ratio? What was your, what are your, it's not always what well. are your face setups? What is, how does it, it's, it's going to be different for everybody's environment. Everybody. So, yeah. Absolutely. And different right. at different times of the year. If you, have, if you, you go through seasons. For mine, mm. But that doesn't mean you're going to get the exact same results. Yeah. You might have to adjust it one way or the other, change the temperature a little bit to get, yeah. you know, to tune it to your particular thing. And then our individual varieties all probably have slightly subtly different needs oh, as yeah. well in order to perform at their yeah. optimal. So like, in my case where I'm running like a hundred different things at once, I can't like tune each tub differently. They all get treated the same and I just yeah. take what I get, you know? Yeah, you know, exactly. You, you, you hope for a, a, a best fit for all kind of thing. You know? I've met people that try to, to grow every tub and I, they're like, ideally it's funny because there's a lot of variants that I know I've been running for a long time and people say a oh, cube is a cube is a cube, but I have a lot of different cultures that I know how they perform. Like I know yeah. I have a lot of cultures, for instance, almost every Jack Frost culture I've ever had, I've been able to do whatever the fuck I want with. I've been if I want to go ahead and run it with no holes in a no modded tub, right. it'll produce. If I want to go ahead and run it in a, a, a tub that's modded, it'll produce. There's some there's some cultures that just do whatever, but then there's other things where if I tried doing that with like if I tried doing that with my albino stargazer, they would end up like a few pin set of shriveled, long, lanky, insignificant mushrooms. And so yeah, it's it, true. Some look, some no yeah. matter what you do, the end result's the same. No Others, matter. depending upon what you yep. do, the end result can be very different. Yeah, I see. The can, can I give a a little piece of advice for like we're, we're all obviously very experienced, but for a beginner grower, what you want to do is when you get a fruit that can that is suitable for your conditions, clone it. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're running in tents and you've got a cultivar that runs well in tents under your humidity like clone that fruit and work if you want to get canopies and mass and yield that's what you need to do that's what they do in the plant right. world right yeah. like you you clone the one that if you're growing in monotubs yeah that's what you got to do unless mm -hmm. you're like experimenting like all of us are like and you're you're used like we can run a multi-spore and be like fuck it we'll throw it in the garbage but like for a beginner yeah. grower right. especially no, you if you're running that's for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you're doing LC, don't be surprised if somebody who, say, like lives in Oregon sends you LC and you're in Florida and it doesn't work the same. Yeah. Like because they probably cloned a fruit and made LC from that fruit. Yep. So you might have right. to go through a few iterations and technically it'll be a clone, but we all know that's not really okay. always true. So if you can, if you want to be really, you know, the BRF, the, the old PF tech. That is like one of the most brilliant things that was ever invented. And yeah, I was talking to you, Michael, about I got a new iteration on that, a new version of that, but, okay. but we'll get to that later, later, later. Um, but yeah, multi spores. If you can get a clean multi spore syringe, which you obviously can't do with a lot of this stuff now, but uh, even if you do the grab and drag, oh, no, back, back. If you do the grab and drag thing, 
and you cut I still out don't know what that is, by the way. Oh, uh, you okay, guys wait, wait, have got to try this. this. It's it's really it's great. Basically, you take an agar plate or agar agar. <laughs> see, there, you, that's you, how Dave. <laughs> that's how Ed says it. Agar, okay, agar. can you guys see this? So I'm gonna. So basically, I'm gonna take a swab and I'm gonna rip off a piece of the cotton and I'm gonna do a little serpentine pattern on the plate. And what I do is when all these little fuzzy things start germinating, some will be monos, especially the ones in the middle. Toward the end. Okay. Yeah, I uh, find towards the end. Not the yeah, last, but towards the end. How, yeah, well, those are like if you start here, that'll likely be a dicarion. Yeah. So what no, I, I get, I get the is, theory and the idea. I'll take this and chop it up on a new plate, like do a little garlic mince and chop, 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 chop on a new yep. plate. That's where I get my dicarions. I have been consistently pulling monos from the, the little serpentine part. Like, I just pull, like, I don't even get a dicarian. I'll get monos before I get a dicarian now. Because a lot of these little colonies, if you get really near the edge of the, like a right, less than rice grain size, near the edge of that little fuzzy colony, it'll, I'm pulling monos, like, like easy. daily now. I need to give this easy, a shot. Easy, easy. Yeah. Like and it's, it's because you're actually, so, you know, when DC Mac was like, nah, bro, you just got to stab that, you know, after you s streak, then just stab. And he had his whole method for breaking oh, for it off in sterile not. fashion and all that. That's fine. But like Dave was saying, you just have such a massive amount of spores there. Who knows yeah. what they're doing? Yeah. But if you just pull a small tuft of that swab head off and then you're running it through in one, one you're never re-pulling it out, but just yeah. one motion... As it goes, the you know, the it's less and less quantity towards the end, right. so, and they're embedded within, right? Like here's the surface of the uh, the agar, but yep. you've broken it. So instead of sitting on top where the air's drying it out, it's wedged down in there, and boy, it just. I mean, a day later, I can sometimes pull pull a mono off of that. Yeah, I've got to check that out. Yeah. The only way I've it's ever great. got any of my mono. Maybe two. Previous. You got to watch them though. Real like they'll they'll, grow. they'll go fast. Yeah, like I've heard well, Dave say, you got yeah. they'll literally they'll they'll die karyotize yeah. within hours. Like yeah, within I'm six sure. hours, you got to have plates ready and you got to yeah. be ready to go, man. And yeah. don't don't be shaking. You know, too much coffee or have a yeah. drink or whatever. Well, <laughs> and then you got to you got to check your transfer too in case you picked up an ungerminated spore with it. Yes. Yes. Later. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So the I'll sometimes that... put seven on a new plate and then subculture those, and and I so I'll I'll check them. I'll put like seven on the plate. This is wrong, <laughs> and uh, and then I'll I'll check those under the scope and then subculture the first ones that are monos. So as soon as you see a mono, sub it, get it off that plate, and do the same thing. Just a couple millimeters at the edge of that colony that you just checked, and sub that fucker right away. Like you want to get that mono on its own plate because you know you get busy and you don't. Right. You come back like four or five days later and they're all fucking grown together and you're like, oh, I got a multi spore. Yep. But yeah. one more thing about the grab and drag: if you want a multi spore and to not narrow it down to one genotype, or maybe have ten or fifteen. I cut like, can you guys see that little black square? Mm -hmm. Like I take in between the parts and that's where it'll be clean. Because if you have contamination, right. it'll be in the trench. So if you make yeah. it a little bit wider that and maybe take like a half inch square from between the little grooves. Yeah, don't include the groove. Don't include yeah, yeah, the yeah. trench. Yeah. Just yeah. the stuff that's grown out and looks clean yeah. and get like the clean mycelium. And you can pull like 10 or 15 genotypes. And then when you go to a multi, you so you subculture that and I put it smack dab in the middle and let it grow out. And if it's all clean, just take like another square, like maybe, you know, inch and a half. I don't use the whole plate to make spawn. I just use like an inch and a half square and often off to the side. Or you can also, if you notice one side looks better, just use one side of the plate. That's what like I you do. Don't have, yeah, you don't have to use the whole plate. I see people dumping, what do they call the tiger drop shit? But like, right. don't do that. Like, unless right. you are using... It's not up, even easy in the first place, but yeah. No, it's just yeah. bad technique. It's kind of too ghetto. It works like, with fucking, ketchup cups, so if you're... Working with ketchup sure. cups, it's yeah. It, yeah. just about the level that you're working with. So, yeah. like, yeah. but I mean, and then your the idea there is the the more plate you put in, the faster the colonization will right. take off. No, but you can accomplish the same thing with a pea size transfer and a shake yeah. two days later. Right. Yeah. Like, yep. yep. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like a lot of the beginners too. I think they're always worried about when do I break and shake. When do I should I do it? It doesn't fucking matter. 
If you've got Not clean, really. sterile, sterile grain and you break it, you can break, shake it fucking every other day if you want, but it's kind of defeating the purpose. But, right. but if you, if you know, but if I've you had some stuff like, I was eager for though that I was, <laughs> I was on it. I did it yesterday, Damn man. You. I did it yesterday. I was like, well, you know, you think like maybe if you're going away for two or three days and you're like, well, fuck it, I'll just do it now. Yeah. Well, you know, like you, you just if it, it's if you break and shake and it stalls, it's garbage anyway. It's garbage. It doesn't matter if you break and shake on the second day, the fifth day, the tenth day. If it breaks, and you and it stalls, it's fucking garbage. Just throw it away. Unless but you want to do better. People like my college <laughs> advice to be hard written rules. Like uh, yeah, you get two 30%. shakes at twenty five and seventy five percent. But what time good. of the day should I shake? Adam? Yeah, in the morning. <laughs> in the morning when the sun's coming up and the and the in moon's the full up. moon. No, but the these, full moon these, is casting a shadow over your left shoulder. Yes. You probably, you guys, 50% of the uh, the pictures that I get sent are like, does this look contaminated? And it's like... That's um, Reddit, dude. <laughs> Welcome to Reddit. I, I, I don't... And yeah. smell, like, I've heard... I, I go... You can go by smell. If you just... If you're using mason jars, you crack the lid of that mason jar just like a half inch, and it smells like fucking sour, you know, fermenting Obviously, wine or yeah. anything bad. It's garbage. Like if you're when you're trying get, really hard to smell something, then it's good. If if you you you'll know right away when it's bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, is yeah yeah. That, that but like vinegar, your chicken, that kind of vinegar. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like or even chicken. sometimes you can tell the bacteria smell is sort of competing with the mushy smell, and you get almost like a neutral smell. That's yeah. also bad. That's just waiting to become a fermented smell. Yeah. That um, yeah, like a musty kind of smell, yeah. almost yeah. like a. Like if you haven't opened a room for too very long time and it's like that weird like yeah neutral oddly yeah. neutral smell. <laughs> it's it's uh, only the musties that look obviously musty, yeah. questionable that smell hey. though. The, the ones that look obviously good don't smell. Right. It's well, true. And Dave, like... the thing you said, I think it was your first podcast where you talked about why you like popcorn, and that you said it just when it's bad you can just see it more yeah. easily that is absolutely true and the more you grow the easier it is to know earlier when it's worth just tossing you know yeah, like it, oats are ugly like yeah they're ugly even when it's going well there. yes popcorn yes. also is so forgiving i feel like like you can really overhydrate popcorn and have it it's it's popcorn. it's got a wide range of, yeah. of it's, it's, a no it's a nice cream. No prep popcorn before we split. No prep. That's why I like millet so much is because millet is like little teeny itty bitty pieces of popcorn. Yeah. I The millet here. Oh, here's another interesting thing. The millet here is really bad quality. You know, like oh, really? so pop, popcorn is nice because it's food grade, right? Food grade. So, That's like, what I love about it. Yeah. Millet here, they literally sweep millet off the fucking like concrete floor at the factory. It's like they leftover. export. They probably export the good millet, you know. Exactly. So right. you got. It's funny. The shrimp you guys eat in America, you get the good Thai shrimp because they export all the good stuff. We get the shit ones, right. like the the giant Thai prawns that y'all get in the grocery store. I get to eat these little fuckers like that like this, don't yeah. have heads on them. But yeah, they're like a curled. <laughs> They're like the thing that's like literally on the floor of the factory. That's what we eat in Thailand. Y'all, y'all yeah, high so motherfuckers get Yo. all the like big ass like eight inch prawns. Prawn. The prawns, yeah. Prawns, 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 prawns the prawns. And it's funny too. We, we eat a lot of prawns, but out here on the Oregon coast, we don't get prawns. We get bay shrimp, which is a little tiny, tiny, tiny shrimp. That's what we yeah. catch. And I guess we send them all to you. And I'm assuming you catch the prawns and you guys send them all to us. It's all about yeah, what they, people don't have. Yeah. No, you know what? Right. They probably yeah. feed them to the prawns here, like, and then they make bigger. Oh. Bay shrimp and... aren't terrible too. If you get fresh bay shrimp and you like, you know what I like? I like when people make those. It's like a shrimp grilled cheese. It's a shrimp melt, but they take they take mm -hmm. fresh, yeah, they, yeah, they take fresh bay shrimp and they go ahead and mix it with like a little bit of mayonnaise and some and some green peppers and some something. And then they put it with a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah as far as you make me. Seafood it's like getting right. lunch time now. All right, guys. Everybody, everybody here is invited to the Oregon coast to eat seafood with me anytime. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, several people have asked, they, they want you guys to talk about ghetto swabbing. 
I've never Everybody's done this. Everybody's got a honest. different opinion, I feel like, too. It'll be interesting. I, oh, no, I think I think I've you might find Ed be very warm warm to the idea as well. Oh, I'm, Most, I have nothing. I, 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 guess, I have I'm nothing against it. Probably, if anybody. Yeah. I've, I've double dipped before, but does that count? Yeah, I, I genuinely, I think that. <laughs> Did that, you grow fungus afterwards? I like. <laughs> yeah, Candida. Candida albicans. Candida, nice. Candida albicans. Candida, yes, not Candida. candida. I'll, I, I'll say something about uh, ghetto mystery. ghetto swabbing or or yeah, what, what, yeah. I think it's it's I good like, to talk. I don't like to call it the ghetto swab. I like to call it a multi-spore cross attempt. Okay. Because it doesn't come that is the guarantee. best name I've ever heard for it. I like that a lot. But, but now, how do you correct. pronounce that correctly? It's not any I different forgot. from germinating a swab of just a single mushroom. You know, right. you swab you swab a mushroom. It's got multiple spores, and they grow monocarians and they meet and become dicarians. And it's the same thing if you swab two mushrooms. Right. It's still just cubensis spores on a on a swab. So so it's 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 got a pretty high chance of something mating as long as they yep. germinate simultaneously right. and then there's still a reduced chance but still a chance if they if they germinate separately that you might get a, a daimon mating in the mix somewhere True. And, and have to sort it out when it grows in the tub i think that's the secret to it and i think that's why when you're breeding cereal dilution like true confirmed mono mono crosses versus the the i will still call it the ghetto swab just because i don't remember the words you use dave um but I, I think you're right. I think there's more interesting things happening as far as the germination process. And you just said this. Not a lot of people talk about it. I think it is entirely possible that there's so much initial right monokaryotic hyphal growth. And there's it's just a big fucking orgy in there. So what's yeah. going to win? The best genetic wins... And sometimes that will be the cross if it was meant to be. And sometimes it will obviously not be the cross. And sometimes, man, I'm not convinced it's a cross. But then you also look at it and you go, but it doesn't look it? like either of the parents. Yeah. It looks slightly and different then, And somehow. then there's the whole thing where things, things don't show up until right. the next generation, too. Yeah. Right. So, mm, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not that it's like it's, 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 just, it's just a naturalistic approach to breeding. It's yeah. the same as, as yes. what they do outside. That's all it's it is. what they do outside. Exactly. But what you're going to get is you're going to get people that have put a lot of work into doing cereal dilution that are like, I've put all this work into doing all this work to get these two isolated spores together to make one dicarion. So yeah. I don't like the idea that you're just going to stick two things in an aggregation and do it, you know, without any work. Which it can't be done. Right. It's, yeah, it is the yeah, work. It's just you're just doing the work at a different time, and right? Get, and it's what you want. Like, you're Again, being, it's there, there's no way to 100 percent guarantee your work, and that's why that word attempt, I feel like, is so well put in right. there because well, because the you have thing, to do the work after you do the cross. It's it's exactly. when you grow it and you're sorting out the results. That's the work. Right. And, and, the, and know, the truth is, but the thing yeah, is, it's all work. You can uh, never uh, work. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's the it's the work it's the work that you've got to put in afterwards that I think people kind of underestimate. The, these right. people, they I hate to say it, but most people that focus on the mon mon thing, which it seems like I do, but it's only I accidentally started doing it and I just kind of ran with it. Uh, here, there's two issues. You got to verify the two mons. So yep. if I cross a golden halo with an MVP or whatever, how the fuck is it to know my MVP is the real MVP? It might not be. It might be a GT. So I said it's an MVP. Who the fuck am I? I don't know. I got some shit from Sporeworks five years ago. I don't know what the fuck it is. So there's that accountability and that transparency issue. And then, like we all know, that the F2, that's the thing or whatever we want to call it, F, the spores from that initial cross. And that, that initial cross phenotype is going to look like a generic brown cube. Most of them Usually do. Usually it right? is. It's that next generation, and that's where it just blows up. So that's the problem with doing, like, the, the, the double swab or, or whatever, multi-swab cross attempt, MSCA, is that? Um, <laughs> it, it's like, like if you it. don't know. I like it. If, I like it. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's a bit of a, a muska or something, muska. Uh, but you don't know what you're looking for, and if you get a, like, brown cube, you're just like, it didn't work, but it might have worked. Yeah. So, and here's oh, the other right. thing. Oh, right, yes. The other, though, the thing is, 
if you're growing mushrooms and you're trying to mate, breed, cross shit, like, does it really matter if you get an original? Like, if you're running a shoebox and it's the original parental type, is it, like, a loss? Like, I hear people say, like, oh, you're going to waste your time because I grew a tub of MVP. No, it's not a loss. Like it's still it, make a tub it into, of MVP. <laughs> yeah, make it into capsules. For fuck's sake, these people, you know who comes at me with this kind of shit? Is the people who are coming in trying to make money? Sorry, I can yeah, tell. they want the big. They one. want. They want this one that's going to produce the most alkaloids, and this one's going to grow the fastest, and this one that's like least yeah. susceptible to culture, and this one that can grow well in monotubs and yield. And it's like you need to fuck off, dude. Like because you don't care about mushrooms, you don't care about fungus. All you care about is money. So how about you yeah. just fuck off? Go talk to the cannabis people. They know about money, which I know. <laughs> Like, y'all get me excited, man. I'm with you, dude. <laughs> but yeah, when they come at you with that shit about, like, how much yield does it get? What's your ratios? What's your turnaround time? How many days till fruit? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you oh, you, you just got off Shark Tank, huh? Yeah, exactly. Oh, fucking you're a businessman. Bill Gates or fucking Bessos or one of those fucks. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, not me. I love mushrooms. And, you know, that's, and that's, that's me, too. Like, I'm, I'm, I've, I, I do like to have some money, though, like sometimes. Yeah. Because I need it to buy more yeah. mushroom growing supplies. That's but, yeah, but exactly. That's all it's about is just that's all I want the Palette money for. So I, need more mushroom. I just Palette want more mushrooms. Are cheap. Yeah. Well, and you know that you'll get more later. Like, you know, you're making money off this cultigen or that cut or whatever the hell people call it. There's going to be more. That's the thing, you guys. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I said, when I say you guys, I mean the audience. Y'all. We'll make more mushrooms. We'll make more mushrooms. More and more and more. So if I give away every cross, I've got piles. I think I just, Geeky, you got some yesterday. Right? I just uh, got some today, brother. What'd I get? Well, I you claim get that it's Shock DX MVP, but how do I know, Ed? <laughs> I don't. Dude, it could have been an albino know. gumby. How did we really know? Gumby. I just have Dude, swabs I... with spores. That's all Dude, I know. I'm so fucking, <laughs> I'm so fucking that was a out fucking... of my mind. I got that all the ladyboards so swabbing for me. I'm just like, yo, bitch, can you go swab me some of that MVP? <laughs> Get me a drink, right. too. Yeah. Uh-oh. I might have just... No, I mean, I, I don't know. Can I take right. all that back? Man, Nikki, you're fucking, you're fucking provoking me. Bad influence. Bad influence. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but we'll make more, right? Dave's it's gonna it's make true. More. Everybody, make more. everybody, gonna make more. There's no worries, right? We're not There's gonna no run worries. out of that's, that's. I was gonna say that's another thing is that is that people have this this kind of assumption that things are are static, solid things and and like, precious. Melmac is a specific single entity that is just Melmac. Right. And and every time you grow it from spore, it changes a little bit. Yeah. Everything does. So unless you're working with the same master clone culture over and over again forever from slant and restarting it, everything's going to change. Like the varieties that we have now aren't going to be the same as they are like in a couple of years. Just like everybody's like, oh, there's all these new varieties that weren't here a couple of years ago. There's going to be different ones in a couple yeah. more years, you know, yeah. and uh, and I'm I'm happy with whatever they are. Like I'll be sad if I lose something. Like my like when I lost my KSSS, I was heartbroken. Even though it, all it took was like a, a text message and somebody mailed me one back, but 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 other things change, you know. You know, we get attachments to things, and we 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 think the name like if somebody says uh, Phobos or, 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 you know, albino tidal wave, it's going to be a single specific thing. And it's, it's, right. it's kind of just a range of things within that, within that kind of. Arc. For however long it is. For until it isn't it is. anymore. And eventually yeah. it's just going to be like, like my ape that won't come back. It's just yeah. not going to be there anymore. It's going to be something else. Like yeah. you just got to roll with it. And it's also, uh, Ed and I talk about this a little bit, it's also like people, right? Like uh, you go to the bowling alley and you're like, look at that guy, he looks like Uncle Jimmy. So, right, and you get a lot of people, I won't name names, but people get convinced somebody stole this from them or that from them or, you know, and sometimes that is definitely happen happening for sure. But sometimes somebody might have legitimately crossed something else and it turned out to look very similar. 
uh, to you, you, another with, thing. With my slides earlier, you you asked if, if something was the the tat monster, right? Yeah, you know, but thing. it was the ling. It was the it was the albino ling. Yep. Similar look, different yep. different path to get yep. there. Yep. But yeah, it's like two comedians. The guy in New York City can come up with a joke, a timely joke, and then the guy in fucking L.A. can come up with the same joke essentially and get sued. But and, and then one guy's got a, you know, Joe Rogan's fighting fucking whoever he fought over his joke, right? But that guy was stealing jokes. Uh, but, but yeah, it's no, just, I, so there's probably, that, given that we're all growing cubes, there's probably just so many tricks up its sleeve. That's what no, I think. Now, there's but, a lot uh, of tricks, but there, if you start seeing lot. something come back, there's a reason. Well, it's called, I mean, it's called like convergent evolution, you know, there's yeah. a certain reason why there's certain phenotypes, I mean, that they converge because it's probably the most efficient, productive yeah. way to use the environment or the sub or whatever, disperse spores. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I've only, I don't know if there's that many different variations we can do on a standard mushroom, right? <laughs> like, oh, like, I mean, we're doing them for sure, right? I'm trying to push that envelope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting some weird ones. I remember when yeah. literally, I think I said it last time I was on here, but I remember when when El Chaco first came out and it was lightly criticized as like, what, someone's going to take the time to isolate like just, just a, a brown cube. cube. Right. And and to like, I, I swear today, I, I, I mean, off my website, El Chaco is one of like print or swab. It's one of the best sellers. No matter what, we're always having to, to run it or ask Dave for more of it. It's it's yeah. always been amazing. And then what's come from it, like Chocolate Crinkle. Chocolate Crinkle was like, he said it got tested and was like at 2%. I think that was Jordan Jacobs that did the test yeah. for it. And and yeah, I get told all the time. I, I, I Very rarely will I go ahead and do anything but compost a cube. But for the Chocolate Crinkles, they don't even look like cubes. I'll go ahead and... Yeah, I and I've heard that. Yeah, keep those. I know those things are crazy. They're the spiciest. Yeah. But then, but but that's a ten years ago, yeah. though. Ten, ten years, years ago, ago like peeling, variety even. for cubes was was a lot more limited. So I mean, mm. I think, and some people are still thinking like in that same mindset. Well, a cube is a cube. Yeah, made more sense ten years ago than it does now. Right. <laughs> but well, so we were talking about like mutations. Cubes. We were talking about mutations earlier in. And uh, the fruits are really awful for showing off because these are the ones, like I said, Rosie, drop a tub on on the walk over here. <laughs> it was supposed to be an amazing show off. But I have ha I've had this Omni in for – so I've run this Omni from Spore once. It, for a long time, this is an Omni culture that it's been spread around for a long time. And it, it doesn't uh, often produce spores, and this cap has been just obliterated, but you can still see about half of it. Um, and this style of fruit won't produce spores necessarily. And uh, now, so occasionally on a third or fourth flush, if my tub, and it's only when my substrate starts to look really fat, it really starts to just not look like good substrate anymore. I'll get fruits that'll have, and I don't know if you can see on here, but they'll have like traditional, not warped, not curly gills and it'll produce spores. And, and I'll grow ahead. I'd say probably 90% of the tubs of Omni that I grow don't produce spores. They only produce this one style of fruit, and I never see anything else from them. And then probably ten percent of those tubs on like a second or third flush. I don't know if it's a certain, I don't know if it's a, if it's a contam related issue or if it's just always the substrate just looks really fucked by the third flush anyway. But I'll start to get fruits that will produce spore, and I'll be really excited always because I'm like, fuck yeah, those those are the fruits that I'm able to actually swap. But well, uh, maybe it's like maybe it's like at that point it detects that like okay conditions are starting to go downhill yeah. and it's time for us to move on. It has no other choice if it's going to go ahead and continue generations of, of growth. Other than yeah, who the, who knows the genetics? The basidia could take longer to form. Uh, the I mean, there's a bunch of things. But there's so be. many. It could be on a different timeline for spore maturation and all that stuff like. Like soil bacteria and 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 yeah. fungi, yep. like there's just so many weird relationships that we just can't really like pin down specifically, right. like what influences behaviors. Yeah, 
Um, Ed, you just had where you grew some squatty uh, iceberg on a first flush. Second flush, they were a little bit taller and produced a boatload of spores. Yeah, now they're back to squats. And now they're back to squats. <laughs> so that, 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 that swabs Welcome to that the growing made, mushrooms. <laughs> the, yeah, the swabs that I made from the tall phenos, I did those in a multi-spore. And, and uh, I did do a little bit of like isolation just to get it like cleaned up a bit, thinking that I would get another tall pheno, and now they're back to squats. Right. <laughs> and I don't know why, because, yeah, the IG video or reel I posted yesterday, I uh, I don't know what the hell. I think it's epigenetic viruses prions something like that i don't know what's going on but i've had it happen with stargazer this is why i go back to the cannabis people because i know those fuckers got a lot of money <laughs> like they have money to fund this research and so they pump millions of dollars into this shit and they're running clones so they've got a, a warehouse with 500 you know a thousand clones in it right and if they get like a five or ten percent loss in yield from their you know purple haze or white widow or fucking bubblegum Kush strawberry banana shit or whatever apples um like that's a big that's a lot of money for them it's money you know yeah. for us it's just a tub we toss and like make another one but like i'm not too bothered like oh i got iceberg squats whatever fuck people whatever they'll like them and <laughs> uh like but when you're talking about production levels oh yeah once it's the levels, the, the, like, the big leagues they one percent they they want to fix one percent loss in yield well why the hell is that happening that's why in agriculture everything's GMO. Yeah, they want that as predictable yeah. and stable and pest resistant and yeah, all that good stuff. I wonder if we can ever. I mean, does anybody? I'm sure there's people out there, but probably none of us. Is that what people aspire to? They just want like a mono, like a monoculture in the agricultural sense. Like they just want a hundred acre field of corn. Is that I mean, what people but, want? Like some they, people want that. I don't know. Some people, hundred hundred acres of P plus. <laughs> They'll mess yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm on well, here, for here, here, I'll... Yeah. Uh... Well, it's good if you've got a consistent, like, a lot of the people here, I'll send them my list of, like, let's just say 40 or 50 things. And they're always like, uh, do you have B plus? <laughs> like, I didn't even put it, I didn't even put it on the list. GT. GT is the standard one. If you watch, like, a double blind, like, oh, you know, yeah. YouTube video, the five top Cubensis strains. GT has pleasant visuals and, <laughs> yeah. you know, these people make this shit up. They've oh, yeah. had these, like, detailed descriptions. There's a pe some people here who do a little more volume than me, and they've got detailed, like, descriptions, right. like A4 sheets of, like, B-plus versus Blue Mini. Well, uh, Blue Mini, don't get me started. Uh, GT versus <laughs> B-plus versus this, right. and they're, like, distinct. They'll even give them little bar, like, ratings, like, three out of five visual, four out of five auditory. Oh, I know. I'm like, where are you guys getting this shit from? Like, you're just making this shit up. Like, I don't understand it. Like, but that's what you got to do to, you know, get more product out the door, I guess. So, and that's what yeah. sells. It kind of saddens me, to be honest, because I'll, I'll, I'll be telling my friend, I'm like, dude, I got this new, like, true albino Cambodian. It's a little bit different from the Avery's. And, and I'm all excited about it. And he's like, uh, can I get a GT? Are you out of GTs, I, though? I right. Know. You just fucking two hours ago, he's like, fucking goddamn. But I mean, I was just talking to uh, my buddy Jeff, who who uh, babysat my toke for a while while I was on vacation, and we were talking about uh, uh, IPA beer. And I was like, yeah, you know, like if you know the origin of IPAs, you know, it was just like to transport beer. Maybe the sailors drank it and all that, but. Uh, and then my wife was like, well, why, why do you think people started drinking IPA? And I was like, it's just, it's got more alcohol in it. <laughs> so it's like just the potency game wherever you go. Yeah. Right? Hey, heroin wasn't enough. Fentanyl wasn't enough. <laughs> right? Fentanyl's not enough. Now it's got to be car fentanyl. Not, now car fentanyl's Whoa. nothing. Now it's going to be that. whatever new they synthetics got like, out. They got like 200. Like a There's like... that's made for T-Rexes. Yeah, it's not enough. Oh, I mean... Came when I was nuts. young, you had to actually smoke your joint or your blunt, right? Right? You, you were either this in or that, this in. Now you're dabbing and waxing and shattering and, you like know, the dad. concentration of this Broken shit is oil out right at the boofer. fucking rageous. Like, I do, uh, Joe Rogan was talking about it. He was like, you know, it's not even like smoking weed anymore. 
It's like a massive DMT psychedelic experience. Just smoke it, it weed. It's totally well, different though. Like I, yeah. I, I like I like to do a good dab, but it totally doesn't compare with hitting a joint. Like if you yeah. hit a joint with some flour, you get a totally different, totally different eye different. Yes. from what you like. The dab is intense, but it's almost yeah. like it's too clean. Yeah, like, yeah. it's no, just hundred percent. You don't get like, the heavy eyelids from from yeah. a dab. You get that from smoking like a. a and yeah. I can go ahead and take dabs for a week and then smoke one bowl and go whoa. Yep. Like, yeah. It's the Terps, bro. It's the Terps, man. It is the Terps. It, you, it is the Terps. He's trying to make fun of it, but it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. No. It is the no, Terps. It, it is. is. It's the odd. Dude, I watch a lot of those Canna Cribs videos. Like, if I'm not watching videos about mushrooms, I'm watching videos about cannabis. In Thailand? Wait, I thought you were watching videos about that. tulip breeders. I, I want to ask, those, what those is the two. situation, cannabis, Thailand? What is it? What is the situation? It's all legal here. There's like literally like like in Bangkok. I live like about twenty miles. He buys it by the Bangkok. crate. That's so. Oh awesome. yeah. Oh dude, I got like a half kilo for like fifty bucks. It's yeah, like they I, sell it on Facebook. I know Facebook. a guy out there. But there's good shit of... too. They got they got every range. Like so, it's they've got stuff that's twenty bucks a gram, thirty bucks a gram. But they also sell like brickweed for like I don't know. It works out to like maybe like. Do you buy it legally now? Stuff. Like, oh fuck yeah! It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Crazy. Like, dude, I know guy. You guys ever heard of the the the? It's, I can't remember what it was before the WWE, but you guys ever heard of the fighter Bob Sapp? Yep. So mm -hmm. Bob Sapp forever ago contacted me. He's a he's a what is it? Pride. Pride was what they what was a, like a, a organization. It's that a used big to Japanese fight. fighting organization. Yep. Yeah. And so he used to fight for Pride. He's a very large Mike Tyson. He actually is is in a feud with Mike Tyson, always in a feud with Mike Tyson, but he's a very Mike Tyson-esque looking uh, African-American man, very large, very muscular, and he contacted us forever ago because of the cactus relation we had, and another martial mm. arts expert that also collected cactus that knew him, and he's in Thailand, and he's working on opening up some sort of like mushroom, re mushroom retreat upon the, he says in the next five years, the government in Thailand is working out some sort of a psilocybin program, and, uh, yeah, it's been super, super interesting contacting them about it. But he just, yeah, he was just telling me not that long ago that, that cannabis has just recently changed there. And he is entertaining trying cannabis for the first time. Uh, it was, yeah, last July they made it. Um, and they yep. were already super involved. recently. It's kind of mirrored. Uh, well, it's strange. Some laws basically follow the U.S. And sometimes they're a little more progressive here. Like the, all, the, all the legacy growers, they were ready to go, man. So, like, the day cannabis became legal here, you know, people always smoke it, but, and they never really bother you, but the day it became legal, like, dudes were selling, like, six foot high, like, in bloom plants, and there was, everybody was joking on Facebook, like, wow, that, that dude grew, like, a six foot plant overnight, full flower, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's kind of funny, it was just made legal, like, 24 hours ago, and now they're, like, weed shops. With like, <laughs> dude, I was in the back. I was taking a piss a couple days ago, and there was a guy standing next to me pissing at the urinal with like two kilos of buds, like trying to hold them with his dick in his hand. <laughs> it's just like these giant like bags of buds, like this, Huge. like probably like I don't know five or six thousand dollars worth of buds, and he's just like it's like no big deal. Like you see people roll up literally he with like garbage bags, and they're just like yeah. carrying them up to the dispensary because. <clears throat> They can do all the banking and stuff here, so it's all legit. And the government, of course, is getting their cut, which is, like, yeah. you know, brilliant for them. And everybody smoked it anyways. Like, it wasn't a big fucking surprise, you know. That, that Thailand is all about how can they extract money from foreigners. And your friend or whoever's doing it, I, I get approached by a lot of foreigners. They think they're going to come here and compete with uh, Thai businessmen. Let me tell you right now, that's a, if there's any white dudes out there who are, like, I'm going to go to fucking Thailand and get rich open at a dispensary. Think about that for a second. You know what will happen? No, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what will happen. You'll get your legs broken and you'll end oh, up in yeah. a fucking ditch. Oh, yeah. Like, you think these people are fucking around? We're talking about millions of dollars. They will break your fucking legs and stab you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I watched The Hangover and that was in Las Vegas, so I can only imagine what fucking happens in Bangkok. It, it's Thailand. not date. No, dude, it's the same thing. You fuck with people's money yeah. and yeah. they're going to fuck you up, man. Yeah. It's the same thing. We might be talking about a $10 sports swab. But that's the other thing. You don't fuck with, as the, I, there's another podcast, go, don't fuck with their bag, right? 
Right. There's only two things guys care about in life, and that's pussy and money. That explains everything. <laughs> all right? It's true. Sorry for any female middle listeners out there, but that's all. If you want to know what drives... I, there's other things that I care about. Pussy it. and money. Yes. Mushrooms. Mushrooms and cacti. They're, they're, and, yeah. There are other I things, guess. but those are big thematic yeah, high points. They're, they're sure. large. There's, there's people that prioritize other things. I know people specifically in the mushroom community that I would say are on the spectrum enough that money and sex are not even on their fucking radar as far as their top priorities. <laughs> I know people whose top priorities are insects and plants. No, but mm. I'm talking about no, I'm talking about in a business context. No, you're talking I'm about in, talk- in, 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 you're talking about 95 to 97 percent of the population. And I'm being a little bit facetious. No, 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 I agree. I, I get what you're saying. I'm too. not. I'm not saying. But I'm. I'm sorry if you're a white dude who's grown up in America and your idea is to come to Thailand and get rich off the cannabis industry. No, that's dumb. You're the kind. Just stay home. Just stay. <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid. And you're gonna get your fucking self stabbed. You're yeah. gonna make somebody really sad tonight, Ed. You probably somebody got had their somebody you just paid out. for their he's, business he's plan. Right now canceling a ticket to Thailand. He's like, you well, should. You shit. Should. Yeah. Dude, he's I like, got I five was, months. I was heading down there to talk about some THC flower to. I got five people in my DMs right now talking this shit to me. I'm like, dude, just stop. Just Honestly, stop. like you'd probably have about just as much luck coming from America and going to Thailand and, and saying you're going to come fight in Lumpini Stadium at Muay Thai. Exactly. Uh, yeah. They're, they're going to fuck you up. These guys are going to fuck That's their, their game. Fucking shins. That's like, they're going to fucking destroy you. Yeah. Yep. Like, these people yeah, start what, fighting what when they're like little kids. Like, when, when they have, if you ever watch one fighting championship, the Asian, the big Asian martial arts thing, they do a lot of MMA and Muay Thai and, and kickboxing. Yep. But they'll have these matches where they're like, Oh, here's the here's the guy. He's a he's a he's a two time champion Muay Thai fighter from America. He's got a record of twelve and two, and he's gonna fight this Thai guy that's got a record of four hundred wins and like sixty seven losses. Like this guy's had lost more fights than you've had meals in your life, right. and he's got a winning record on top of that. Like you're not gonna win. Like these guys are like made out of wood. Oh, do they start like uh, kicking coconut trees with their yeah. hands? Dude, like their like their kick, bones, they boys. low grade rebuild their b- whole bone structure. They they can their bones break at like double the, 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 the Newton force that everybody else's does. Like, yeah, you can't. You're an ER. You're like you're like, I know how strong bones can be. Yeah, they, yeah. Not not your shins though. Not white boy shin bones aren't very strong. Yeah. Now, have you ever seen a fight where somebody kicks somebody else's leg and their leg oh, just wraps around it? Just wraps right around yeah. it. Yeah. Well, here's Bro. the other. My my 80 pound girlfriend beats the shit out of me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like this whole this whole idea about passive Asian women. Fuck that. That ain't Thailand, man. That might be like fucking Japan or some shit. Not Thailand. If you come into Thailand thinking like I'm gonna get me a passive little Asian girl, and she fuck that wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong, wrong. Ed's like, tried you. to leave Thailand for 14 years, but he's been <laughs> held captive ever since. Oh, dude, I got oh, I've had knives <laughs> thrown at me. No, I don't know. She let me. This I got a lot of these stories. I probably should be putting on the air, but I tried to leave once, and then I forgot my phone, and I opened the door to go back in to grab my phone, and. As I opened the door, a knife flew at me. She was trying, and then she wow. was like, "Oh, I was trying to throw it at the door, not you." It's a fucking eleven-inch chef knife. <laughs> fucking barely, it caught the fucking the the side of the door. Luckily, not my fucking gut. She's like, "I was aiming for the door. I didn't know you were gonna come back in." It's like, well, you still threw a fucking knife at me. Wow, that's hardcore. Uh, that's that, that's hardcore, oh. Ed. Oh, that dude, that's just the start of. Yeah, submissive Asian. That's women. another YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. tell that to no, any Asian woman. You, <laughs> you can't just have a. You can't just have a, a like an a, a, like an Ed's dramatic romantic segment. Yes, <laughs> on another no, that, channel. That, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the rookie mycologist move. I'm gonna wait till this channel is very substantial, and then I'm gonna sit back one day and go, "What would my audience also like to talk about?" And no, hopefully it's, uh, it's dramatic domestic violence scenarios. Oh, dude, it's of various here. people. Yeah. No, the funny <laughs> thing is, if you're getting your ass kicked by your girlfriend and you like, oh, if the neighbors or right. security mm-hmm. hear it, 
They'll laugh at you. I was in a hotel in Pattaya, which is like notorious, with my girlfriend. She threw a beer bottle at me. It shattered up. This was like another girl. This They're is all current violent. girlfriend? Uh, no, this was years ago. I've years been here ago. for 18 years. Yeah. I've been here, but it, it still happens. The current the girlfriend. The cur gir current girlfriend doesn't assault you, right? Oh no, she beats a fuck. No, like, dude, right she's now. Like I think the three of us are prepared to have like an intervention with you. Intervention. You We're gonna save you. We're, We're gonna, gonna come here. Yeah, we will save you right now. Everyone this wants part... to. Call me no, if you part... want Ed to get saved. <laughs> I, I, I would like. We're gonna start a GoFundMe. We're gonna extract. He might, he might bring some of it on himself, though. He like, might. That's and... what I was just gonna say. This is part of the reason I quit drinking because I was getting my ass kicked it. too it's much. Like, I can't get hard if I don't have a knife to me. Us. Dude, I deserved every bit of it. I deserved every bit of it. I'm surprised she didn't go further. No, but this is like common here. Like if the police come and they say, and you'll be like, "Hey, my friend, my girlfriend's beating me up," they will literally fucking laugh at you. Right. They'll be like, "Hi, hey, you fucking pussy!" Yeah. Like, <laughs> like hey, your your girl, your eighty pound girlfriend is beating your ass. You dumb white motherfucker! Get the fuck out! Stop <laughs> wasting our like. They will literally laugh at you. They'll be like, why, the, why are you wasting our time? Oh, you got a mushroom grow? Yeah, fuck that shit, too. They're like, call us when somebody gets murdered. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Unless they were trying to open a dispensary, in which case they were yeah. dispensable. Well, yeah. you you know, you can spend uh, these people that are like, oh, fuck the police, blah, blah, blah. Wrong attitude. How about you work with the police? Yeah. Because, like you just said, see, this is the thing. You, Sometimes people come at things with the wrong angle. You know, what What could be a problem for us could be a solution later on. You know, I mean, something back a little bit lighter, you know, a lot Deep of people. Thoughts. Do mushrooms, I said, I was thinking last night, you know, mushrooms have no longer become the problem. I don't worry about getting busted. That they're, they're not the problem, they're the solution, right? I was just talking about this, last, like amongst us, how many people we will we educate and provide spores with and maybe give a little bit even today in the last three hours whatever four hours we have probably put seeds in people or spores in people's head and there's going to be somebody out there be like wow that was really cool i'm going to get a fucking swab i'm going to try to like yeah. maybe i'll spend a hundred they're gonna they'll be i bet from this podcast alone there'll be a hundred new growers just just in the spirit of that, I'll just go ahead and do that quick reminder in case anyone didn't catch my lot last podcast. I haven't said this, but if anybody ever wants a spore print or a spore swab and and they aren't able to afford one, they're able to go ahead and shoot me an email at the, the email that's found on my website. I'm going to say it wrong if I try or a message on Facebook. And I'm not going to go ahead and let you go online and pick out uh, the, your top five favorite genetics. But if, if you want to go ahead and start something and the only thing stopping you is the, the cost of the printer swab, I'll send you some stuff for free. All of the time, we'll end up looking back, find the flow hood and seeing 20, 30 swab sets that are unlabeled sitting back there taped up. And, and there you go. those are mystery swabs. Boom. <clears throat> Albino mystery, yeah. baby. If, if that's the next 1,200 for... gram fruit exactly. right there waiting if, to happen. No, and that's how that kind of stuff happens. If Susie on accidentally sets a bag of prints off in the wrong spot and we're not 100% confident on what that is, those 35 yeah. to 75 prints get labeled as mystery prints. And like I said, we're always willing to go ahead and send out a, uh, any, any spores to anyone that wants to start this sort of thing. And is really worried. They don't want to go ahead and spend money on a genetic without, you know, just learning how to do things. We, we have no issue with that. That's awesome. Not I'm with you. I, I agree. Because for every one person that is actively growing and using psilocybin-containing mushrooms, there's got to be 50 to 100 that's sitting there just waiting for a reason, debating yep. in their head trepidatious yeah. concerned cautious whatever and yeah a failure box right. nothing to make and if yeah if you if you, the difference between you buying your agar plates to start your first print is you know you only have 25 bucks and you're either buying agar or print yeah. we'll, we'll send you a print yeah you just need a little nudge some people yeah, just need that nudge. one little yeah need a little <laughs> nudge that's how i nudge dude i nudge like or that or you just buy pre-made agar plates or whatever, you know, yep. like if, yeah. you, if you got like a hundred bucks and you're like, ah, it's a good hobby and you know, whatever it's a hundred bucks, it's not that much. Just like smoke a little less weed that week. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. You know, no, I started with, I started everything with, I bought like a couple, we, 
we started our whole little grow with 300 bucks. We bought spores off of uh, Spore Works, and we bought like some beginner spore syringe pack. And I wouldn't go back and even recommend this. I, I'd say go less than this. But we bought that. We bought a big tote to make a still air box out of. We bought cans of a uh, hominy. It's this like big Mexican corn. Everybody knows what that is probably. I don't know why mm -hmm. I explain it. We bought cans of hominy that I just dumped out. I was terrible back then. Nowadays, I would have cooked the hominy. Back then, I just dumped it out and used the cans to melt giant holes. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, we melted the holes, and we made the still air box, and, and we made agar from deli cups that we ordered yeah. from. We used to use webstrant.com, <clears throat> order the, the, the full-sized soup containers. We made no, uh, no prep where you'd pour them and then pressure cook the whole dish as is wrapped in foil, and and we started everything for like 300 bucks and we grew off that $300 setup for like without spending any more money for a really long time. Just, you know, and, and we started, we didn't ever start BRF. We started just straight from spore. And I, the only thing I would do different now is I wouldn't buy five syringes worth of spores that are labeled as beginner spores because back then I just believed anything online. And I believe that, you mm -hmm. know, GT and B plus and PESYN and Ecuadorian were the easiest to grow cubes in the goddamn world. And now I realize that most most varieties, most printing varieties grow the same speed. And yeah. realistically, there's a lot of varieties nowadays that you can go ahead and start from spore and, and get the same result in the same amount of time. Melmac are pretty fast these days. You can go ahead and grow a Melmac and get just as good a result as starting with a, a B plus spore. There's not necessarily easier. No but dude, these days, people go straight to it. I can't tell you... How many people are like, yeah, I just, you know, hey, can you look at this tub? And, oh, cool, what varieties did you start with? Oh, Yeti and uh, Tap Black Cap. Nice yeah. call. And no, and no, and, and there is, yeah, there is an intermediate difference at some point. And a lot of it's not even necessarily the difference in the, like, the skill level you need to have. It has to do with more, like, a difference in the yield and and uh, your, your tolerability with it. Like, I have. Sure. I think a lot of people just have an issue growing something that's going to go ahead and result in just some interesting looking phenos. A lot of people, when they go to them, don't have the idea. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get something that looks cool that I can take pictures of. A lot of people are like, I want to get a lot of magic mushrooms for right. me to have in my hands, and, and I get that. That's that's a desirable trait for mushrooms, but I've lost that entirely. I've just gotten to this point where I forget that people are even after that and. And I look at something and I'm like, no, dude, I'm like, you're not getting it. Like, yeah, mushrooms are fucking everywhere. Like, I'll eat them. They grow in my fucking yard. I'll eat them when I want to. But look, this thing looks fucking crazy. This looks right. like it has a butthole that swallowed another mushroom. And I'll be like, that's, right. you know, that's the coolest thing ever. And I hyper focus on that. And I forget that a lot of people are like, I'll get that all the time. I'll be like, so this isn't a big yielder. And I'll be like, well, no, but no, it's. But it looks like a butthole ate a mushroom, are you not? But now, so yeah. I'm going to tell you this. I think there is, it's already happening, but it's going to continue to be way more significant. Is, you know, back when Dave started growing, Ed was growing back in, you know, early college years. I mean, if you were a grower, you were a seller. And if you were growing, no. you were probably... <laughs> No, I didn't pay for my college loans with magic mushrooms. <laughs> that was illegal. That didn't happen. I mean, shit. Anyway. No. So, right, so the, the culture, the early shroomery culture, was a type of person that had a specific, narrow-focused reason why they were growing mushrooms. Yeah, that is, that is true. That I'm telling you guys, focused, and I'm right? sure you guys already know this, but I'm telling the audience, that is radically changing. You are going to have grandmas you are going to have retired dudes that don't do, use any other drugs you are going to have every type of person from every walk of life going i started watching this podcast or i started listening to this guy on his youtube channel or i joined a facebook group and you know i think i'm going to try to grow some mushrooms I'll tell and they they're just they just want to have the experience but they don't want to go buy drugs yeah they're nope, comfortable growing them they don't want to go find the person they have to find to buy them right. and that well, is specifically what i'm here for are those people yeah. i want to teach those people exactly. 
how to grow mushrooms because I know that for every 10 people that I can get to try it, one or two of them are going to fucking love growing these things. And it's going to be their new hobby. Yeah, and oh, one more thing. You guys out there, stop worrying about the fucking cops giving a shit if you right. order spores. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I remember true. 30 years ago, I was so terrified, like, oh my god, I had my, my multi-spore syringes, and I'm yeah. like, oh fuck, oh fuck. Like, I'm like, running to my bedroom. The, the and tape like, on fucking... the package was broken. <laughs> right. No, dude, I can't. Yeah, you guys remember when this podcast started? Before we get too far away from this old person the, talk, Versus I mean, where the podcast is now. No, it's funny, because in Oregon, things are just starting to get legal a couple years ago, and there's a certain area, there's a stretch from, like, Long Beach, Washington to, I'd say, Tillamook, where azarazins grow and they're thick. And I think, I'll go ahead and shout this out, I think I finally was able to convince Dave this year to come on down and forage, and we're going to go ahead and get some cool, good, oh, yeah. hopefully get some cool content this year, and Dave's going to come hunt awesome. azarazins with me and the crew. But we'll, we'll see about that. But, but there's this small stretch of probably 100 to 200 miles where they're really concentrated at. And I'll tell you what, one of the coolest – one of my favorite places, I'm never going to give away any location, but there's a public park that I go to in that area that uh, my kid will play at the park and I'll play fetch with the dog while I kind of go through the mushrooms and, you know, go through the grass right. and pick all the mushrooms and whatnot. And last year or two years ago, right after 109 passed, an old, like 90-year-old lady out walking her dog stops and she goes, are you boys picking the newly legal mushrooms. And wow, that like, was good, dude. I like. I'm impressed. You like that? I Thank you. I, 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 I like might prefer you to always talk to me in that voice from now on. <laughs> well, you're gonna get a lot of more voice messages. <laughs> you better preach it. Um, but no, and she was so interested. We we took her for half a second. And we were like, yeah, like here. We showed her an area. We even showed her a spot where some pins were, where she was gonna be able to come back and grab them. And she was explaining. She said. I have so much interest in these, but I just for so long thought that it, w it wasn't allowed until, you know, it just thought it was something that I had to worry about. And she goes, until basically, and it's just this like this new idea of people like waking up to this new idea of, 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 the, of, of being able to take mushrooms. But she was like, until I saw a billboard with a magic mushroom on it, which they had one in that town, she said, I never thought about it in a million years and and after she had seen that she had a friend who gave her a capsule and she had tried it and she said she had the best day she'd had in forever and and so she was so interested that she stopped what she was doing and she she looked through the grass with us she couldn't even bend over I, I doubt she came back and picked any we gave her a handful but i always thought that that was so insanely crazy and like a, a new generation is taking a look at everything. Everybody is. Yeah. There's that, that. There's like it's a just a big paradigm shift. Yeah. Yep. People always talk about like the awakening of of the the psychedelic age or whatever being in the 70s. It's it's right now. It's yeah. right now that people are like starting to look at things and go like, whoa, like these are a viable option for real issues that people are facing every single day. Man, at work, I I talk to old people. Oh, you're having anxiety and depression. You're old. Your husband passed away. You're 80 years old. You're worried about death now because you're in that final phase of your life. Have you read anything about how people are using magic mushrooms? Oh, are they? Oh, I remember those. But the, even the attitude of the old people, for the most part, I mean, super religious zealots and whatnot maybe are, are not there yet. But yeah. yeah, like your average person, it, it, more it's definitely more. happening. Yep, dude, the, bi the bingo halls in America are going to be a very different They're going to get real cool, In like dude. five years. <laughs> Bunch of fucking like 80-year-old grandmas dosed out of their mind. Be like, yo, man, they'll be like shifting bag. They'll be like a fucking like 100-gram bag of PE like scooting down the table. Like, hey, pass them on. Like, here's some deviled eggs and fucking PE and uh, some fucking apes for you there. Like, pass them on. Paula Dean's going to start having her cooking exactly. Cooking yeah. suicide exactly. with Paula Dean. Do Martha. See, Martha yeah. in her damn tent, she fucking oh. convinced us all. Yeah. <laughs> Little Martha tent. Yeah. Martha will be ready. That's, that is hilarious, though, to imagine, like, the next, like, uh, old lady on the bus you might see might be fucking dosed out of her mind. Like, oh, <laughs> shit. You're like, man, I think that lady's got, like, Alzheimer's. It's like, fuck no, dude. She's on a heroic, like, 10-gram dose. You know, Maybe Martha... she'll turn in... 
if Martha Stewart starts making Martha tents, they'd be pretty fancy, but they'd probably oh, cost a lot. They would be very expensive, but they would be tastefully done. And Snoop Dogg would probably hop on that and promote yeah, them for yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, hot box the Martha tent. Ooh. Yeah. There you go. Double. Dual use. <laughs> yeah. Dual use. Yes. Nothing better than a nice hot box. We used to. I've never used one. I haven't used one probably in, in five, six years, but at least when I, when I was, you know, younger, my favorite way to smoke was with the gas mask, you know? You put the gas mask on with the bong that's connected, and, and you smoke. Geeky looks like you. And then when you take it off and you've got that resin I'm a simple ring, man, dude. That resin you know? ring around I'm a simple nose man. And yeah, mouth. you would smell yeah. terrible. Your face would just yeah. smell yeah. like you smoked yeah, sticky as hell. Like, yeah, yeah. But, but it was the... <laughs> It was the move. What is that? Is that some cannabis? This is a menu. Yeah, this was like t- I was asking a guy about. Holy shit! Yesterday. Yeah, you guys have See, it down there, huh? That's from one dispensary. I don't know if you guys can read that, but like their naming thing here, we think we got a lot of cultures and names or whatever. This is just one dispensary. There's like four or five. I don't know how well you. Can I like how AK forty sevens on there. That's an older strain. Mommy oh, they've Dick, got. They've Blueberry. got hundreds. They've got hundreds, know. thousands of them. Do they banana they come Kush, up with names? All the banana strains are fire. Banana Kush, banana anything. Dude, but this is all one head. This is see one how we did that, guys. We came full circle. We came back to bananas. Do you see that? Bananas. We came back to. Bananas. Oh, and, and by the way, that's that's like three dollars worth of weed. Yeah. The, yeah. So I'm. I live in a comparable. Make butter I, later. I live in Oregon, where right now I think like a quality ounce of cannabis is probably between thirty and 65 dollars depending on if you like want to go to a place that's open or closed at a certain hour right you know so cannabis is extremely cheap here and it's 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 getting ready to be even crazier oil is extremely cheap here yeah. tomorrow i'm gonna end up grabbing a little bit of oil and i think realistically i'll probably pay like 110 to 125 dollars an ounce for pre- premium live wow. resin just because of the, the the market's retarded right now over on the West Coast, it's just yeah. and it, it's, it's gonna bottom eventually. It's happened here already, just since last July, because it went a hundred percent legal, yep. and there was all these legacy growers just waiting for that fucking law to pass, ready to move. Dude, shit has dropped. I got a friend who bumped. God, she put about forty thousand dollars into a grow, and she can't even sell her shit now. Like I she can't it. sell it. Like nobody will buy it. Unless you've it's got like, like super news up, like that's all old stuff. That's probably a bag from like they printed that bag probably six months ago, and probably all of those strains are probably not even what they have now, because it's again it's like marketing, you know. I mean, I know we can go into different weed strains, but that's one shop. What is there twenty five right. strains on there? I can literally walk out my front door and buy two hundred different strains of cannabis. They're all indica and sativas, and they got different right. terp profiles and whatnot. But to be honest, I asked the dude here. I was like, "Hey, man, does this got any like ruderalis? Like, is it an auto flower, or whatever?" And he was just looked at me like, "What the fuck is ruderalis?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm like, yes, dude, no. no." He was like, "Um," and I was like, "Well, how do you get like a 73% sativa and like a 27% indica? Like, how does that work with Mendelian genetics? <laughs> you know, how the fuck do you get 27% sativa?" And he was like, what the fuck is meant? What? <laughs> Dude, you're going to get fully yeah. demonetized now. I've swore so, like 20 times. I just showed weed. Where's my dab rig? It's four hours. Where's, in, my, I, crack, where's my crack pipe? I don't think the dab rigs get you demonetized. No. I dab in all of my... It's I the think swearing just... in the first five minutes. Yeah. No one the, is going to watch four hours about. into us. Four hours into us, like, honestly, like, I have a hard time being here. Like, no one else is going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. So, okay. So, here's no, no, here's how it is. Possible. At the peak, we had about 315 people, and we still have 234 people. It's insane. That's insane. Yeah. 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 So, yeah but they're not necessarily the, there. I remember they're the just, last time I was on just, here, you mentioned that we hit the, the high on lives. Did we hit that this time? The, the people might I, still man. have us on their screen, but they're asleep. Like I was going to say, some people might have fallen asleep at this point. You, yeah, but you don't here, know. And they're dedicated. And those people, you know what? We appreciate yes. you. Yes. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I forgot. I was going to do something. I want to do a giveaway. So if oh, anybody's right. tuned Hello. in, now I can do something. I can do a giveaway. Uh, I'm going to give away... Uh, I'm going to go pee. Uh, a shirt. <laughs> I made a t-shirt. Oh, yes. Let's That's see the right. shirt. Yep. 
I want to win it too. I get to enter. This is my. All right, here, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna pull it down just so I, I'm gonna take me off just so people really can see this cool. I'm trying to get it, trying to get it lined up here. I got mushroom, mushroom shirt. All right, now what's on his tongue there, Dave? Uh, uh, he's got, he's got. It's a, it's a little. Uh, it's a breath mint. It's a little piece of micropore tape. It's a little piece of micropore tape. I like yeah, it. Yeah, he just got just a little a little piece of micropore tape on his tongue there. That's, that's a dope awesome. Here, so, what size? Hey, that's an that's an old grower's trick. That's an old uh, uh, superstition that if if you put a piece of micropore tape on your tongue when you're spawning the bulk, it, it's good luck. Okay, so I got this shirt. Uh, let's see. I don't want to do a number of one to ten though. There's too many people here still. Let's do. Oh a, yeah, there were a lot of people. It, you could do alphabet. I'll do, you a, could a, do a trivia question. Oh, okay. I like it. All right, guys. So get ready. Dave's giving away a t-shirt. Uh, I'm assuming continental United States. We're not going international on this. Uh, I'll, I'll ship it anywhere in the world. I don't care. Dave will ship yeah. anywhere, guys. Yeah. Croatia, yeah, no, that should Ukraine. Be a People that are like, I'll give something away, but I won't pay seventeen dollars instead of three dollars are lame that's a state well i'm lame because i i gave away a sterilizer one time and it got shipped to europe it price. cost me 65 bucks to ship yeah. it that's different than that's different than a shirt or yeah, shirt shirts light shirt is light, yeah. light. I already know. That's right. 17 right there okay uh let me think um i gotta come up with a trivia question now for my you for do my, uh, i think all right so the uh the trivia question uh I am so ready. To okay, hear okay, what this okay. Is this will be, be a, like a wombat trivia. Ooh, okay, ooh. wombat trivia. When I How first started growing know? mushrooms, okay. Oh. When I first started growing mushrooms, what grain did I use? Ooh. And I think you said this on the podcast. I sure did. This is making me wish because one I guy fun guy got it already. One guy fun guy got it already. Brown rice for the win. Uh, one guy fun guy brown rice. Okay, one guy fun guy's got to contact Geeky. With Just get a name. hold of me. Get a hold of Geeky through the podcast here, and then Geeky will get it to me. And we and have I'm to make YouTube's. That's I need to know. I need, need to know a size time. too. I need a size. I need a size need and a size. an address, and we'll get you a shirt. If you're like me, one size does not fit all. But you know what, guys? Brown rice is awesome. Brown mm. rice is. It gets a bad rap because of the hate against the Uncle Ben bags, and the hate on the Uncle Ben bags is because much of the mushroom community was established by people that wanted to teach people how to grow, so they would buy spores from them. And yeah. so you have to be dependent on me for knowledge and you have to do things my way so I can make money off you. So right. something yeah. easy like Uncle Ben's like, now I don't have to learn from you. I don't have to yeah. go through all these steps. I can just grab some shit off Sporeworks and stick it in a bag. Yep. It's not the best, but it does work. Right. Yep. But the rice itself isn't bad. It's the it's the no, spores to grain that's the fault. Yeah, part if you, went ahead and, if you wanted to go ahead and spring for LC and do Uncle Ben's, like I bet you you'd have a really, really, really at high that point. It's just very expensive yeah. because you can yeah. buy yeah. dry brown rice and cook it for a lot cheaper. I think the appeal right. there might be people grabbing Uncle Ben's on food stamps. Do you know an Uncle Ben's bag? <laughs> the Uncle Ben's bag. Or you right? go to the yeah. dollar store and get those one dollar. Yeah, like. Mm -hmm. Even That's at real. a dollar a piece, though, you're paying a dollar for literally a half a cup of rice. That is very yeah, true. It's crazy. Like it's such a little amount of rice. Yep. No, you're right. So, so I mean, yeah, I, what I and I didn't do the Uncle Ben bags because they hadn't been invented yet. I was I was actually cooking the rice and and sterilizing it in the PC and all that. But Back but the, the rice itself is a fantastic grain. It grows well. Uh, if it works for BRF, why wouldn't it work as a grain itself? And that's yeah. actually how I used to do it. Was I did a cake style grow like PF Tech. But with whole rice, I was just cooking whole rice cakes in little jars and taking them out and setting them on the perlite. Yeah, it works. Uh, but somebody mentioned like so on the idea of rice, don't use white rice. The problem with white rice, it sticks together. And here's where I go. I use rice 
exclusively for all my spawn. But here we buy bra so the I don't know if you guys know about rice milling, but you start with like the hull and then mm. they take off that hull and it becomes brown rice. Now if they haul that or they they mill that down later, it becomes white rice. So I hear because it's a rice growing country, I can buy like 20 pound bags of paddy rice they call it. So it's literally like rice that you would put out in the paddy field to like grow more rice. And so it has the hull and everything on it. And so they sell it here for chicken and dog food. Yeah. So I buy like a 20 pound bag for like four bucks. And it's very, I think anybody out there trying to decide on what grain, the best grain is the cheapest. The one that you can buy inconspicuously if you're worried about that. And yep. the third thing is the one that you know how to cook. And that's if you got the, time that's to cook. That's trick right there. Yeah, they all if work you're gonna if you use them right. Yep. If you're gonna use popcorn, make sure you know how to cook the shit. If you're gonna right. use millet, know how to yeah. cook the shit. Yeah. Like millet and popcorn are not the same no. creature. No, like, and I, way, I went way, ahead way and different. switched from popcorn to millet, and I'll tell you, like the we we do no prep, which means we go ahead and say we're using a bag or a jar. We put our grain in there dry, pour water in it, seal it up, and then auto clob it. And, mm. and I'll tell you the ratio we had to switch. Even between if I'm doing an oat versus millet versus corn versus yeah. oat millet mix, the ratios for water are, are so far different if I'm Way doing different. extra prep. Yeah, yeah and then and that no prep, as long as you get that res those ratios right, you can skip a whole hydration process. You mm. just get those ratios right. Everybody has to dial things in differently. If you're using an autoclaw versus a pressure cooker, if you're doing it for a, a different PSI for a different amount of time, all of those things matter yeah. a ton. Yep. But, you know, go ahead, seal it up, get your ratios dialed down, do that hot shake if you're doing a no prep. And, and like everyone's saying, you can use any grain <laughs> and, and get it dialed in to where it's perfect for you. Yeah, yeah some so was, I had guys that were doing uh they got Milo pretty dialed in on on the um the no soak no simmer. The problem is some of them gets a little um it is a little mushier. And when I run uh oats, I can get the same thing because from bag to bag sometimes uh you know just the quality or the size is just a touch different yeah. so your your yeah. your your water weight isn't quite the same mm -hmm. so that's where I just I I'm meticulous about being on that hot shake and like I don't just hot shake it once I'm usually hot shaking it cute yep. uh, every 15 minutes yep. That's for the, the first thing. hour, then then every hour a couple times till I go to bed, I'm, because I'm trying to constantly yep. redistribute that extra moisture. Um, and even with that said, I started adding when I would pour my water in, I would use um, I'd put a little teaspoon of gypsum in in a jug of water, shake that up real good. The gypsum keeps it from clumping a little bit. So kind of with with oats, I needed to do that more. Usually, I got my my millet dialed in pretty good, but. That's why I like oh, popcorn. I don't have to do any of that. I didn't like amazing, the hot shake. Like it, Just it, too easy for me. Yeah. You guys, though, we're all making the assumption that beginners know what it's supposed to be like. They don't. Sure. They you're don't right. know. They're like, okay. so if you're running, so I would not, I would wholeheartedly not suggest doing a no soak, no summer no, 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 for, no. Your, for yeah, a beginner. No, no, it's yeah, like, I'll agree with that. Like, start, get your grain, get your big yep. bag of it, and and you know you're at the feed store and learn how to cook that grain because yeah. if you fuck it up you throw it away and you start again if you cook popcorn and it starts to blow up you can try to pc it but the amount of work you're going to do after you cook right. grain yeah it's like a month of work so yep. learn how to cook that grain and the best way i can say it it should be al dente right <laughs> like when yeah. you cook pasta like if you work in a restaurant i've worked in a lot of restaurants or at home and you're cooking pasta there's like a one or two minute window for something like spaghetti. Right. And if you fuck it up, it mm -hmm. tastes like shit. Yeah. Right. It's the same with grain. It took me years to figure out that I was just cooking my grain wrong. Like every time I got bacterial contamination, too wet. Too oh, wet. and by the way, yeah. if you're doing mason jars and your grain's mm -hmm. a little bit wet or you're in a hurry, put a paper towel in the bottom. I have a It'll science happen. question for you, Ed, that I'm always like kind of like arguing with myself about. So question. Theoretically, if a bag is prepared properly and is properly sterilized, right, and you went ahead and, and say you just, you know, it, it was a little bit overly wet grain to begin with, and you just went ahead and it, it, you shot a whole syringe 
of 100% clean LC into it, right? It just being way overly moist. Can bacteria actually start to breathe in there even though no. you didn't – only if you introduced a bacteria, right? Yeah. Like in theory, in theory, like if in, in, obviously you run risk doing this, but you could fill that bag up syringe by syringe with sterile water. And as long as you didn't, you know, personal air contaminate it, that grain could be suspended in sterile water and not contaminate, right? Well, life of spontaneously sparted, started somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I, I agree, Aristotle, I Aristotle. Uh, yeah, you're, you're get, creating you're a primordial mice. ooze if you put too much liquid in there. It's just I get that because it's it's a, what's that that term like for cannabis uh, pots that you anaerobic or, or, or uh, Ammon- anaerobic. That is that is a thing. Yeah, yeah. Anaerobic, anaerobic, anaerobic versus aerobic ideal conditions for the mycelium to to propagate. Like yes. if it can be too wet, it can be weird for it to to function properly so you can you can have that where it can't breathe properly and something like that but but i mean as long as it's sterile it's sterile like you have you do have to have sterile so like in theory if if you adding too much moisture to a bag in theory is only a problem if you have trace amounts of bacteria that are going to continue to breathe but you usually do. That's okay. the problem. No, it, there's, it, always, yes, yes, yes. there's yes. often some. For, you usually, for even like with, with your substrate, if your usually. substrate is too wet yep. and it creates an anaerobic section, right? So then now, now my mycelium, which is aerobic, isn't going to grow into a pool of water. And if Something there is any will. latent contamination there I've cr- that is anaerobic, now it, it's been given an anaerobic environment to grow. To thrive in, yeah. Hydroponic you know, I do mushrooms. And, and I do appreciate you kind of Hydroponic answering mushrooms, the question yes. of, in, in theory, if you were able to keep everything 100% clean, it would never have a chance to be able to go ahead and, and grow. Correct. You just yeah, can't, good. though. Here's a you can't. It you could. Can't. Here's a good. Right? No, here's no. a good test. Again, uh, no, it would never do that. Like Dave was joking about. That's Aristotle's idea about rice uh, spontaneously germinating mice and shit like that. It goes. <laughs> no, it's it's not it's not true. It's not true. No, here's the thing. Here's a good test, you guys. You All PC right. your grains and you you have five in there. You inoculate four of them. You leave one as the control. Yeah. I did popcorn a few months ago and it's still sitting in my it's still sitting in my uh, kitchen nothing's growing if you think your pc cycle is not working leave out one as a control and yep. nothing should happen to it it should literally sit there for months yeah i've done now, that, that a bunch is, of times well you also have it, to you also have to accept that there's a there's a spectrum there's a spectrum of sterilization where you can you can knock things back to a certain extent and you'll have a window where you can grow successfully but there's still stuff present you're just you're just taking advantage of that time but it's it might not be fully sterilized, but you're just you it's it's sterilized enough. And and back when I was first starting growing, the recommended cook time for grains was 90 minutes. And that's going by the chart. You know, it says 90 minutes at 15 psi is your sterilization goal. It's not enough. It's enough yeah. in real time, yeah. but it's not enough all of the time. So so everybody's kind of gradually switched to two hours over the years, and now like now 120 minutes is like pretty much the norm yeah. for the. I got like PTSD from this shit because how much grain I threw away because I was sterilizing for like an hour and a half. Now I do three hours, and I, I do three. Ever, whoever whoever came up with that hour and a half, I want to go back in time and punch him in the fucking face. Well, you know what? They might have been at a certain <laughs> elevation. They could have been yeah, at a certain knows, elevation. Yeah. I'm at sea level. This shit makes a difference. You know, like, I can hear my grains like I feel like a, a way less than other people just because like literally I'm at sea level. Now, so yeah. th- this jar right I'll here, your, wait, before this, we forget, this jar is sure. a month and a half old. And if I opened it up, I would have a moist kernel of corn, and I'd have a dry exterior, and nowhere in this do I see any signs of anything growing. So yeah, like Dave was saying, or like Ed was saying, if you cook it right, the grain's going to be sterile. Yeah, and you can always inoculate that grain later too, right? It's not like you're wasting the grain. Um, or you can just throw it back in the pressure cooker. The other thing people forget is like the grain doesn't really do anything in the pressure cooker. Like it'll soak up a little bit of water, but it's not going to like cook more. 
<laughs> so if you put like popcorn, if you're going to use popcorn, you need to make sure the center of the kernel is hydrated also. Yeah. Like yeah. millet or milo or sorghum we or whatever the hell to, you guys call it. We it doesn't hydrate. matter, but you got to. It's got to get all the way inside. So if yeah. people, I made mistakes with popcorn. If you're, you got to make sure popcorn is fully hydrated, right? Yeah. And I, even to the point, I think I've heard you say this, Dave, where you burst the kernels purposely. Yeah. Now people will say, oh, bacteria like starch. But again, back to what you were saying, Nikki, that's irrelevant. If you're sterilizing properly, yeah. burst grains don't mean jack shit. Exactly. Burst grains basically mean you're going to give more starch. But that's what fungi like too. They like so it too. the problem with burst grains is a bit of a they, it's a misplaced blame because the people that don't know how to cook grain probably don't know how to sterilize properly. Yeah. So they think that, oh, it's the grain causing the problem, but it's actually your sterilization that's the problem. For because anyone that's trying going, to do that, that popcorn prep, one thing that we used to use as a staple is, is for hydrating it, as soon as it's it's hydrated enough that you're able to take a thumbtack and stick it directly through yeah. it. I don't remember if I, I almost want to say to bite I this. I bite, I bite mine just to check yeah, it. Yeah, I almost I feel like I heard that from Jake at one point, but but that was that. That's how we always did it, and it was always foolproof. Rosie, uh, Susie always prepped our grain, but but taking a thumbtack and being able to press it directly through. I put my popcorn on the stove and turn it on and forget about it until I remember <laughs> it or happen to walk past it and see it smoking, and uh, and I've I've boiled it for forty five minutes like like it's recommended. I've boiled it for until the water was completely gone. And the bottom popcorn was turning black and smoking, and and, yep. and it's still when you run that popcorn, it's huh? Fine. It's fine. It's it's yeah. yeah. If you sterilize it, especially yeah. If now, burst so, grains were bad, if burst grains were bad, then why would BRF work? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, like I, so I usually bad. shoot for like ten percent burst grains, but I I've run it where almost every single one was burst wide open, and. I had no difference. It was no difference. I waited like a week or two for, because I usually put a little vermiculite in there um, just to grab a little extra moisture. I waited a little bit longer before I used them because I really like the outside of the grain to appear very dry. Um, and I had no problems with burst grain. Cause yeah, see where it does exactly make a difference so is with, uh, with something like rice. Uh, if you overhydrate yeah. rice, it becomes, it's yeah, just clumpy. It becomes mud. Yeah, exactly. And then you yeah. can't, then it won't function. It becomes anaerobic. So like that, stick that's why the hull, I think that's what makes popcorn so great is that hull is just kind of like the perfect, mm. it holds Shield. its form. Even if it cracks open, it still kind of holds its form enough it's that it solid. doesn't clump up. I mean, you could, I don't know how long I would have to cook popcorn to make it clump up at the bottom. I don't even know if I could. Okay, do wait. That. Wait, wait, one, one caveat here. Don't use movie theater popcorn. When I first started reading about people using popcorn, I literally thought you were supposed to pop it first. <laughs> I swear to God. No, you I, didn't. No, I did I swear to God, I was like, wow. this is weird. Why would I? Because who the fuck boils popcorn? When you start reading a popcorn tech and it says, boil the popcorn, you're like, who the oh fuck boiled popcorn? I got a bag in not that long ago. No, so I hear people definitely. talking about this a lot. You they think? Don't, they, that people yeah, that are corn, right? I saw someone using just... feed corn, not, not, not broken up. But someone oh, said, yeah, I know a guy who ran feed corn. It, yeah, huge corn. It worked. He didn't like it, though. Life. It's, it's yeah. harder to hydrate properly. That's the it's trick. It's harder to hydrate. It's real hard and He's got yeah. it down. He's got it down. I don't know what he's doing, but he doesn't yeah. bulk. It's just different. It's just a different it's a different prep, yeah. basically. Yeah, same with you can use mush Every mushroom grain. popcorn. I've seen that. And that, that popcorn <laughs> that you're talking about, the mushroom pop I can't I will never See? get I, I swear to God, I like That's you know, what? actually try. It does it's still there we go. There it is. But the mushroom <laughs> that mushroom popcorn this guy's talking about. Uh, I've seen that, and it's not. It looks. We're like the Brady Bunch. This yeah, one. Exactly. Here it comes. Da, da. Yeah. Here he oh, is. That's, that's, Hi that's, guys. Or Hollywood Squares. Hollywood yeah. Squares. Yeah. I, the Brady Bunch. I'll be given Godfrey. Okay, Nikki, you can be. Uh, what's that, lady? Oh, uh, what's that, Whoopi? You be Whoopi. Oh yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was on that. <laughs> Dave, you can be some Jewish guy. We don't know. Me, oh, wait, Sorry. that's Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Michael, you could be like, I don't know, some other dude. Some other dude. 
Um, so, okay, somebody me. mentioned this, and, and Ed's talked about this. I want to pull it on. Well, uh, somebody I mentioned, but it caramelizes fast. Caramel? Numb. What? What caramelizes? Uh, w this was back when we Did anyone else's phone or thing just go... Talking no. about... Yeah. Uh, oh, I think it it was when Ed had said he he pressure cooks for three hours, and I said I did two, and then some, and then Overdroid says, "Are you pressure cooking popcorn for three hours? It caramelizes fast." No, All right, no, no, let, no, let, no, let no, Ed no. No, I do millet. You. My my long times are always millet related. This is, I believe, one of the biggest. This, along with snake venom, is one of the biggest pieces of misinformation. That's why I said I want to go back and punch the person who said an hour and a half. You know why? Because those people want you to buy more spores. Yeah. They want you to buy more LC. And if you can't figure out how to operate a fucking pressure cooker by yourself at fucking two in the morning, they want. They will sell you all this shit. They will sell you pre-sterilized grain. They will sell you LC. They will sell you spore syringes. And right. they don't want you to succeed. The other thing, remember all those protocols are based around liquid media a lot of times? Right. Like from microbiology textbooks and shit like that, they're using very purified, like clean, clean ingredients. Um, caramelization, okay, I had a post on this a few weeks ago. Caramelization is essentially the polymerization of sugars, which are basically yeah. like polysaccharides, like starch. Fungi eat starch. Now, the LC thing we were talking about, when people talk about LC and it turns brown, it's purely aesthetic. Gary made a whole video about it. Gary from the Fresh fresh from the Farm, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Get, um, yeah. He made a whole video about this, and we were on like the same wavelength, because I was thinking exactly the same thing the same day we put that video on, and I was like, he's right, he's right. It doesn't matter the color of your LC. For fuck's sake, really, when outside of the mycological community has anybody ever said to you, don't cook that grain too long, it'll caramelize? <laughs> like, never, never, ever, ever, ever. Have you ever heard a fucking chef be like, don't boil the rice too long, it'll caramelize? <laughs> like, where they the do fuck not want you to that? cook the rice too long, though, but for Yeah, but reasons. if it's got water, like we've talked about before with the dehydration, right. it's got fucking water. It's 100 degrees Celsius. It's not going right. to caramelize. Caramelization right. happens at like 350 degrees yeah, fucking it is Fahrenheit. Super end overcooked yes. rice, guys. Yes. Yes. You yes. cannot caramelize grain. Whoever told yeah. you that, never listen to them ever again. You can burn it, though, if you run out of water. Sure. Yes. Yes. You can overhydrate But you, like you no. said, though, Dave, you can still run it. <laughs> that inhibits the bacteria. Charcoal inhibits yeah. bacteria. You just yeah, so it's good. <laughs> you discovered Charcoal. something on accident. Burn, yeah, yeah. Ser burnt tech. Serendipity. Oh yep. my god, it's burnt tech. Like, oh wait, I get no contamination, but my mycelium doesn't grow either. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> yeah. Wait, you that's just like and what what were you saying? What is the temperature that uh, psilocybin molecule breaks down? It's like two fourteen or. Oh, it oh, was higher. higher. It was like 157 Celsius, which is Celsius. Way, way, yeah, which is way over Jesus. like 300 uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's so. like what they what they refer to in, in organic chemistry as a melting temperature. It's kind yeah. of it's like the EC50 or like OD50 or whatever. It's like a a halfway point when bad right. stuff starts to happen, and like uh, a food dehydrator never gets. Um, that's above 100 basically as long as you have yeah. wet mushrooms on there and they're still i mean if you let them sit in a dry dehydrator next to the coil for like a week maybe that might be bad yeah. but these people who are like you got, i i don't want to say anybody i just saw one yesterday this guy's like you got to take about after 12 hours that's bullshit yeah. don't don't tell any of my uh my friends or the squirrels but i leave shit on my dryer for like four or five six days at a time yeah, but i'm running I'm running at 55 degrees Celsius, which is like 140 Fahrenheit. Psilocybin does not break down at 140, you guys. It doesn't. These people yeah. that say heat breaks down psilocybin, they don't understand chemistry, yeah. organic. Psilocybin does not break. Psilocybin breaks down from oxidation and rotting, basically. Rotting mushroom. You yeah. know that I, okay, I'll get a little personal here too. Here that so that's why you can cook cubes, right? That's why like I don't know if anyone's yeah, that, ever heard of this group, but cooking with cubes is another huge group run awesome by group. Yeah, Toad Boom. Yeah, and, and and I've gone ahead, I've sauteed 
Dave, I think I think it was I think you used to saute cubes all the time and be mm-hmm. eating them and posting about it. Yeah, they they taste actually good. You can saute the shitty bitter flavor out of cubenzi with a little bit of butter and salt and have them actually mm-hmm. taste like an enjoyable mushroom. But keep in mind that they'll smack you in the face still. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you'll, you'll be eating I, them and you'll be like, these are delicious. These are fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe how delicious these taste and how smack. fantastic they are. And then, bam, smack. all of a sudden you're like, whoa, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Yeah, I made like a three-person omelet one time and They're made delicious. that mistake. I was like, oh. Like, I was hungry. It was like that, that morning I woke up and ate the whole we tray of brownies. Pesto, that I did the Parmesan stuff. Like, I like yeah. They were so good. Uh, I did some- Pesto and Parmesan stuffed. They were T-A-T black cap revert. And the caps would curl up like Jack Frost. And we had a party. We went ahead and we put them down. We cut the caps, stems off, put the caps down. Stuffed the upward, like, upturned gilled cap with pesto. <laughs> Put, put cheese over the top, you know what I mean? Melted it down, sauteed them for a minute, and then did a little bit of a balsamic reduction over the top of them. And, and we served those around. I ate one of them. And I mean, like, I ate, it was one fresh mushroom cap. And I, I tripped my nuts off. I remember sitting there, and it was one of those trips where, like, sounds are happening around me that are really, like, just regular sounds that would happen at any, you know, interaction with other people. But I couldn't comprehend them in my head. All I hear is like these really crazy auditory hallucinations. And every once in a while, slowly, I like would come back to. And as I come back to, I'd realize like, oh, the, the, naughty, naughty, wow, wow, naughty, naughty, wow, that I'm hearing in my head is really just like someone sitting next to me being like, chewing. Yeah, yeah Nick, you know your dog's over there. Like, uh. <laughs> And I'd realize, like, oh, that's a normal sound that I'd hear all the time. And for some reason, my brain just couldn't comprehend it. So, yeah, so yeah the cooking doesn't destroy the alkaloids. <laughs> no, it makes it rip. Just as good. Sorry, yeah, good. good end point. I'm really good at going off no. on tangents. No, I know what I'm taking to the well, next time I visit Grandma, man. Full tray of lasagna. Mm, mushrooms. Yeah. Don't Maybe leave those mushroom more. caps in the pan too long. You'll caramelize them. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Right, exactly. Yeah. I'll just creme brulee that. I'll just torch the creme brulee with a creme brulee. Melt the cheese. I'll make sure I don't caramelize them. Uh, that that's what I. That's how I. Really don't you guys make your LC? You you get some a nice sterile uh, ball jar of still water, and you sprinkle a little sugar on the top, and then and then you take your little uh, torch. So you creme just, brulee. You, like a creme you brulee, brulee, brulee the top. You a just creme brulee. brulee it. Let's see. Yeah. No, I do that with my spore things here. See, this is how I take spore prints, you guys. I do it in one of these Tupperware boxes, and then uh-huh. I just creme brulee yeah. the... Yep. Yeah. I do the I same thing, but larger. I have these, like, large, really thin trays. Like, uh, the, the the tote would be, like, the same size as the 56 quart, but they're just thin. They're, like, maybe two Yeah. Inches. And I like those a lot for doing mass prints. Like, say I go ahead and I have a, a 56 quart of rusty white that's a full flush. That's Oh, be careful. Don't, 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 don't tip it. I don't have caps in there this time. There we go. Okay. So my 32 quart <laughs> tubs I don't use anymore because I I, yep. I just I, I don't need to grow that many mushrooms nope. anymore. That's what we do in the. We That's what my lids them. are used for now, and it works amazing, man. I, I yep. love it. That's and then if I'm do. not in a hurry to, they're they're all clean. When we go to oh, that story, are... Dave, that's what we do in the back of the car. Every time we come back to the car after we go to mushrooms, we remove the caps. Yeah. And realistically, they're already wild mushrooms. So printing them in the back of the car is going to be just as clean as cutting yeah. the caps off and printing right. them in the hotel in front of a flow hood. The flow yeah. hood is just for us to take. We, we always bring a flow hood to the hotel room, but it's just for us to take clones of on video to show off. And everyone just goes bananas over a couple of of dudes in a hotel room with a flow hood. I don't know what it is, but everyone's just like, oh, you guys are so cool with your mobile lab. And so that that that's the whole purpose of bringing a flow hood at all. We always do all of the printing in the trunk, realistically, as we bring those uh, as the cap back. <laughs> oh, trade secrets, man. Trade, trade secrets. secrets. <laughs> yeah, here's another secret, you guys. I don't dry my swabs in front of a laminar flow hood. I just put them on an alcohol. I take I take a marker, a longer. It's actually a thermostat. He's like I, I don't even swab my swabs. I grab a swab and I just color he it. He thinks about it. Marker. <laughs> That's why I got all the black sharpies, man. Look, <laughs> here's for my, my look. 
It's the new gold in Halo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about the albinos? Oh, the albinos, I just fucking send them blank. <laughs> see, that's a, they're no spores. The they're like people got... spores. You're not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you don't just take yeah, one of those blue it. sharpies yeah, and just paint the end of it? Yeah. No, but like you said, we were. Yeah, wait, no. So what? What were you talking about? Uh, you don't even. Cause I freaking sit my spore swabs out in front of the hood for hours. No, it's like Dave was saying earlier. Yeah, just somebody told me to do it, so I did it. Like the only time I've ever had wet swabs is if I'm trying to swab something that I let go too long. Like if if you let Jack Frost go till it's like super dark blue, the gills will be soaking wet, and and then you will get some soggy swabs. But like the, the minute I have that, I don't even bother. The, if I'm getting gill tissue, you know, even yeah, doing a light swab, I'm like, okay, I, wait, I, waited long, I waited too long. Yeah. And at that point, you're either getting bacteria or a clone. Right. Like and the you're wetter, not getting that's, spores. that's the other thing. The wetter the fruit is, the more bacteria there's going to be proliferating right. on it, too. Yeah. yeah. Or other, even, I have a whore that you showed one picture on your Facebook, Dave, of a swab that was stuck in a sleeve that had, like, other fungus growing out of it, like <laughs> some kind of bre- bread mold. Because, oh, the other thing, you guys, if you're going to use your swabs for agar and put them back, if you're using the old streaking kind of thing, if you put them back in the sleeve, make sure you let them dry a little bit. Like, don't stuff them back in with, like, a chunk of agar, like, stuck <laughs> to the end of the swab. That's why I. I would never do that. Game. Nope. The minute it no. comes out for use, it's, it doesn't it's go back done. in. Yeah, it I does not go back in for here. Me. Dude, I can't get swabs here, and people here also they like it's hard to get genetic. It was until I started doing it. Now everybody can get a book. If you ever have um, any issue, by the way, Ed, if you ever have any issue getting swabs down there, like I always, we send enough stuff to Thailand that most of our packages make it. If you ever need us to order something from the U.S., like from another vendor or anything, uh, we just forward it to you. We do that for a I'm, couple people, and we have no issue with it. I'm I'm good now. There's a guy here who, I think who has like all of Dave's stuff. There you like, go. Everything that like like all of Dave's stuff and all of uh, yeah, he's got like everything. I don't know. He's got a fat PayPal account. I bet he sells drugs. <laughs> He probably does. I don't know nothing about. <laughs> but but he managed somehow to get a lot of. But he he ordered like one of those like five hundred dollar bundles or whatever, and he's just got like everything. And he's ha- oh oh back to he's having trouble growing now because the temperature change. It's yeah. like it's like hundred and ten degrees here and like ten percent humidity, and all the Thai growers, they kind of grow like a little bit outside. I've got like a whole bedroom that's like you know hvac like air conditioned control i don't air condition that room but a lot of the growers here they're outside and yeah. it's like 110 degrees out here and the humidity is like 10 20 percent and they they're all fucked like the last three months they're all like coming to me like oh ed like can you help me out like there's a music festival and i don't you know <laughs> i'm like yeah i think i yeah, I'm going, squirrel. guys. The squirrels. <laughs> it's like I'm fuck. going to that music festival. Yeah. Sorry. But the squirrels are fucking fiending, man. They're like, where's my shit? Where's my shit? Yeah. Give me a nut. Give me a nut. Yeah. <laughs> they want they want the kind of nuts I'd have. But yeah, they, they have trouble. But, uh, but yeah, the genetics here now is okay. It used to be really... The biggest problem here was just mislabeled cultures. Uh, this is the other thing that, um, you know, if you're getting obviously from one of us three or four, you don't need to worry about that. But like these kids here, I'll sell like just random fucking LC and yeah. call it Yeti. And it's like a GT. And you yeah. know why, again, they, they assume that you're going to, as a new grower, fail. Yeah. So they'll yeah. just, they'll take like a syringe of like tap water and like scrape up a little mycelium, mycelium from like an, a plate. And they'll just like flood the plate and suck it up and call that like an LC, but it's LI, we know. But but there'll be like chunks of agar like in the fucking syringe. The first time I paid like 30 bucks for what was supposed to be Yeti, like this was like two or three years ago. And I'm like, why is there chunks of colored agar in the fucking syringe? Like, this is yep. weird. And then it was, I actually grew it and it was, so I, I got five off the dude, three of which were just fucking bacteria, two of which grew mycelium. Which were both GTs or some, you know, brown cube. Just or, some trish. Yeah. Like Which is okay. I'll, it wasn't I'll o- tell you it was what, an oyster mushroom, but we have we have one client who orders an insane amount of spore syringes from us and the reason they started is 
we went down there to see what they had going on, and we actually found out that they were spending like five to fifteen grand a month on essentially water. Like yeah. they they had some some person had gone ahead, sold them actual sports syringes for three months, and then just stopped selling of sports syringes and started selling them. Uh, it was a, the owner of Rare Breed Genetics, actually. Uh, yes, uh, man. Yeah, old, old company. It's not even around anymore. So that's why the only reason I feel comfortable even saying that is it's so irrelevant. The company doesn't even exist. But uh, they were selling them just straight well, tubes of water. And when I went down there to check it out, it's it's crazy. When when a lot of companies will go ahead and it, 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 like demand a, a mass amount of spores or syringes for something, it, it's an easy opportunity for a lot of like shitty vendors to go ahead and come in and just make you know an insane amount of money off of like what I saw there, which was water and it was bacterial water. So it was like, Crazy. like I used to joke with them in the beginning when I first met him, I used to say, you realize this guy is probably sitting on his toilet, stabbing distilled water gallons and just sucking them up one by one. And that's how those, those syringes were created most likely because they didn't have a spore in them. And it's, it's so easy to, to go ahead and, and fall for an unscrupulous, vendor that might be doing well for three to four months and really like looking reputable and then all of a sudden out of nowhere turn out to to have bailed out and it's why it's really important a lot of times to go ahead and stick around there's there's enough people nowadays this isn't a new hobby there's enough people nowadays to stick around with somebody that's been around for years there's a lot of daves and yoshis and phillies and and um I suck at naming people, but there's a lot of people out there right now that have been around and reputable enough that you know if you get something from them, you're not buying water in a tube. <laughs> right. Yeah, and if the thing is, if it's a reputable vendor and you do have a problem, they'll replace it. Exactly. Right. Like, and if they're like they, because... don't, they don't deserve that term. Right. Yeah. Say, yeah. I'll, exactly. I'll That's replace it. stuff that other people messed up. Like I don't yep. care. I just want yeah. people to be happy and grow mushrooms. Like if you got yep. ripped yeah. off by somebody, let exactly. me know. I'll hook you up. Yep, I've yeah, seen that kind of multiple times. That's yep. what it's all about. Yep. That's the thing. Even if you know somebody might be trying to get an extra one off you, you're like, yeah, whatever, fuck it, man. If that's the way you want to roll, if you want to get a $10 free fucking swab, if that's the way you want to live your life, then here, have it. Yeah. Yep. Like, fuck, you know? Like, if that's the way you want, it's no skin off my back, but... Yeah, man, they all do all kinds of... I've heard of people, like, diluting multi-spore syringes. Like, they'll shoot the syringe in, like, a liter of water and then make, like, a yep. hundred new syringes yeah, and shit like that. <laughs> like, yep. what? Well, and the I mean... LC... Or the LC, sorry, the, the LC that people have never grown, but they've yep. multiplied it. Yep. I cannot believe that. This, like, Mike, my geek, Michael Geeky was telling me, I was like, people <laughs> do that? Yeah. I didn't even know that because I didn't know people were buying sterilized grain and doing the LC because, you know, I didn't know you could, like, sell yep. LC now. But, um, like, I didn't think people were doing that. So you can get literally somebody who, like, bought a 10cc LC and multiplies it and then becomes, like, a vendor. And they're a vendor instantly. And they've, ne yep. they've never grown a goddamn mushroom in yep. their life. Do you know I'm people, like, also this... people will and, also... And it gets to one of those points where it's, like, I understand there being a difference. Like I just the other day, I bought LC from this guy. I can't remember Steve something, but I, I remember I, he had all the ni I naturalist finds, and I so I bought two LCs from him. A uh, neo, neo ex neophalopensis. Thank you so much. I bought that, and I bought a uh, a, a faggy cola. Am I saying that right? Close enough. Faggy cola. Hey. Faggy yeah. cola. I think it's the funniest name ever. But, yeah, but I won't drink it. I know that. I bought two like that. And, and like, I didn't even ask. I, I'm, I'm 100,000% positive that he didn't fruit either of those. Yeah. I'm extremely yeah. happy buying the LC. It's some exotic LC. It, it's a tissue sample of a, of a strain that is extremely hard to come by. But I think that selling a Cubensis that wasn't fruited or at least fruited by you or, or fruited by someone directly next to you, the way you know that yeah. culture is is going to provide something. I think that's like super shitty. And that was one of the issues when I had my last Solmac release, I saw uh, on a couple menus, people going ahead and germinating something in and before ever fruiting it, just taking the spore, germinating it and then selling that, that oh, plate. And, and one of the issues with that is like, 
<laughs> even even if there's work like on Silmac, I went to F4. I, I went ahead and I did the work that I thought was needed to be done there. And uh, and and it's frustrating because when I grow as a sport vendor, if I grow Yeti out and I get fruits that are pigmented and traditional looking, guess what? I don't swab it and then put it on my menu as Yeti, right? But when you go ahead and you blindly fruit, a, when you blindly sell a, a non-fruity culture, you're potentially doing that. You're potentially yeah, passing yeah, on, yeah. you know, what, what I considered Soul Mac, but you have no idea. For instance, you could go ahead and you could have, there's so many different factors as we've all just talked about earlier, but you could go ahead and you could be selling a culture of Soul Mac that you never fruited. All you did was just grab the swab, stab it to a plate take two transfers and you start selling that and it could grow out looking like El Chaco. It could grow out looking like uh, an albino. It could grow out looking like anything, right? Uh. It has potential to in, in the end. And so it's like, man, you're, you're going ahead and you're really misrepresenting a, a variant. And at the end of the day, you're damaging the integrity of the variant. You know what else yeah. people do is they'll, they'll buy a yeah. $10 print and then, wipe it with like 20 sets of swabs and sell those swabs. Yep. hundred <laughs> percent. That's why a lot of people take criticism over people selling like uh, swabs of printing variants. It's why a lot of people, when they like, when they see something that's, that's printable and they see swabs being sold of it, they're like, huh? Well, oh. I know that you could go ahead and, and like, and this is the truth is if you're, if you're a swab producer and you have a, a printing and you're going to swab it anyway, like the smartest thing there is to do realistically is to print it because you could go ahead and for instance like like uh let me try and find a really good one here um something like uh aa plus right uh the it's not really an albino it's albino a plus but <laughs> the L A plus exactly everyone is talking about it but yeah but but it, uh, it's a, a leo everyone says i say it wrong i always say leo kistic people say it's leo cystic once again leucistic I, yeah i taught myself so Anyway, I'm going to call it leucistic because that's what I You can still said. pronounce all the letters. It's just leucistic. It's yeah, leucistic. No, but, but mycogeeky leuco leukocytes, white blood cells. They call them leucocytes, right? Whoa. So it, it should be leucistic. Holy uh, shit. Leucocytes, this, leucistic, I hope Bryce right. fucking hears yeah. this right now. You hear that, bro? <laughs> Bryce and Jason. Yeah, that dude's a, he's got a PhD, motherfucker. And he but it could be leucist, leucistic or leucistic. I love be. it. Nope, that's all I needed, dude. Bryce, Jason, suck one. Uh, Send me some free Soul Max swabs. Oh wait, I, no, I got. I got you. I got you. On a, I got you. I think. I, I think I that? ended up the swab set you sent me for free. I think I ended up giving him one already. So yeah, yeah, I got good. this. Well, I that, got it. There nice. we go, sharing the love. Oh, no, dude, somebody. You, oh wait, 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 Nikki. Some motherfucker here is selling. Have you ever heard of Mel I N D? Oh, sorry, yeah. there's Thai people. No Mac, Mel I N D. Yeah. What is it? Oh, though, is Dave? it? I heard it, it looks it looks a fuckload like your soul Mac. I've heard. Have you heard of that? Well, it, so does, a, it does. It does. It has that same kind of kind of scalloped cap and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. There's a, a, have you look. heard? There's I've a, never there's... heard of it except for here, and it's quite popular here. Like it's one of the top six. And I was like, I grew your soul Mac. I'm like, wow, that looks like a lot like that melon IND. Nah, like, did somebody just steal time, that and, and soul Mac realistically was like. Solmac was an, a, a Melmac isolation that it's one of those ones where I've recently, I've recently stopped caring, but for I probably a, a good portion, the middle portion of my swab journey, like I was always really in fear of people criticizing isolations and I still will. Like I had a, for instance, yeah. Dave had, so I grew a uh, chocolate crinkle right when it was in the very beginning and I had a bunch of different phenos come from some of my tubs and some of those phenos were super chocolatey. I have a bunch of examples of chocolate crinkle looking chocolate on the top and then the gills actually looking really brown and crazy and chocolatey and just, I can't even explain it other than chocolatey and delicious. But I had then on the side of a couple different tubs, I had these yellow capped, super never getting more than like pale gilled fruits come up that I thought looked extremely unique. And so right off the bat, I was like, this looks really cool. I started running with it. I was calling it vanilla crinkle and I took it down two generations. And it's one of those ones where like, I'll start to get, and I've cared about this left, but I'll start to get paranoid or self-conscious about a strain I'm isolating based on a few comments. 
I'll be working on something and 40 people will say something looks fantastic and two people will say that looks just like chocolate crinkle. And I'll hyper focus <laughs> uh, in my head and I'll go, man. I'll go, well, hold on. People are saying it looks just like chocolate crinkle, which means people are going to go ahead and say that I'm just taking away from uh. Dave's creation. Which means that, and I'll, I'll start to hyper focus on that. And I've discontinued uh, projects like that before, right. where, it, and in, in this instance, sometimes I, I still even like now, because I do see Dave's crinkle come out often looking with a slightly lighter pigment on the caps. And I think, well, that looks exactly what I was trying to isolate the vanilla crinkle to, which just means that, that it's a, 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 a pheno that appears a lot. But, but it's one of those things where it's like realistically, yeah, I did bail on that one just based on. Uh, a fear of the community thinking that I was playing off of or overplaying off of someone else's creation. And it's kind of one of those things where like Dave's the one who inspired me to even look at things like that. Because like I keep going back to that El Chaco. I think that in the beginning, like I, I really did. I saw a ton of people I know criticizing that in the beginning openly. I remember Dave was not uh, as blown up as he is now. And at, at that time, I remember thinking like, Damn, dude, like, you just sealed your fate with a pretty dark cube. Don't know why you did that. That was dumb. Yeah, well, yeah, everybody right. was obsessed with albinos at the time, too. Exactly. So like, yeah. and, 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 and it's just so crazy for me to look back at now and go, like, wow. Like, like I really thought that for a minute. I really uh, just watch, guys, in, in, in two years, mark my words, everybody's going to be like, but, bro. Have you grown B plus yet? Because all these motherfuckers are going to be growing I've Yeti out of the gate, right Ape out of the gate. I've got B minus fruiting. I don't know a ton about it. It's a it's an albino isolated. You guys have seen the name pop around the shroomery. Mm -hmm. Michael Anders 2. I know you've seen mm -hmm. that name, Dave, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But Michael mm -hmm. Anders 2. I can't even picture other than like a little profile pic. But uh, he had isolated an albino version of B plus. And somebody else, I don't even have all the details. I have to track down. I have to do a little bit of tracking down because the culture was gifted to me. That's always how that, those gifted cultures go. But somebody else took it like two generations further and ended up calling it B minus. But I have these really, really interesting looking fucking albino B minus right now. That uh, it, it just, it just, we're always going to keep progressing. And, and 10 years from now, it'll be insane what people are growing. But. I bet you anything in 10 years from now, someone will be talking about, like, uh, a Jack Frost, and they'll be like, yeah, I got zombie Jack Frost. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I went ahead and revived it. No one had seen Jack Frost in seven years. I went ahead and I found it how I revived it. Yeah. Zombie Jack Frost now. I had a B-minus at one point in time, which was a, it was, it was a multi-sport uh, tat and B-plus cross attempt. And, uh, and the result was... A, a pretty normal cube that was less desirable than the B plus was in the first place. And I These are looking B cool. Because Perfect it's... name. These B minus, I'll have to get you a, a little centrifuge or something, Dave. These B minus are looking the ones that I've got right yeah, now. No, I've seen, I've seen the, I've seen the, the good ones. Like that. Yeah. My B minus was like a throwaway. Like it was. <laughs> Your B minus was more like a C plus. Yeah. Was, yeah. was, was more like, like a, a C plus. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then now I've got that. Mine, mine is the the El Blanco is the is is, is the, the the albino El Chaco is the one. I've yep. Been, like it's it's been a few steps since it was B plus. Good lord, what man! All I know, uh, you know, about those the negative comments and stuff like that. Uh, you know, man, I can get 30 people a day out of the blue messaging me. Oh my God. I love your podcast. Thank you so much. All this kind of stuff. But it's the one guy that'll make one little comment that just literally, I got to have 30 positive comments to make up for that one fucking negative person. Uh, it's really sad and pathetic. I'm finally at a point where in my head, I just sit back and go, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? I care about the community. I'm doing shit for the community. So if you really don't want to watch at, my podcast, oh, bye. They're jelly, jelly bears. I've gotten really good yeah. at like understanding that. They're 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 jelly bears. Usually the people that are gonna go ahead and, and speak out and criticize someone else don't really have a whole ton going on and they're, of course they're not. typically sitting back thinking to themselves like, Oh, look at him. Like in the in the limelight, saying things I don't agree with. Well, motherfucker, you're not here saying any of it. So then there's a reason, and and that's usually the bottom line. Jelly yeah. bears, very jelly old yeah. bears. Yeah. 
What are you going to do? Gonna, haters going to hate? Is that what they used haters to say? Gonna like, hate. Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate. Oh. And baiters yeah. going to bait. It's a hobby. It's a hobby <laughs> like anything else. <laughs> baiting. Baiting. Hey, baiting hey. mycology. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only a hobby baiter. I'm a professional, <laughs> professional. Just don't, grower, but just I'm don't just be a, a baiter hater. Baiter. That's yeah. all I'm saying. You oh can, my god! You can be a good baiter. You can be a ma- a great baiter. Just you know, don't but be not a baiter master. hater. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> this is this is where we get to at hour five. Yeah, it's just probably, insane. Wow, that's, What's the yeah, longest podcast yeah, we've ever done, dude? Is this it? I I feel like you know. This I is feel like we thing. probably did it. We're we're approaching the fifth hour, guys. Well, this if we night, haven't gotten you demonetized yet, like I mean, I don't know how much. I don't. I think there's that. a point where once you hit five hours, they just can't even demonetize you. They're like, it's just your reward like, for going five long. hours. Yeah, Ed's, Ed's like, Tourette's is like, going to start spewing curse words again any second yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be no, taking my daughter to the bus Ed, stop Ed, in about three hours. It's like I keep getting Ed's like you guys are getting further into the night. I'm getting further into the day. Ed's getting like more sober and more more like coherent as the day goes on, and we're all just like starting to fall out. Like, ah, yeah, I know. We're gonna everybody here from from here over is like the second I get off, I'm getting stoned. Oh yeah, Um, this guy and and that guy, we are in the same time zone, and it's the latest one. Yep. So, yeah, we're going to bed after this. Yeah, and, and then Ed's over here like, I'm just starting my day. Ed's, Ed's like, yeah, well, like, where should I go to lunch right now? I didn't even check my tents yet, man. I'm kind of freaking out like shit. You yeah, are. I, gotta, I can tell. I, got, like, I keep looking over down. there like, uh, uh, like I got to do some swabs and all that shit. Oh, but Dave, before I forget, is what is the L- Mel IND? What is that shit? I, I've it's, looked it's, and I can't. It's, it's, it's one of like, okay, so... So the, the, the whole Melmax story, you've got your, uh, I guess, the homestead genetics got, uh, got acquired somehow. And, uh, and, and there were a number of, of different, you know, isolations. You've got Mac this, Mac that. But the IMD was like one of the, one of the, one of the, old, one of the old ones that got put away and never got released. And it got released much later. Uh, and this oh, was like uh, Thomas Maness at uh, what was the Edible Earth Fungi. Was yep. the uh, was the, the Melmac King guy, you know, and Alf, you know, Alf Longstroke, the keeper of Melmac. Yeah, he was he was oh, the keeper of the the, the big keeper distributor of Melmac, of Melmac. Yeah, and the, the IND was just like a later release. It was like a it was kind of right before he kind of left the scene. He's like, hey, I'm gonna get these old Mac things out that never got released and give them a chance, and that was one of the ones that went out. Oh, okay. See here, they like to use the word indie, like independent, a lot, like the old truck company, you know, skate. Also, oh, it truck sounds like good. Indie. Yeah, no, I yeah, didn't even know what the good. IND stands for. Is it was just a plate label. It was like uh, somebody else's plate label that somebody inherited, and nobody knows what it was originally supposed oh, to okay. uh, wow. indicate. Okay, so nobody stole your soul, Mac Nikki. Sorry. No, they no, st- you're fine. <laughs> I saw just recently. So hold on, the the you guys ever heard of uh, two CB? Yeah. 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 So the creator. I know a little bit about that. So. The two, the creator of two CB. <laughs> I'm almost positive. There's so many research chemicals. I could be saying it wrong. It could be two five C or two C five or whatever. But anyway, the creator of one of those research chemicals right now is taking credit for a. And it's just like some. It's some paid for highlight article that someone has paid for themselves. But it was circulating through all the groups. There is a a sunflower cubensis variant isolation that looks a lot like Solmac that's going around right now. It has an article written about it. Oh. It, probably, it probably has no lineage connection to Solmac realistically at all. It probably has its own lineage. But the yeah, the creator of 2CB is is claiming uh, a, a bunch of credit for it right now. And it's an interesting article in the sense that it's like somebody who knows who is not connected at all to the micro community and had knows mm-hmm. nothing about what the micro community knows about lineages trying to hype up a Cubenzi variant in a, like a slightly almost satirical way if you do have any knowledge of Cubenzi variants. I saw that too. It was yep. some guy down in maybe South America. Exactly. Yep, had, it was. Who, yeah. And it said some vague thing about he crossed together two well-known yeah. strains. Very vaguely. Had, very vaguely. Yeah, some yeah, hybrid. It was so, uh, well, uh, when I was doing Jack Frost, my my goal was to get it to be like seventy seven percent ape and twenty three percent tat. <laughs> no. 
I love this. No, but if you don't it's start with the turps, you know, man, the turps, dude. <laughs> what about the you turps? You don't start with a specific goal, you never end with one. You know what I mean? I like it. I like it. He... So now, Ed, I heard you could use that brick weed as a substrate. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that is, oh, that's actually something I wrote down. Okay, another thing. Supplementation with MHRB, Mimosa Hospital Group Park. Yeah. Anybody who tells you that, you can tell it's them nonsense, to fuck right? off. It's yeah. nonsense. Like, it's, cool. okay, it's not nonsense. nonsense that it could be used as a substrate, but it's nonsense yeah. <laughs> that there be any. It, there, it's nonsense that there, there would be any like alkaloid conversion because exactly. you could use it as a substrate in theory. Yeah, right? like pine cones. Pine yeah, cones like pine like cones. Well, I've seen I've seen a, a solid flush on used cigarette butts that were sterilized before. I've seen it. I've seen a solid flush. That's how you get a nice smoky flavor. Exactly. That is how you get it. We're talking about the piss. The piss, like, like, like I said, if we ever want to, if you're ever desperate, desperate, desperate for views, Michael Geeky, I'll go ahead. I'll piss on a toe and eat the second flush on camera, like, because I genuinely, I don't think that that those mushrooms. I don't think no, that the of course not. Great piss, no. they can burn Of course they won't. Hand. It's just in people's heads. Okay. Okay. I'll one up you, Nikki. I'll shit in a tote, <laughs> okay, make well. substrate out of it, and grow pans off it. All right. All right. Uh, no. In, in, a, in a Martha tent, and then <laughs> I'll sit. Na- I'll, I'll sit naked and eat the whole fucking shoebox. <laughs> You cannot undo live. You are shitting. Oh my God. You are shitting in a tote. This guy, he's shitting in a tote, and he's growing pans now. No, I don't care. Who's can, doing can it? Can I use? Maybe I might not be able to fill up much more than that. I don't. No, know. it doesn't matter. You use me a like little a, bit. I want to see like pans grown with your shit. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Now, the scary uh, thing is if they have, grow well. Okay, here and you go. know what? I'm have I want you to be careful like that you don't caramelize it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. God forbid. My, oh I won't cook God. it too long. It'll. <laughs> and make sure it's not anaerobic. That's the real. No. Yeah. You know, That's the real anaerobic caramelization is ruining a lot of stuff. My, my shit, God. I eat a lot of spicy food, man. It'll go anaerobic real quick. Real it's, fast. You guys have amazing. Probably I'll mix it with straw. A lot of, lot of E. coli. <laughs> I'll mix it yeah. with straw. Good straw. Stuff. Oh, and cigarette butts to make it nice and fluffy. Yes. All right, guys. So everybody. again, everybody, <laughs> we did it. We hit the. I feel like I'm on the Jerry Lewis telethon here. We hit the five-hour mark. Is that the longest podcast you've ever done? Oh yeah, this is definitely the longest. Okay. By, five, by, yeah. uh, five hours. A uh, good stretch. Every time right. Nikki's on, we set a record of some sorts. So that's just how. It yeah, works. I have it has, to. It's the it's the goal. Ha- has goal. to has to happen. Um. So anyway, uh, congratulations, guys. I when I heard this, uh, when Nikki told me about it, I was like, oh, this is just fucking smart. This is just really smart on both their their accounts. Uh, it's good for Dave. It's good for Nikki, and it's great for uh the people who want genetics. So. Um, I think it's a win-win-win all the way around. Um, you know what I think though is, is that is that it needs to be a win in in a in a particular way in that so many micro community collaborations and partnerships end so badly. Yeah, like they sure can. They, yes. There's so many examples of people working together and it just turning out like horrible. And, and I think it'd be really nice to, to be able to see that uh, people can actually cooperate. Right. And it's, it's not, it, it, it's always money. It's always money and greed is always the problem. Right. Right. But the fact is the micro community is growing at a phenomenal rate. Phenomenal rate. There are, I mean, it, as, as there's the, the money's there, there's plenty of vendors, there's plenty yeah. of products, there's plenty of customers. It's, it's not, uh, we're not in competition. Yeah. Like we're really not. Yeah, there's there's enough to go around for everybody. I tell I, I have friends regularly that are like starting to to entertain the idea of, of starting spore businesses and stuff like that. And I tell everybody like, hey, like don't ever feel like it for any reason that you have to like there's gonna be any animosity from me. There's enough money to go around right now. I see I, I, I see it every day. I'm someone who studies the market. I see hundreds and thousands of dollars getting spent with competitors at the same rate yeah. they're getting spent with me at the same rate that people are posting regularly saying hey where do i spend my money and and i can tell you that there's enough for everybody you know what i mean if you if you're interested in getting in involved and being passionate that's what it matters 
is, is, is that because I, I'll I'll tell you the the thing that I don't want to have happen, and this is uh, one of my little agendas, is I want people to be who want to get into this to be able to get into it to source quality supplies genetics I want them to have the right information I want it to go well and then if they join the community I want that to be an overall positive experience like I, I don't want it to be worse than any other community that they might join I would hope it would be better um, but then to go along with what you're saying if you um, if this influx, if this tidal wave hits like in a way that we're not ready for and people want genetics and can't get them and people are gonna the, get screwed. people are going to get fucked. I yeah, mean, look, like, you know, we can go like, oh, I can't believe a guy selling water filled syringes and saying they're LC. I mean, people break into people's fucking houses. People yep. rob banks. People murder, yep. like, <laughs> selling yeah, fucking water syringes is very low on the grand scheme of shitty things human beings do, right? For money. <laughs> Broke ass people will do shit for money. That ain't going to change. But what we need to make sure as leaders in the community, as quality vendors in the community, is that we are thinking about how we can meet the need as the need grows. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, oh, you want to vend? Okay, take it seriously and I'll help you out. Yeah, and that's how it's, that's how it's always been. And I, I see it all the time. I every, every time I start to look at someone else or have a full dialogue, like, I, I start to think, like, man, that's just one more person. I, like, already I'm sitting over here. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm thinking of this guy over here and I'm thinking I'm going to get off this podcast and I'm going to fall asleep. But then in the morning, I'm probably going to mess with this guy. I'm going to say, Hey, do you have any interest in talking about, I know you produce a lot of interesting genetics and a lot of yeah. uh, uh, serious cross work. Like, I, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to end up talking to him about something and I'm going to end up trying to work something with him just because anytime I see anybody doing anything interesting, I, I, I my first thought is like, well, more people should see that. And secondly, yeah. mm -hmm. like that person could be making some money and, and I could be helping them and I could be making a little bit of money on top of that. And so yeah, and some everybody... people don't like, uh, I mean, I, when I get done building the sterilizer and then I'm like, fuck, I got to wrap this thing now. I got to clean it. I got to buff it. I got to put the stickers yep. on the, on the, the bottom of the case. I got to wrap it in my bubble wrap. I got to print it. And, and it, I don't like that part of it. Nope. And I see this guy killing it too. I and don't like that I see him over on the spore war, spore swaps. I don't know if you ever. I don't know if she ever mentions it anymore. But you know, I started spore swaps. Oh, I started no. spore swaps she with doesn't. Sherry. Yeah, yeah. Me and Sherry Berry uh, started spore swaps oh, when it was like 200, uh, 300 members. And oh, we got to do a Sherry Berry Nikki reunion someday. Oh, here. dude, that would oh. be that would be that would be literally insane. People would uh, people would be pretty hyped on that one because me and her don't. We used to go meet up. That's okay. To, you guys don't have to love each other. You just no, gotta no, come no. on we the show and too. talk. We used to we used to hang out. We used to we're local yeah. to each other. So me and oh, Sherry cool. Berry used to be really, really close and uh just spore swaps and percentages and money. The same yeah. thing that happens to everybody. Yeah. Just you know, it's been like two years since we've since we've been in our interaction with each other. Yeah. But that would be a podcast that people would be tuning into for sure. Yeah. Man, I get uh, Tim a tip of the cap mushrooms. He's always telling me these ideas for shows, and I'm like, Tim, do you just want want to watch people fight on this show all day? And he's <laughs> like, Yeah, people would love that. I'm like, Okay, I have another. Oh, do we could have those smack contests? Oh my god, oh, you could. You, you you could totally do like a, a once a month or once a year segment where you just do like like Michael wrestling. Yeah, like in this <laughs> corner. <laughs> Yeah, we have. I can already think of a thousand different people. I won't name them all on here and put them on blast, but I can think uh, of like ten different pair ups you can go ahead and have. Oh, that would yeah. be hype, dude. It'd I could fun. send like I could send to like Thai girls over there and just have them beat the shit out of white guys. That no, and this <laughs> Ed, that is a whole channel that doesn't have anything to do with mushrooms at all. If you did that channel, that would be huge. <laughs> Yeah, I. That's the thing is like, I'll subscribe to that channel because Ed, I want to support Ed, and then I'll also subscribe to it just because it's Thai chicks beating the shit out of dudes, and like yes. you know that's like a, that's like a thing. I don't want to pay the hospital bills and the all the dentists. <laughs> There'd be a lot of 
Oh, gosh. Flap downs. Damn. He knows some, like, really hardcore Thai chicks. Oh, uh, yeah. Ad keeps inviting me to, to Thailand, and I was going to go, but now I'm like, I'm No, gonna... it's all good, man. Dude, this place is so chill, to be honest. Like, we've mentioned it a few times in a year or two. I'm really, really thinking about this retreat idea. Yeah. Oh, everybody and... is doing the retreats right now, dude. I know, but I wanted to also, like, do, I don't know, I should maybe use their name, but, like, do a cultivation thing. Like, for, I saw some place was charging $3,000 for a four-day workshop on how to grow mushrooms. I'm like, are you fucking serious? And they had, like, a limit of, like, 20 people. So they're pulling in, like, fucking $80,000 for a four-day workshop. Dude, I'll do it for 50 bucks. I'll be on a plane and, tomorrow look, if you get that set up. Free weed. Free fungus, hundred bucks. All the other amenities that has Thailand. The beach is like an hour away. You ever, you ever get a real retreat set up, man? We, I, I would be oh, down yeah. to, to to roll on up to that. And there's there's Bob Sap down in Thailand that I know would be down. We could do a whole whole Bob Sap fights a couple Thai ladies or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be a fight. He'd be getting his ass getting kicked by two Thai ladies. Uh, honestly, I oh, feel no, like no, a, big, a big black dead. man like Bob Sapp getting his ass beat by a couple Thai chicks is like a that's 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 a niche. You know what I mean? They call me Nichey Maiko. Like, that's wait, is it a niche or is it a niche? I don't know. It's a, a niche. I'm Nikki. I will I'm say it wrong. Niche. You're no, not Nishi. It's not in no. in Thailand. But, they might call you Nishi. I'm I'm okay yeah. with it in Thailand because okay. I think if I'm not okay with it, it's racist. So I'm okay no, with it. Okay. If no, you're not okay everybody. with it, they're going to kick your ass. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Some high ladies. And no, they will. No, it's, it's easy here. They just call every white dude Farang. Like Farang? there's a Thai word. Farang. F-A-R-A-N-G. -A Farang. I look Farang, like a Farang, yeah. too. Farang. A anybody who's basically remotely white, they just call Farang. Because it's the old word for French. And the French were the oh. first people to come to Southeast Asia. So it's the Thai so word. So you think for we're like, all French? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't no, it's matter. they don't care. They don't. They don't so you're care. just no, no, you're, the, you're French. Exactly. You're they the people. Care. They don't fucking want their they don't care about being shit. there anyway. Yeah. They don't care about your political stance. They don't Nothing. care about what country. All they know is you're like a white dude. The people they're really like racist against are the other Asians. Yeah. Like they fucking hate Chinese people and they fucking hate oh. Chinese. Like, you guys I, oh, I, I, in when I worked in nursing in <laughs> Southern California, I I saw some of that. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Of that. Like, All right, guys. Okay, doing? okay. We're oh, yeah. we're we're yeah. five hours and ten minutes in. Yeah, we win. Uh, Dave and I are Dave and I are Eastern fun. Standard yeah, Time, and I think well maybe he might actually be Central. But are you Central or are you Eastern? I'm central, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm I'm the biggest glutton. What time is it for you? What time? Yeah, is it's it? two a.m. Man, I gotta get up in four hours and yeah, take my kid to the bus. It's eleven, but I actually am using the kid's room, which means she's sleeping on the couch. Ah. Uh, well, she doesn't know the difference. She's asleep anyway, dude. Exactly. Hopefully. Yeah. That's like my kids. If they fall asleep on the couch, that's where they're sleeping. <laughs> Not moving them. So they they know where the bedroom is if they wake up at two a.m. Would I got to do everything for him? No. Susie's got my room yeah. bow guarded for swabs right now. Yeah. All right, guys. So I'm I'm gonna I put my I put this little thing together. So we're just gonna leave on this note. I love it. I love the logo. That's great. I really wish you guys well. Um, Nikki, you are a pro and uh, got lots of great ideas. Um, 10% Dave, off the code. Thank you. There's a ton of fucking shit on the website. It's a bunch of really cool stuff. If you're not looking for all of the crazy mutant, who knows what you're going to get. There's a lot of stable, cool yeah. Awesome, classic, Wombat Isolations on there, like AMBP, El Chaco, Jack Frost, TAT, uh, a, a Chocolate Crinkle, a ton. There's a ton that, that, that are going to give you what you want. Yeah, no. so if you like Dave and you like his genetics, you go to the website and you buy his genetics. And if you don't like Dave, then you buy a lot of his genetics and you make Nikki sell out and force Dave to just toil tirelessly to make more genetics. That's true. Either way, it's yep. it's a win-win. It works. 
Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, I think this is great. Um, I, I already know, as someone who doesn't even ship that much stuff, uh, that this is probably going to free up your day, bring you some happiness and health, peace of mind, and uh, be able to focus more just on the, the part of this that you love doing. And Nikki's going to take care of business and keep everybody supplied, and it's going to be a, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And 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 it's going to be good for me. You want to know how? Right. Because every week multiple times a week uh i don't know maybe close to 10 times a week sometimes i get a, a dm that says hey so i've been trying to get a hold of dave uh, <laughs> could you ask him could i i want to buy and yeah so you you're even helping me out guys yeah so, so really now you have a link it. and you use every every you don't even reply all you do is copy paste a link, the link. And you send them to the site yep. yep that's the way that goes now problem solved and we're gonna keep dave nice and happy everybody you don't worry about that Exactly. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to work hard no matter what I'm doing, you know? So it's like, if I'm, if I'm out, if I'm out picking up sticks in the yard after a storm, like I'm picking up sticks You're to gonna the best of my ability, you know? Fuck so up out of that's those. right. I'm going to pick up every stick out there. So it's the same, it's the same deal. Like I'm just going to spend less time fighting with messenger and more time producing yeah. these genetics so that they can get out there to everybody that, that's it's perfect. It's great. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, I had a blast. And uh, next week, uh, assuming I can work out a few logistical uh, hiccups, we're going to have a whole bunch of DNA barcoders on talking about um, uh, th that wonderful uh, elusive ITS segment. We're oh, gonna I'm going to have to do my it. homework. ITS. We're, 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 okay. we're going to talk we're about fungal through. barcoding again. It's going to be fun. And it's going to not just be how to do it. It's going to be talking to people who do it a lot, why they do it, why they love it, what it's taught them, uh, more kind of the personal side of uh, what it's all about. So it should, should be interesting. Anyway, uh, until next week, uh, happy growing, guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, much love. Hey -oh!